City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday the 14th of July 2020. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed, or published publicly by the Council, including transferring outside of Australia. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, belief and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to our Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who may be with us today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and the surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence? in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country, at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you, members. takes us to item number five on the agenda, which is apologies and leaves of absence. Um, I don't have either this evening. Um, number six on the agenda is the confirmation of the minutes from the 9th of June, the 23rd of June, the 30th of June and the 9th of July. And I will look for someone to move if the minutes be accepted. Thank you, Dean Lamb. And the seconder. Thank you, Councillor Connell. Are there any amendments or suggestions? Any comments? If not, go back to move to some members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Welcome, Councillor Moran. Um, item seven on the agenda is deputations, and we have no deputations granted at the time of the agenda published. Um, members, I'm going to uh, go through the a list of items uh, to see what we can pass on block, noting that there are at least six items that are for noting there. Um, if any of you would like to call out an item on the agenda, um, please raise your hand and let us know what item you'd like to call out and the rest will do on block. So uh, the first item is 8.1, which is accepting the petition for the City Connector Bus Service. Item 9.1, which is the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority. Item 9.2, which is the advice of the Audit Committee. Item 10.1, which is the Adelaide Parklands Design Building Guidelines, Councillor Kerr. Uh, item 10.2, which is the street upgrade and partial closure. Item 10.3, which is, sorry, Councillor Martin, did you put your hand up? Field Street, yes, thank you. For Field Street. Apologies, I missed that one. Thank you. Uh, item 10.3, which is the strategic property matter unnamed private road off Market Street. 
Item 10.4, which is financial assistance, City of Adelaide business impacted by COVID, Councillor Martin. Item 10.5, which is the events and festival sponsorship program funding. Councillor Martin. Um, item 10.6, which is the review of the Adelaide Parklands event management plan for noting. Item 10.7, which is the New Year's Eve COVID-19 planning. Thank you, I have Councillor Kerr. I'll pull that one out. Um, item 10.8, which is the resumption of City Connect service. Item 10.9, which is the Wildlife Rescue Facility. Item 10.10, .10, which is electrification of vehicles. Item 10.11, which is the Brown Hill and Keswick Creek Stormwater Project. Item 10.12, which is the nomination for the Council Assessment Panel, which is authorising the CEO. Um, item 10.13, which is the progress of a motions by the members. <coughs> Stop there. So, members, I have uh, to move on block 8.1, 9.1, 9.2. For which item? 9.2, um, 10.3, 10.6, 10.13. Members, could I have someone move that be moved on block? Thank you, Councillor Kouros, seconder. Um, Councillor Abrahamsade. Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak at all? No, Councillor Abrahamsade. Uh, members, if not, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. So that takes us to, I'll just make a note so I make sure these cards pull out. Uh, thank you, members. That takes us then to uh, 9.2, which is the advice recommendations of the Audit Committee. Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. And may I just say how good it is to be back here in, uh, in the chamber. Um, look, I have a couple of questions. The first one is, at a committee meeting last month, uh, without listing on the agenda or distribution of any papers, the Central Market Authority and the Rundle Mall Management Authority gave brief summaries of strategies, including details for dealing with COVID-19. Now, um, those presentations, including papers, had been given to the audit committee, we were told, a week before, and yet um, we are approving their minutes and we have not seen any of those papers. Um, is that appropriate? Are we going to see those um, presentations and the information that we're Ask that question. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, through the presiding member, um, you'll remember, um, Councillor, that when we uh, presented um, both the ACMA and the Rondemore Management Authority, um, we hadn't made it clear on the agenda that night, and so we felt it was appropriate after consultation to invite both those boards back into um, committee to present. So there will be a presentation. So uh, they will be coming back is the answer. And therefore, is it appropriate for us to be approving minutes for the presentations uh, without having seen the presentations? I think you'll find that the motion that we're moving is noting the advice of the... Um, and so that's appropriate. That is correct. Okay, look, I'm happy with that. Um, look, 
Lord Mayor, I also take an interest in the Audit Committee, um, having been uh, removed, as you remember, uh, by the Deputy Lord Mayor, or replaced by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, uh, there, there is, is there any kind of rule about how long it is that elected members who are sitting on that committee are actually in meetings because I've noticed- Sorry, Councillor Marnell, we're actually talking to the advice and recommendations of the audit committee. That's probably a question on notice or a question without notice. No, it's directly related to, okay. to the minutes of uh, the audit committee um, and we're, we're actually discussing that at the moment, so. Um, the, the item that we're looking at is noting the report of the audit committee and the internal audit plan. So it's not the minutes. Okay, okay. And is it appropriate, given that um, members of the committee are absent for large parts of the time, for us to be approving those minutes? Is that, is that appropriate? These have come through from the audit committee. So that's the okay. Of the audit committee. Yes, oh, okay. that's correct. Well, that's fine. Thank you. So, thank you, Councillor. Um, members, I'll look for someone to move the advice be uh, adopted. Thank you, Councillor Corus. Second of Councillor Kira. Members, if not, Councillor Corus. Those in favour? Those against, thank you, that is carried. Um, councillors, we go to 10.1, Councillor Kerr. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, I'm, I move with uh, an amendment. Um, and you'll have to remind me whether I can move, move an amendment at the structure or I need a second or first. Um, if you could tell us what the, oh, there it is. Yes, um, it was, then it, it I will was need... sent. There we are, lovely. Thank you, so I will need a seconder. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Kira. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, um, uh, look, uh, look, Lord Mayor, the, the amendment uh, is, well, the, the motion is to essentially keep uh, the uh, recommendation as is to approve the guidelines uh, as they are, uh, Lord Mayor. However, um, the benefits of uh, benefit councillors, because uh, I know this was said in the last minute, what these, what these two uh, uh, changes do uh, is simply say that the word, the word contemporary uh, appears in the document uh, that is replaced with either the words beautiful, uh, fit for purpose or meritorious. Uh, and it gives the administration the choice of utilising whichever word is, is appropriate. Uh, it also removes the word uh, without superfluous ornamentation uh, from the guidelines. That's it. They are two small changes. Uh, but I would submit to uh, to uh, councillors that what they do, what they do is they put it into place uh, what we agreed upon in a committee uh, meeting. In a committee meeting, we all agreed to remove the word modern as a essentially dictatorial uh, term that was used in these guidelines. We agreed to remove that because what we agreed to do was to say to people who uh, who might uh, propose buildings for the parklands, listen. Uh, you may want to put something up that is modern. You may want to put something up that is uh, uh, traditional. Uh, it may be traditional uh, Aboriginal. It may be traditional uh, um, classical in anything, but we're not going to constrain you. What we're going to evaluate you on uh, is merit. Uh, what we got back was a document that had the word modern replaced with the word contemporary uh, and an attempt to define contemporary as somehow uh, not being modern, which I would submit to councillors uh, is, uh, well, uh, it, it, it's a bit two plus two equals five, to be honest, Lord Mayor. So this simply uh, lets the guidelines through as they are and keeps them within the spirit of what we agreed upon in our committee meeting. So I wholeheartedly commend uh, this amendment and this motion. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to the alternate item? Uh, Members? Councillor Martin? Uh, yes, Lord Mayor, I wish to move a, uh, an amendment. Um, and look, I, I will read this uh, slowly. Um, it's uh, an addition to principle five at objective 5.1 and it reads, much as it was in, in the second sentence, but in the first it says the expansion of footprint can be justified for the inclusion of change rooms 
and toilet facilities. for gender diverse and disabled users while other facilities can be incorporated in floor area and the uh, the last sentence is is as is buildings must be designed for the expected average user numbers current and future not maximum numbers sorry but we read it yes i'm sorry for if you can also yes. tell us this is point five this is a point five on the amendment is this after the, this, is, amendments? this is a replacing the first sentence of principle five at oh, objective okay. five point one so one moment we'll just do that replacing the first sentence On, was, is there a page number for that one, please, Councillor? If you oh, have it in front of you. Um, no, I'll have okay. a look for you. No, that's fine. No, no, so no, replacing no. the first sentence of principle point five. Um, well, hang on, I just find the page. It's here somewhere. That's okay. If you could read that out and replace the first sentence of principle five, is that correct? Objective five point one. Oh, objective five point one. Okay. And I will, so um, Councillor Sims, it says the expansion of footprint can be justified for the inclusion of change rooms and toilet facilities for gender diverse and disabled users, while other facilities can be incorporated in floor area. So um, I will look for a seconder. That was your seconding. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, look, um, I have considered this document in detail. I've read it uh, again several times in the past few days. And uh, let me just say that I do believe that we need guidelines uh, for buildings on the parklands. Um, I think it's important, uh, just as there are guidelines for buildings in the city. Um, we know what we can build in any street in the city. If it's a main street, if it's a suburban street, the details are pretty much captured in the current development plan. Now, this is an amendment that aids existing parklands builders by giving them the context to expand their footprint to accommodate gender diversity and the disabled. Uh, one of the greatest failures of our older parklands buildings is that they contain either no or very limited and, and sometimes uh, primitive facilities for women and certainly very rarely anything for the disabled. Now, by formalizing uh, this right of, uh, uh, of women, and the disabled uh, to be able to access buildings, to use facilities while playing uh, sport or even spectating. Uh, we give certainty to leaseholders contemplating uh, uh, new structures that they can expand uh, to meet this particular need. And I think it is uh, the right thing to do. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Simmons. <laughs> Thanks, Lord Mayor. And um, thank you to Councillor Martin for raising this. I totally agree. And you know, it's a basic fundamental right that uh, you're able to access a, a toilet um, facility uh, when using public space. And um, of course, that should extend to all genders. It should um, extend to people with disabilities as well. So I think what Councillor Martin um, is proposing is very sensible and um, I'd urge all councillors to support it. Thank you, members. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just a question to the administration. Um, if they could just comment on how this changes what Objective 5 1 currently is. Uh, through the Chair, I might just get uh, Chris Diamond to answer that question. And through the chair, so I actually couldn't read the amendment where I was sitting, so um, I can see it now. Um, yeah, I, I think that's still aligned with the intention of, um, of the objective. 
that answers your question. Yes, yes, there. Um, members, any other members? If not, I'll go. You want to speak, Councillor Kerr? Yeah, 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 I'll speak in favour the, uh, of, of the amendment. Um, I think that this is actually a, a, a relatively minor expansion of potential footprints. I think it, it affects uh, individual um, instant cases where footprint uh, for toilets may be issue. Uh, so I, I, I do actually recommend this, this amendment from Councillor Martin to the Chamber. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Um, I'll go back to Councillor Martin. Summer. Summer. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Now comes the substantive. Would anybody like to speak to it? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Kerr to sum up. Uh, I've summed up, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Thank you, members. And thank you, Chris. Um, the next item we have is 10.2, which is the Field Street upgrade um, and partial close for Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, th uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I, uh, I pulled this out for really only one reason, and that is to thank the administration and to not let this pass without um, demonstrating to fellow councillors that this is indeed uh, an extraordinary step that will enhance the pedestrianisation of the city. It, it is possible in upgrades such as this to consider such things. Now, quite apart from uh, planting 11 trees on which we can all agree, it will now be a bicycle friendly um, with a new lower speed limit of 20 k's, a bike friendly permeable service, a uh, surface rather, and the installation of uh, bike rails to support park bikes. And now there's the possibility of outdoor dining, paved thresholds on uh, Guga and Grove Street, Guja and Grove Street to improve pedestrian safety, and a Zebra Crossing, a brand new Zebra Crossing, which is always a welcome addition in the city. So look, um, uh, I also, by the way, should note that parking is being discouraged because we're reducing the number of parking spaces as distinct from uh, loading zones. So look, my, my congratulations to the administration. This is an outstanding outcome and it demonstrates what's possible in the City of Adelaide. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, members, I'm sorry, I did forget to ask for a seconder for that. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Um, did you wish to speak, Councillor Mackey, at all? No? Uh, members, would anybody else like to speak? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. I just want to echo those sentiments um, and pay tribute to the administration who did a wonderful job. Uh, I was very glad to have a tour down there um, with some of the property owners and also speak with some of the businesses around there. Um, and this uh, this upgrade and these changes will really help them uh, uh, carrying out their business and, and will really improve things down there. Um, there are some new uh, restaurants and the like that are due to go in, which is excellent to see uh, during these uh, COVID and pandemic times. So um, fantastic job uh, done by Clinton and his team on getting this done. Thank you. It's nice to have something go through that everybody's so pleased with. It. So it's, it's actually a great uh, redevelopment and I'll add my thanks to the team that has worked hard on this to actually make it another beautiful uh, thoroughfare in our city. Um, if no one else just wishes to speak, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Sum up Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to uh, 10.4, Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I seek to move an alternative motion. And the alternative motion uh, deletes six and replaces it with a new six. And the new six is, and I'm happy to provide the words, approves a 50% city-wide rate waiver for quarter two of the 2021 financial year as detailed at 9.3, 9 point no, hang on, let me do that again. Yeah, 9.3 comma, 9.3.1 comma. I can't really see that, sorry. Would you like me to read that again? Yes, please. Approves a 
Then citywide rate waiver for quarter two of the 2021 financial year as detailed at 9.3 comma, 9.3.1 comma, 9.3.4 and a rate waiver for the unemployed as detailed at 9.2 as detailed at 9.2 comma 9.2.1 comma 9.2.2 comma 9.2.3 comma 9.2.4 comma 9.2.6 and 9.2.7 comma funded as set out in 10.1 comma 10.2 comma 10.3 and 10.4 in the discussion paper for the meeting of council on Tuesday 14th comma 2020 July 14th 2020 Members, I'll look for a seconder. Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Yes, Councillor Knoll. I have uh, a material conflict of interest in 10.4.3 uh, and uh, in that we rent properties or we rent uh, premises on both of those. Um, what I'll do, Councillor Knoll, is I'll take this in parts when we take it through. So if you can absent yourself for part three, uh, you should be able to vote on anything else that's in that, um, Thank you. Uh, that motion. Sorry, Lord Mayor, wouldn't we all have a conflict of interest if we're raising hands if, if Councillor Knoll has a conflict of interest? Councillor Knoll is attending the Adelaide Central Market. Ah, okay. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Yes, he did. Sorry, Councillor Sims, as the seconder, did you wish to speak to him? I don't think Councillor Martin has spoken to me. I haven't spoken, Lord Mayor, I just gave you the motion. He was done reading the motion. <laughs> 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 Councillor Martin, would you like to? Yeah, speak I'd like to. to thank you. Yes. Now, look, I want to thank the administration uh, for the work they've done on this. It's detailed, it's complete, and it requires no delay whatsoever. Um, none whatever. Um, it will bring confidence to the ratepayers of the City of Adelaide. And and it will bring relief to thousands of ratepayers, commercial and residential, who are suffering hardship and at the very least a failure to open their wallets because of the lack of consumer sentiment in the city. Now, this isn't discriminatory. It won't apply just to hotels, gyms, training facilities and the like, listed at page 20. It would apply to every property owner in the city of Adelaide, including all of those listed. Now, for commercial properties, we're talking about a concession that will cost 10 million plus, and for residents, 3 million plus, $14.3 million to our current budget, and interest costs as well over the next 10 years. Now, uh, before members start to get concerned about that, let me just point out to you that that is less than 2% of the period over which we would borrow this money, 2% of our rateable income. That is to say, over the same period, the City of Adelaide will receive more than a billion dollars in rates. And we are talk talking here of $14.3 million. Now, the administration details how we can borrow this money at 10.2. I recommend that you have a look at that. Um, there is a special LGA loan facility available and we are effectively 
able to access that as the administration details under item 10. The only issue is, is it affordable? And look, I say uh, to all of you that at this moment, our city is on its knees. Business is folding and more will close every single week. Businesses are in deep trouble and it will get worse as what are likely to be uh, rumoured cuts to job subsidies are announced on the 23rd. Uh, that will impact very severely. Um, now, I, I don't need to tell you how desperately uh, uh, bad things are for mum and dad businesses. Those are the small businesses in this city, but also for medium sized businesses as well. Um, there are people also who've lost their jobs. A large number of people in the city of Adelaide are unemployed. Some of them, by the way, some of those unemployed are business owners who are joining the ranks of others who are now claiming an unemployment benefit. There are retirees who are literally reeling because they've retired in recent months or years and they've seen their super just decline. It's just, it is murderous out there. People are in deep financial trouble. Now, I have lived through, as a more senior person, I can tell you I have lived through golden times. I have lived through recessions we've had to have times. I've lived through the global financial crisis. I have never seen anything like this. I walked in here this morning and passed a cafe that I go to regularly and debated, will I go and have a coffee? And the sign said, closed until further notice. That's the picture in this city. Our city is really, and this city can show some leadership. Sure, we can just sit back and say things are crook, but we can actually do something. And this measure, if you approve it, and the means to do it are in the papers you have tonight, if you do it, you will immediately bring a shot in the arm to the economy of the city of Adelaide. This will do some good. And members, if you vote for nothing for the remainder of this term, I urge you to vote for this. This is the single most important thing you can do for our stakeholders, for our businesses, and for our residents. Give them 50% of their rates for one quarter, less than 2% of the billion dollars plus that we will take in over the same period of this loan. Please support this measure. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor, and uh, thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, you know, I think this motion demonstrates uh, through you, Lord Mayor, that Councillor Martin is a thought leader on this council in terms of putting forward positive ideas that are going to have a direct um, impact. And um, like uh, Councillor Martin, I've been very concerned about um, the impact of this financial crisis on the City of Adelaide. One of the elements that I am particularly concerned about um, is the impact of this economic crisis on those who are unemployed, those who uh, have lost their jobs. And we know that the federal government has uh, increased um, job seeker, but that those increases um, will cease in September. And what's going to happen at that time, I fear, is we are going to see people in our city being plunged into poverty um, because they will not be able to live off New Start. Um, it's been woefully inadequate for many years, and indeed this council, previous term of council, um, supported uh, a motion to increase the rate of New Start, which I think was initiated by yourself, Lord Mayor, um, which was uh, supported across the council chamber because we recognise that New Start is woefully inadequate. And uh, there's a national campaign happening at the moment to make that increase permanent. But the federal government dug their heels in and then said they're not going to do that. And I do worry that that's going to have a huge impact on people who have lost their jobs in the city of Adelaide who are our ratepayers. And um, the administration has uh, costed at my request um, 
a, a waiver for um, those who are unemployed. And um, I appreciate that Councillor Martin has incorporated that into this motion, um, along with a general reduction for all ratepayers, which I think is appropriate given um, the dire financial circumstances that our city confronts at the moment. So I support this and um, I urge um, other um, members to to do so, I'll um, sit down that little bit so I can see Councillor Keir and Councillor Hyde signalling over yeah. who should speak next. Um, so I will uh, I will um, pass the uh, the floor on to uh, Councillor Kira, who um, is obviously got the, got permission to uh, to speak. Thanks, Lord. Perhaps as the presiding member, I might actually look to hands on the floor first, Councillor oh, Sims. Uh, if that's all right. right. That was so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Members, that members to, to the floor. Would anybody else like to speak to the motion? Deputy Lord Mayor. I detest the term thought leader. I think it's incredibly <laughs> vacuous. Um, it's one of those buzzwords like innovation or, you know. Um, uh, that's just that's just that's just my opening comment, um, Lord Mayor. But sort of the rest of my commentary is, is around these, these, this vacuous idea. Uh, Councillor Martin mentioned rumour. Councillor Sims mentioned potential federal government policy. And I don't know about other councillors here, but I don't spend $15 million based on rumour. When we make decisions in the chamber, it should be based on the broader economic um, uh, settings that we're working within. And currently those broader economic settings are going to be determined um, by further responses and further stimulus that will be provided by the state government and the federal government. There is a mini budget which will be coming out on the 23rd of May. Um, and I expect that mini budget to outline- May. Uh, sorry, July. 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 Yes. I've gone back back in time. Um, uh, similar to this motion, Lord Mayor, because we've seen this a few times already, and we've already got a report sitting in here based on it as well. Um, uh, and the principles remain the same. I believe we should be taking a principles-based approach to reducing rates in the city um, for potentially a couple of quarters. But we should be doing that. We should be doing that once other levels of government have shown precisely what they're going to be doing because the federal government has flagged that they may have so seems, may yes. have a sector by sector approach and if they're having a sector by sector approach then perhaps we should think about how we tessellate and fit into that puzzle perhaps we should think about that i think uh, as the city of adelaide i mean if this if this is all we're going to be offering if councillor martin who's quite conservative in his fiscal policy thinks we should only be offering 15 million dollars well, I want to make that $15 million be as effective as possible. And for it to be as effective as possible, we need to see what other levels of government with a bigger bank balance, with a bigger checkbook are doing first. Once we have that, we can work out where the gaps are, where we can value add, and who in the city needs the most support. We should not be, we should not be rushing into this now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend $15 million of ratepayer fund, debt funded ratepayer money, by the way. Um, based on rumours of what other levels of government are doing. We can see what they're doing and then we can see how our policies can best complement theirs so that they have the biggest possible in impact on the economy in the city and for our rate payers. Thank you. Councillor Kerrin. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I have a couple of questions. Um, uh, can the administration indicate uh, whether this uh, waiver uh, might result in any reduction of services uh, particularly services uh, to the uh, vulnerable, uh, the underprivileged or impoverished. Thanks, CEO. Uh, through the presiding member, um, as Council's fully aware, we're already being asked to find $20 million in savings from the organisation um, and that will be um, aligned to services. Um, in terms of this motion before us, um, it will be debt funded, um, debt needs to be repaid um, over time and I would think um, as, a, um, as a city emerges and as um, council starts to better understand the impact on its long-term financial plan in relation to foregone revenue, um, foregone revenue that we're feeling and getting hit with here and now, um, as well as um, understanding what that means longer term, um, I do think that there will need to be a really good look at the services that the uh, city offers. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the administration. Um, 
Another question. Uh, this amendment uh, seeks a rate waiver for the unemployed. Um, is it the case that rates are presently paid by property owners entirely? As the report outlines in Paris 6.2.4, residential ratepayers who are owner occupiers. Does the administration feasibly have mechanisms to distinguish between those ratepayers who are employed and those Lord who are Mayor, look, all unemployed? Of this, those all of this unemployed. information is in the document. Why, why doesn't Councillor Kira read order, Lord this Mayor. instead of wasting our time? thank you. Sit down. So, that is not a point of order with respect. Councillor Kira, I will allow the question and, and then and, uh, and we it's will a, move on. It's a highly cogent uh, uh, matter for this. It, if it's amendment. in the report, then wait, let us have uh, the no, question. No. Thank you. Um, apologies, Councillor. I didn't actually hear the end of your question. Well, the, well, the question, the, the, the question in sum was, uh, do we, does the administration have the capacity to distinguish between ratepayers who are unemployed and those who are not? Uh, I would add to that in a, uh, in a way that, that provides efficacy uh, for the administration of such a waiver. Uh, through the presiding member, um, para 9.2.5 was um, uh, our attempt at um, ensuring um, that there was some eligibility around um, who would benefit um, from a rate waiver. Um, but I note, I don't think that's in, uh, in the amendment. So 9.2. 2.5 was our attempt at ensuring that there was some eligibility. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'll, I'll just finish with a comment, if I may. Um, I think that the amendment uh, is, uh, I think the spirit, of, well, I think the, 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 the spirit of reduce rates uh, to help with the current situation is entirely, uh, entirely supportable, is entirely something that uh, many of us, myself included, have spoken in favour of. I think the amendment as it stands right now uh, is uh, is um, uh, is simply uh, preemptive. It, it, it's too early. I, I don't think there should have been an amendment to our um, to our meeting agenda uh, at this evening, presented at this evening. I think this is this is an important step that we must take in a considered way. We have the opportunity to do that. Uh, we are of uh, um, the mind of doing that, and I think that at this juncture, it is premature. Uh, with the Deputy Lord Mayor, I would seek uh, prudence at this stage before undertaking this particular uh, amendment because it is substantial. And I would also say that it's passing strange that Councillor Sims would be voting, uh, in particular, would be voting for something which would see a reduction in the kinds of services that Councillor Sims always prevails against when it comes to seeking uh, efficiency in, in terms of administration. There's a strangeness here, and I, I, I you, suggest the councillors to be cautious about this one. Councillor Just a few just general comments. Uh, one, we all wish to help businesses in the city, and that, that certainly is a given, and also the people that live here. I think we do need to be cautious. Uh, I've, I've seen enough where uh, blunt instruments get unintended consequences. We need to be able to really target those people that need the assistance. Those people needing assistance also need to come out so that they're able, you know, to uh, ask for those uh, the, the help that they're looking for. Um, but it needs to be able to uh, assist them in getting through this situation. I mean, yes, September is going to be bad. We don't know what it's, what it's going to look like. So there's a lot of unknowns. And by playing our cards early, we may not be getting the best the value for the amount of effort that we're going to. Don't forget, the LA City Council is a business as well, and it does need that income. And it's not about not doing something, but but people who are hurting need to come out and, and say that we, we need the assistance. We need to be clear what level of the assistance will make a difference to them. Because if we don't, if we don't uh, act more cautiously, then we unnecessarily uh, uh, burden ourselves with long uh, you know, loans, etc., without generally delivering a benefit. Because I'd rather give more to those more in need than to give a little to everybody, and it doesn't really achieve any outcomes. And I think I'd rather wait, see what, uh, what is being offered, then come and have a look at uh, through with the administration what is it we're going to deliver and really make something significant to those that have the chance to survive because we don't know what that looks like yet until until sort of september we can really plan that we can really
think about it, rather than necessarily committing ourselves to great expenditure, which is only going to cost us money, and we're going to have to get it back from the very same people that we're going to offer it to. And uh, you know, I'd rather do that for all the right reasons. Councillor Knoll. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes. I don't quite understand the um, arguments against this. Um, what, are, what exactly are we waiting for? The, the pain is now, the shops are closed, people need help now. I suspect this is a rather roundabout way of just voting against something that uh, a team member has, hasn't put up, so it's very expected. I don't quite understand why the deputy Lord Mayor says it's based on a room. I didn't hear that that was. Um, uh, everything's in the report, and it would be really handy if the members actually read the reports. Um, a 50% rate cut for everybody stops the cherry picking that's in this in this report. We're already giving rate relief to some people. I don't understand why gyms, why some people are more worthy than others. Uh, a 50 percent rate cut for everybody is not a little gesture, it's a big gesture and we should be doing it now. We shouldn't be pussyfooting around. Um, we may lose a few um, services, um, but I tell you what, if I was unemployed or a fixed income, I wouldn't mind uh, tightening the belt of a few services uh, so that I could survive in my home or uh, survive in my business and not have to sell up. This is a very clear motion. This is, yes, I want to help our rate payers, or no, I don't. Don't be confused by the rhetoric of the ultra-conservative right-wing Team Adelaide. Councillor this Brian, is a yes or, no, yes or no, no vote. They don't like uh, reducing rates and they don't like giving money away. I can understand that because I'm a conservative politician as well. However, this is the time and the pathetic excuses saying it's premature. What on earth are you waiting for? What hideous thing do you expect that's going to make or wonderful um, manner from heaven that's going to fix us? The problem is now people aren't going to be able to pay their rates. Um, so please, sensible business members of uh, the majority faction, please have another think again and don't be led by your nose by ultra-conservative rubbish. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Mackey. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Lord Mayor. A couple of questions through you um, for the administration, um, and uh, without notice it may be difficult to um, provide me a, an answer, but to help to understand the, the benefit and how quickly such a benefit might flow uh, to uh, Ratepayers. Um, do we have an estimation on the proportion of residential uh, uh, residents of the City of Adelaide who are owner occupiers versus renters? That's question one. Question two um, uh, Do we have uh, a, a sense of the proportion of rates, commercial and residential, that are paid in advance? So a year in advance, so therefore the rate has rates have already been paid for uh, the current financial year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Um, through the presiding member, if possible, I probably need Liz to answer that first question in relation to owner occupier versus renters. If Liz could please come forward um, in relation to the proportion of ratepayers that pay their rates in full. Um, obviously, this financial year, no rates notices have gone out. Um, and judging from um, the data from last financial year, I'd say it's a very high proportion of ratepayers that pay their rates on a quarterly basis as opposed to um, paying in full at the start of the financial year. I'd say it'd be way over 90% that would pay quarterly. But Liz, if you're able to just clarify, that would be helpful. Thank you. Sure. Through the chair, the um, percentage of owner occupies um, currently we've got um, about 16,108 residential assessments, of which um, 5,164 are owner occupier and 10,944 are non owner occupiers. In terms of the percentage of people who have paid their rates up front, I would have to come back on that. I don't have those figures at hand. However, I can get them for you. Thank you. So, are there any other speakers? Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I wasn't going to 
speak. Sorry, Councillor, I'll just put your microphone on. Right. I wasn't going to speak, but I just think that this is a very important issue, and I think that this is something that we uh, we really, really need to think about. Yes, I agree with Councillor Martin that we are going, we are heading probably to times but we don't even know what the financial outcome is going to be after September. But I think when the Deputy Lord Mayor talks about things that are very premature, it's because we have a lot of assistance at the moment. We have JobKeeper, we've got JobSeeker, we've got a lot of support for businesses. And um, as far as I understand, you know, we are supporting businesses who goes up at the present moment and they are receiving support and everyone in this council is sympathetic to all the businesses and to all the residents. This is not a case of either you are for or you are either against and who you are as a person to support the ratepayers or not. This is really about this Adelaide City Council as a business and whether we be able to support this um, uh, this type of this amendment. I, I would be interested in revisiting this maybe after September. Um, I, that's as going back to it being a bit premature. Um, I really, as uh, Councillor Mackey has got questions that he needs answered, it's a very big ask. And, and like, like Councillor Martin, I do agree with, I have myself got wounds from the past recessions that we've had and I completely understand as a business owner, as an owner of, of Occupy, the, the strain that you do feel going through hardships and I am for one, do understand the hardships very, very well. But we have to think about this, the implications of this very seriously. It's not just something you can just add to amendment and just say, hey, I've saved the world. It is something that we need to really consider. And yes, it is premature. Yes, it's something that we um, can revisit down the road and I would like to. Um, but at this present moment to approve this, uh, I just really would like, like to know the implications to the City Council. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Um, apologies for the uh, distraction. Um, members, thank you. Councillor Abraham. Um, Lord Mayor, just a very uh, quick comment, mindful of the time. Um, I know that uh, many of us haven't been flying around, but uh, I would like to take members through a, uh, a normal aeroplane routine. When the aeroplane is going down, well, hopefully it won't be going down, but you're taught that if the plane is going down, these masks will drop off. What's the first thing you do? You put on your own mask before you help someone else. I think it's the same sort of thing here. We need to make sure that we are viable, that we are sustainable, and that we are uh, we remain here to support our businesses and our ratepayers into the future. I commend Councillor Martin. I think this is important and this is something that should be done. But at this stage, uh, I'm, I'm not willing to, uh, to support it. Uh, but uh, I would just like to remind members that uh, we're in a plane. Things are going down. Let's grab that mask, put it around us. Then we can help our uh, um, businesses and, uh, and ratepayers. Thank you, members. Um, if there's no other speakers, I will go back to Martin to sum up. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord. And thank you also to Councillor Abraham today for the uh, analogy of a plane that is hurtling towards Earth. Um, look, I, I, I am a bit puzzled by this response. I don't get how you can say I'm sympathetic and then vote against this. I don't get how you can say I'd rather wait and see what happens. When even the councillor, councillor Abrahimza today has used the analogy of the plane crashing. That, that is the reality of what is happening in our world at the moment. Businesses are crashing. People's employment is crashing. There is no mask. But there is the possibility that an organisation like this, instead of being so selfish as to say, we're a business too, wants to keep its hands in its pockets. The Deputy Lord Mayor encourages us to wait until his employer announces a new package of assistance on July 23rd. Lord Mayor. Well, that's, that's exactly yeah. what's happening. Now, please. Lord Mayor, I'd ask him to withdraw that remark. Sorry, my apologies. I wasn't able to get my microphone on. There. No, I'm going to let Councillor Martin sum up, and if we can stick to the business, I, I am thank you very much. I am addressing the arguments, Lord Mayor. I I, I listened to Councillor Canole say no, no, no. Let's let's not at this time. We've got to look after ourselves. When his business 
has been a recipient of council largesse, no rent for months. I listened to Councillor Kira say to us, oh, I want to know whether we're going to cut services and how it's going to impact the bottom line. All of that information is there in the papers. And if he looks carefully at page 93, the option that's outlined by the administration demonstrates the impact on our bottom line. If he looks carefully at section 10, it talks about how the money will be borrowed and at the phenomenally low rate, phenomenally low rate, which is being offered by the Local Government Association. This has been considered by the administration and it's put to us as an option. The paper says it is an option. That is the option I'm saying to you is open to us. Now look, um, this, this council is made up largely of people who rep represent the business sector. This is the moment. This is when you step up to the plate or, or you can't say that you're a representative of business. Team Adelaide is supposed to be understanding of what business wants. And right now, business wants a hand, not an apology, not a declaration of sympathy, not an argument that we can defer this until some other time, which may never happen, not some absurd notion that we can actually double this or increase this at some other time. Uh, these are promises from people who are being insincere. Members, if you feel for business, you need to adopt this. If you feel for ratepayers in desperate circumstances, you need to adopt this. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Oh, my apologies, my apologies, members. I need to take this in, this in parts, <coughs> as promised. So I will do part one, two, four, five, and if you could scroll down, one, two, four, five, and the new six. Um, members to the vote, those in favour? Sorry, one, one, one clarification, Lord Mayor. Um, are we voting for the amendment as before with Councillor Martin as part we, of this first? We are, um, yeah. So we're, this is to vote for Councillor Martin's amendment, let's be clear. This is to vote for the amendment, the alternate motion yeah, okay. as a whole. All right. Okay. Except for part three, which I'm doing separately because I have a conflict of interest and Councillor Canole will have to leave. Um, at what juncture will Councillor Martin's uh, vote be void and we vote for the Councillor original? Councillor Kerr, we go through the process. If we vote for this first, this is voted on, it's either lost or it's it's carried, and then we okay. it becomes a substantive. Well, could I just one, could I suggest, Lord Mayor, that we just do one and two and just leave six out and take like take it all in parts, so that we don't have to go through this process again and go back to the original recommendation? And oh, I'm very um, that, well. Uh, no, I'm going to actually do what I did originally. Sorry, I'm doing parts one, two, four, five, and six, which is the amendment. Part three will vote on separately. So, members, those that are in favour, which includes the alternate motion. Uh, from Councillor Martin. Those in favour? Those against? Division. That is lost. Division. division has been called. <coughs> Council members, a division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please rise and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims, Councillor Mackey and Councillor Martin. Thank you, members. I'm going to vote on part three. So, Councillor Canole, thank you. Members, part three, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, me um, in the first part, um, the majority has voted against the extension of the rate hardship measures. That's correct? In voting down six? That is correct, isn't it? No, it goes back to the substantive. goes back to the oh, substantive. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. So apologies, members, so there's no six. 
So we have voted on one, two, three, four, and five. And six. No, six was lost. So, members, what I need now is someone to move a motion for items one, two, four, five. Sorry. Sorry. I need to get clarification on whether or not the um, could you use a microphone? Sorry, sorry council. Whether or not the parklands license fee is relates to the university, in which case I need to leave the room for that um, vote. Um, they do. That is a okay. So you and your conflict of interest. Sorry, council. I need to declare a conflict of interest and leave the room. Uh, he has already voted. Uh, we will not a perceived conflict of interest. Um, yeah. So, Simon, yes. yes Sorry, uh, Councillor Hart. I declare a conflict of interest as lie on the, on, on the soccer club. I'm, I'm the president of the soccer club who is a tenant for. So um, that's in part three, three as well. And part 23 as well. Part three as well. Because we've actually mentioned all the rules. We have dealt with that. Yeah. Um, members, I need someone to now move the original. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Parts one, two, four, five, and six. And second at DLM. Members, any discussion? Uh, he can come back in. Thank you. If not, <laughs> if not, Councillor Kouros, someone? Yeah. Um, I think we're all Microphone, please. Sorry. I think we're all in agreement that you know uh, this is something that we would like to revisit, and it being, as Deputy Lord Mayor said, premature because of the extra. And you did, you did say premature. Um, you know, with with the look, a lot of support that the businesses are getting at the moment with JobKeeper, JobSeeker, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, even youth allowance. And there is no mean testing for youth allowance. Um, so you know, if there is a lot of benefit out there that can support households and businesses. And I do, but I do take on board, this could come to an end, or will come to an end in September. And we need to know what that looks like at that point. But in all, in saying that, we do have a report, or we'll, uh, discussing this again, I think further, uh, 23rd of July. Um, so um, I think um, we, oh, I'm interrupted, so I don't know whether I should continue or let Councillor Martin speak. Please um, continue, but, members. Uh, I think that it's um uh, it's not a question of whether we do or we don't support businesses. Um, it is a question of uh, that we do, but we have to be mindful in the way that we do it because um, we do have to actually deliver for the community. Is there something, Councillor Sims? Councillor Sims. Sorry, Councillor Sims. Um, so if um. This is my train of thought here. So if it's something that we'll be um, able to deliver later, that would be um, something that I'm sure all the councillors here would like to review. Okay. Members, if not, Councillor Soros, Kuros, summer. That was summer. Great. Members to the vote on um, parts one, two, four, five, and six. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you, members. That takes us to item 10.5, which is the 2021 Events and Festival Sponsorship Program. Uh, Councillor Martin, I believe you called this one out. Yeah, uh, yes, Lord Mayor. I have a, a couple of questions in relation to this, and, and I'm just a bit confused on reading the papers about what we're doing. Okay. 
Okay, Could so I are, you, are you moving before oh, yeah, you ask move, the question? I'll move. You'll move. I'll look for a second. Sorry, Lord Mayor, I'm um, just close a conflict of interest and I'll leave the room. It's a um, material conflict related to my employer. Thank you. Is that for the whole thing? I can take this in part. I'm happy to leave the room for the discussion so that we can talk through. Uh, Lord Mayor, similar to Councillor Sims uh, in relation to one of the uh, matters, um, and I will, in the abundance of caution, um, join him in leaving the room. I think Councillor Mackey that uh, on you, uh, uh, is in 1.4, and I am taking this in parts because I myself has have a conflict in 1.2, and will be asking the Deputy Lord Mayor to take the chair for that particular item. So I'll take them in parts, because I know that if you live in the city of Adelaide, it's very hard not to have conflicts. So we'll work through it in that way. Councillor Sims, you're happy with that as well? So uh, Councillor Mackey has noted his conflict in 1.4, Councillor Sims 1.4 and myself in 1.2, and we'll get to that. Councillor Martin has moved. I'll look for a seconder. Members, thank you, Councillor Knopp. Councillor Martin, you had a few questions. Uh, yes, I'm a bit conflicted. Um, uh, confused, sorry. Um, now, look, is it the case that we are voting to support the movement of funds to support the Chinatown Association Chinese New Year? Is that, is that correct? We're not voting to support that? Uh, it's the acting CEO. I don't believe it is, but I'll just make sure that we have. Uh, through the presiding member, no. Okay, so uh, 2.1 doesn't refer to that. Uh, okay, that's fine. And um, the Dream Big Children's Festival, that was put forward by the Festival Centre Trust or by the organisers of the Dream Big Children's Festival? I need to ask Michelle to clarify who the applicant is. Thank, Thank you, you, Michelle. Uh, we need to take that on notice. Thank you. Um, did you wish to speak to the motion? No, no, no. no? no. Councillor Canal, did you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, members, I will take this in parts. So I will look for, um, so Councillor Martin, are you happy just to move the parts if I call them out? Yes. Yeah. Which is 1.1, uh, 1.3, uh, 2.1, 2.2.3. I will, ex excluding 1.2, 1.4, so members will leave at the same time, I think. Uh, so members, uh, if you are happy to vote for that, 1.1, 1.3, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor, would you mind taking the chair? Uh, we will then go to the vote on 1.2, 1.4. Members, I seek a move from one two and one four. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Seconded, Councillor Noel. Councillor Abraham today. Do you wish to speak? Councillor Noel. Members, Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Put that to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. That is carried. We please invite the Lord Mayor back in. Thank you, members. Um, uh, members, that takes us to. Um, let me have a look. Where did we go to? Uh, Ten point seven, which is the New Year's Eve. Um, now, I think it was Councillor Canal that called that one out. Who is he? Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Kira. Councillor Kira, I have an alternative. 
its own motion. But so I'm sorry, I've got. Sorry, I've been caught up in stuff. We're just noting at this juncture, or are we actually approving? No, we are approving at five. We're approving at five trial hybrid program. Correct. Yes, I've got words about that, but uh, you can welcome to speak first. Or so. So, members, sorry, I will do this by hands rather than you decide who sorry. speaks and who doesn't. Sorry. Perhaps if you turn your microphones off, then I will look to the floor for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. This is very democratic. I do love it. And, and the seconder, thank you, Councillor Kerr. Uh, I just wish to move uh, a slight variation to this and thus an alternative motion. Uh, I just wish to change July to August at the bottom. <laughs> there are still 31 days in August. Yes, good. So thank you. I'll just ask if your seconder is happy to support that change, 31st of July to the 31st of August. On the very bottom line. Okay. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I think, uh, by and large, this is an excellent report. Um, uh, it does everything that the council has asked for. Uh, it preserves uh, the uh, charm and flair that we have with fireworks, but also introduces some new and exciting elements, and some innovative elements, um, which I think would be welcomed by the public. I think it would be a fantastic way to see off what has been an annus horribilis um, uh, in 2020. Um, um, uh, the slight ch uh, date change um, is just, unless unless there were any other uh, sponsors already lined up, I just think it might uh, pay to give them an extra few weeks um, uh, to come to the table. Um, uh, I think there will be significant interest over this uh, over this project. I think it's something exciting. It's not often do we see such change in Adelaide. Um, we are often a very conservative bunch of people, um, but for this Australian first for a New Year's Eve celebration, I think we'll definitely see a lot of uh, businesses and corporates in, in Adelaide be lining up to be part of this exciting event. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Councillor Kerr. Uh, Lord Mayor, I, it, it might be appropriate for me to withdraw my seconding and for you to put it on the floor uh, for a, a more appropriate seconder as I'm actually intending to speak against the motion. Um, it, does that does it sound right or can um, I speak against the motion as a seconder? Uh, as a seconder, generally, you aren't speaking against the motion, so I might look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. So, Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak? Thank you. Councillor Kerry, did you wish to speak? Yeah, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, look I think that uh, we've, we've been through a lot of a, a fair bit of uh, stuff, a fair bit of fireworks on this topic already. Um, I, I will just leave it and, and say that I, I do think that I, I think councillors can appreciate my uh, principal opposition to this. And I, I, I would like to say at this juncture that I don't think that we should be seeking uh, additional funding uh, for the hybrid uh, um, entertainment, irrespective of what I have said in the past about this uh, particular topic. I think that uh, right now um, I'd put to councillors that a hybrid entertainment um, uh, thing for, for New Year's Eve this year uh, will will look profligate, uh, Lord Mayor. I think, uh, in all honesty, it, I think it will look uh, like we are spending money that we shouldn't be spending. Unfortunately, I mean, it's not something I had anything to do with, but unfortunately, uh, as a consequence of the reports on the fireworks uh, proposals, the hybrid thing, the, the, the sum $550,000 was put out there. Um, now, we all know that that's not what it's going to cost, um, but it's somewhere between 50 and 550. Um, but 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 I, I do think we need to take stock of that messaging at this juncture. Um, that number's been out there. It was put out, um, you know, in reports. Uh, we've got to take account of that. I think that we would be better served um, uh, postponing consideration of a hybrid show until the following year. I think what our, um, the public, what folks in Adelaide want more than anything this year is a return to comfort, uh, as a return to tradition, as a return to joy, uh, and uh, moreover, a return to uh, city, uh, to, to, to levels of government demonstrating uh, that they are not spending money uh, over and above what is necessary. So I, I would suggest to councillors, let's think twice about this. We can, we don't need to do this right now. In a month from now, uh, we can, we could uh, 
potentially agree, and I put this as a debt board there as well, or we could potentially agree on a deferral for this year, but let's look at something for the following year, um, irrespective of my, my uh, opposition to uh, hybrid shows. I think that's a separate issue, and I think we should take account of that right now. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Uh, Councillor Oh, I'm totally confused um, by the last speaker. Um, I, I, will, I can't really flag which way I'm going to vote because I was going to until then. Um, I, I don't agree with the hybrid either, but that's because I don't want any fireworks. Um, I think the lesson was learned last year. We were, we were pretty uh, so soundingly criticised uh, initially, but as the Lord Mayor explained, we'd already spend the money and already committed it then so that was understandable but I think the message was uh, was clear that during our bushfire season uh, now there are other technologies to light up the sky and we saw some wonderful ones that it was time to move on from fireworks I like fireworks like anybody else does but we lit the banks of the torrents we got bad publicity from it the late one is too late for children anyway uh, so I will wait and see. I will prefer the hybrid uh, to pure fireworks, which is what I think Council Care is going for. So I'll wait to see what the numbers stack up to. Hybrid is better than pure fireworks, but I'd rather just pure uh, light shows. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members, Councillor Martin. Just a question for the administration. Um, how, how much in total will the New Year's Eve event cost? What is the budget allocation? Uh, through the presiding member, um, it's in. It's on the second page. The draft budget allocation, as out for consultation, is three hundred seventy-one thousand dollars in total. Thank you. Look, I, I, I can't help feeling that the people who are reviewing this council meeting will note that there were. There was great difficulty in accepting uh, a rate waiver for residents and businesses that would have brought to them much needed financial relief from these particularly stressing economic circumstances. And then the very same people who spoke against reaching out to our stakeholders to assist them are proposing to spend almost $400,000 more than the interest payments on the money that would have been available to them. Now, that is that is the reality of this council. That is what people need to understand. These people, Team Adelaide, Councillor are not Martin. your friends. Councillor Martin, thank you. We're not talking about whether people are your friends or not. We're talking to whether we are going to pass this motion before you. Well, no, I don't, I don't agree with you, Lord Mayor. We're talking, <laughs> there's a, well, that, that's fine. I, I'm entitled to my point of view and you're entitled to offer your point of view. And I'm just saying to you that this is a contrast that will not be lost on the ratepayers of Adelaide. And additionally, I have real concerns about this um, and everyone denies it, but we did set fire to the parklands on the last occasion we did this. We did do it in the middle of a fire danger season. Um, it was reported widely, not only nationally, but here in Adelaide on every television news service, in every newspaper, um, City Council fireworks set Riverbank on fire. Um, I have no desire to see that again. And, and frankly, the more I think about it, the more I can't justify um, withholding support from ratepayers for some crackers on the 31st of December that may again burn the parklands or worse people. Uh, I think it's just foolish. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Carras. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I guess uh, uh, we, we've, we've talked about this a lot for like it's Groundhog Day, um, but you know we've had um, so many discussions on why not, and one would be that it reminds people of the war, it reminds people of the fires. Um, you know, there's so many um, arguments that we've had, but not one really, really has stood out to me to say, yep, I can see a really good reason why not to have the fireworks. Um, it, it, people love them, people enjoy it. It's New Year's Eve. 
Now, the point of spending 370,000 for New Year's Eve is for the businesses, because when you have people going out and about in the city, what then happens, little less than economics, they spend money, and that's what businesses want. So our job is to be, to be able to provide um, something out there for the city, for people to come into the city. And this is what the New Year's Eve event does. It encourages people to come into the city. It supports the businesses. They come in, they might have a meal beforehand, they might buy something, they might go out afterwards. And that is what we need in our city. We need life, we need vibrancy. Could you imagine having a New Year's Eve event with nothing, absolute silence? That is not what our city needs. We need to actually be mindful in what we can do for our ratepayers and for the people of Adelaide. And this is what they look forward to every year. And we're going to take that away. Hell, let's just take away Christmas as well. I mean, you know, we spend money there. So let's let's, let's just really just look at this for what it is. No one's complained. No one's found offensive. You look at the comp you look at the comments that I see in the advertiser. Only a very handful might make a comment about not wanting to celebrate New Year's Eve. Actually, I don't even really think I saw a comment like that. But yeah, let's investigate hybrid. I'm all I'm all for it. Um, you know, if we get a support by someone to um, to fund that, even better. That supports us. Um, it it is a, a, a celebration event. Um, and it doesn't drive people to go and have therapy. Um, and a question first, Councillor Kira, then I'll come to you. Sorry, Councillor Knott. Just again, another quick comment. And, and uh, I look at this, I mean, the difficulty for our city, or the difficulty, the, the interesting part for our city is the fact that uh, we are not just a business, we, we are a social aspect, there. we are part of the community. And our role in the community is certainly to support when we see that the need there is. Um, certainly is to uh, enable and set an, a, an environment and a, and a mood for the, for the community and also uh, enable them to celebrate occasionally. And, and a New Year's celebration is just about that. It is about looking forward to the next year. And, and God damn, I think most of us are looking forward to next year. And I think we need to be very mindful of that. And we are. this is one of these things we are doing for our community. And also, as the capital city, uh, this also promotes Adelaide. We're talking about uh, Adelaide and, and, and keeping us the forefront for people who come here, but uh, and also as an alternative for, for, for holidays when they, you know, etc. Uh, so that promotion aspect would disappear if we remove the, the fireworks, etc. Because when they're looking for something visual on television and they're going around the countryside, around the world, we would miss out on all of that. I'm sure people are not going to come together in, in Elder Park to hold hands, if we're allowed to at that time, and maybe have a few sing songs. But there has to be something more spectacular. There has to be something that uplifts us. And that's what we are doing for the wider community in Adelaide. I think we've got to be very mindful of that. And I think uh, to, uh, to try to link all these different things together, to, to try to link the $300,000 regular occurrence with a $15 million expense, irrespective of about the interest, because the interest is still only that component, but the rest of it still has to be paid back. These two are two completely separate things. We don't, we don't not celebrate small uh, times in our lives, uh, you know, wherever we can, and we're able to contribute that. And it is a nominal sum when we're looking at the large sums we're, we've been discussing today about assisting business and, and the community without fully knowing what they're doing or what's coming up. So I'm all for that because it's a little something we actually give and we're giving hope. And I think that's worth a lot, not just uh, some money that may or may not, um, you know, assist people that really need it. Thank Councillor Kerr. Did you have a question? I have a question, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Um, the motion, given that the motion is about approving a trial hybrid program uh, and that it states number four that we will seek funding in partnership uh, because of the additional budget requirements nominated at $50,000, can the administration say whether what is envisaged uh, as a as consideration for that uh, 50000 or more, uh, the quid pro quo, can the administration indicate whether um, whether it is contemplated that such uh, consideration for the extra sum of money for a hybrid program might might include corporate logos in the sky or any or any kind or any kind of uh, essentially corporate or commercial advertising uh, as part of the program? I can see it. 
Um, through the presiding member, um, any commercial neg negotiation um, when it comes to um, council seeking sponsorship does usually come with some sort of offer. Um, and so for that 50,000, it could well be naming rights. It could well be, um, you know, a certain amount of promotion um, throughout or leading up to New Year's Eve. So there could be various things in terms of whether it would say, you know, sponsored by such and such, but emblazoned across the sky, I wouldn't be able to say at this point. Thanks. Thank you uh, to the administration. Follow-up question. Uh, can the administration undertake that, would this uh, motion be uh, carried? Can the administration undertake that, would this motion be carried? Uh, we will rule out any kind of advertising in the sky uh, as part of the... <laughs> Is actually, <laughs> we, we, can the administration undertake that we would rule out any part, any kind of advertising uh, as part of the uh, high bill program? Um, through the C acting CEO. <coughs> through the presiding member, no. No, I'm not ruling that out. No, not ruling that out, not ruling that out. Okay, so we're not ruling that out. Okay, thank you. Councillor Martin, I'm assuming that's a question? Yes, it is a question. <laughs> sorry, most um, members, I'll just, <laughs> sorry, I think we'll just, um, Councillor Martin, yes, I'll look, look at you and you can look at me and we'll be fine. Thank you. Um, can I ask the administration, having not ruled out sky writing and uh, other sky advertising, whether you can rule out using the festival centre shell for advertising for a sponsor? That's not ours to, to use, is it? That's certainly not ours to um, use. So. so you wouldn't think of hiring that as well? Um, well, there's certainly been discussions in the past with the uh, Stadium Management Authority and with um, a lot of the commercial tenants along that riverbank precinct around um, how we can better integrate and perhaps pool funds um, on New Year's Eve uh, to really bring to life and make sure that experience along that precinct is the best it can be. Um, but, you know, we've certainly never offered to um, rent or um, use that um, shell as far as I'm aware. But may I ask, you're therefore considering engaging with other uh, neighbours of that area um, in some kind of sponsorship or some kind of event co-hosting? Through the presiding member, we've tried really hard over many years um, to make sure that we're working with um, all those relevant um, operators throughout that precinct um, and in particular the stadium management authority so there's usually um, a big bash cricket event that takes place that so not only are there 50 to 60 thousand people in the elder park and riverbank precinct but there's usually another 50 thousand within the la dover so we make sure that um, our event is coordinated with their event and fireworks are timed things like that and could i just ask for an assurance that we will not partner with the Stadium Management Authority to promote their new hotel as part of any sponsorship arrangement? To the presiding member, no. I'm not at this point. Um, I'm, I'd need to understand from the teams how far discussions have progressed um, with the Stadium Management Authority in coordinating the event. So not at this stage. Perhaps, um if, if I may, um, perhaps when we have looked at uh, that 50,000, that additional 50,000, that can be brought back in or um, distributed to members in terms of information. Absolutely. Um, I won't do a formal report, but I can certainly let you know through e-news by the end of August whether we've been successful and give you an update on the planning uh, for New Year's Eve this year. By then, I think we'll have more information in relation to um, any uh, requirements associated with events coming back online. So we should have more um, detail to be able to share with members. Members, if not, I might just say a few things before I hand back to the Deputy Lord Mayor Summer. Um, look, I agree as a, a capital city, we should be doing a New Year's celebration. It is central to one of the offerings of the city. I do still have real concerns around the restrictions and in particular the limited numbers that we're going to be catering to. Um, instead of the normal 80,000, we've got 1,000 in Elder Park and 10,000 in Pinky Flat. Um, I'm also uh, share concerns and I had a discussion with Councillor Mackey this afternoon around the ticketing and what happens to those people that have been turning up at Elder Park for years and years and years with their families only find out that they can't be let in because 
because I didn't realise there was going to be a ticket. So obviously there's a lot more work that has to go into this proposal. Um, I, I do actually would, would like something to come back to us, um, but perhaps we can talk about that in terms of what the final event might look like, particularly once we've either been able to secure or not secure sponsorship and what that sponsorship is going to deliver. Um, but I'd also like a little bit more thought, a little bit more work in terms of numbers. Hopefully the restrictions will be lifted by then and we won't have to be addressing this at all. Um, but certainly, um, you know, the loss of some of the things that uh, our, um, our citizens enjoy most, like the family zone and the roving um, uh, um, performers and uh, some of the live musicians, which are really integral to what we deliver at New Year, um, I think would be sad. I also think that the teams have shown that we can be very creative and really reimagine things um, as we did with Anzac Day when we had pipers in all the squares, which is still, I'm still getting comments from uh, people around the city that thought that was one of the most beautiful things that we did this year um, in celebration of an, an annual event. Um, and I do think that there are perhaps a few more tricks that we could find up our sleeves to deliver something quite special for New Year's Eve as we reimagine things going forward. Um, with that, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Well, I'd almost sponsor it for $50,000 if I could have my name emblazoned across the sky. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if that's quite what's on offer, though. Um, uh, again, I just want to reiterate, this is a fiscally responsible way forward. Um, but we get to try on something new and innovative, uh, and we get to do it uh, all while mitigating uh, economic impact and uh, you know, impact to our hip pocket. Um, uh, so I think it's a fantastic idea. I do fully appreciate um, uh, Councillor Kira's concerns and the need to uh, safeguard fireworks. I, I understand how, particularly given some of the rhetoric around this, he may see this as the thin edge of the wedge when it comes to removing them entirely under the guise of something absurd like climate change or something like that. But uh, and So I do fully have sympathy uh, with that argument and I appreciate the passion that he brings to the chamber. He is truly a conviction a politician on this issue, a conviction politician, and unlike some who just Thank play you, to, Thank you, Deputy play to Lord Mayor. Thank you, about, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, I'm just acknowledging his We are summing but, up on the uh, motion. Yeah, it's, Thank it's you. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic way forward. I think uh, the administration have found a way forward that brings the two uh, extremes of the chamber, and of course I'm right in the middle, that brings the extremes of the chamber together to provide a way forward um, uh, through this delivery of a hybrid entertainment program. Uh, and I, I hope it comes to fruition. I'm very, very excited about seeing it. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Our members, that takes us to 10.8. Um, I believe Councillor Martin, you pulled this one out. Uh, yes. Thank you, Lord Mayor. This is resumption of the City Connector service. Correct. This is noting a, a letter and noting the period. Thank you. And I propose uh, to move a uh, alternate motion that includes both one and two, um, but then adds a three and to um, assist uh, our staff. It, it is in fact what is later on in the motion will notice city connected. So if you just move that forward, that will save a lot of work. So, um, so Councillor Martin, are you trying to take all of that and put it in the... Yes. Um, so... So we've got... Uh, the... It would read um, as the, um, uh, the motion does. Um, um, Oops. Ask the administration to initiate and then points one, two, and three below. Um, 
And um, that will save a bit of time later on. I will look for a seconder. Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran, thank you. Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I note uh, that this matter is coming up later on, or is that in conference? I can't remember. Okay. Um, can I just uh, record um, my shock and displeasure that uh, uh, Mr. Canol, uh, sorry, uh, Minister Canol, Canol oh. Junior, not Canol Senior. Thank you, Councillor um, Martin. Canol uh, Junior wrote uh, to this council uh, January last year and said, we do, do not want to fund the connector service uh, on the 30th of June and nothing was said to the electors. We didn't find out until May, even though the administration knew, and as you told us uh, in answer to a previous question, Lord Mayor, you knew as well. Um, however... Um, I think I didn't. Thank you. No, Lord Mayor, you said you didn't know, but you said you couldn't remember when. No, you asked me whether I had received the letter in January of that year, and I said, no, I hadn't, and nor had I discussed it with the CEO. Lord Mayor, that's not according to the facts. You said on the night that you had, the CEO said to you he had discussed it with you and he couldn't remember either when that occurred. I'm sorry, the CEO did not say he had discussed it with me. He said he couldn't recall and nor could I. And I went back to my notes and we had not discussed it. So I was not aware of it. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Well, Lord Mayor, I invite everyone to have a look at that tape at the last council meeting and see exactly what was said. And I Mind. invite them too. Thank you, Councillor Martin, Thank because you. I know that I didn't, so therefore I will stick with that. Okay, Lord Mayor. Um, now, the interruption and your denials have taken the best part of a minute. Could I please have that credit to the time that's available to me? Please continue. Thank you. Okay, uh, look, um, I just want to say that um, uh, we have won a reprieve, and that is all we have won. It is an agreement from uh, Minister Canole um, to extend the service um, until the end of December um, and I do not uh, want this council and I expect it will happen to engage the rhetoric we've heard with the uh, DLM saying it, it's uh, expensive and uh, ineffective and Councillor Kira saying that our ratepayers expect us to rationalise the service. That is not what people are thinking. People are thinking that this is one of the most valuable services that the city provides. Um, there is, however, a mood among ratepayers, Lord Mayor, to consider uh, the service as it is and whether uh, changes might be possible. Um, it is entirely as a consequence of the circumstances we find ourselves in where the service is under threat. Now, I'm not saying people will entertain a lesser service. I'm not saying they'll entertain a greater service, but I am saying there is a need, I believe, with a service that has less than five months to run, that we have an obligation to consult and ask ratepayers what they want. We didn't do that over the Aquatic Centre and we got into awful trouble. Here is an opportunity to go on the front foot and say to ratepayers, okay, we've all had a near-death experience. What do you think of the service? What should be included? Uh, what do you consider? Now, I know there will be an argument that we can't afford this, that the cost of $40,000 is too great. I remind members that we're spending uh, more than that uh, to challenge the Hutt Street Centre. Uh, and this is money well spent because it will enable people to talk about how they want to be connected. People like uh, the residents of the Helping Hands Center, who you'd all be aware, uh, co collected a substantial petition uh, and presented it to this council. Um, they are crying out for the continuation of the service, but even their leaders have views about what that should look like. So, uh, Lord Mayor, if this council uh, supports this initiative, 
um, uh, to at least go and ask people what they want, then I think we will be well placed to consider the future post December, whatever that may look like. But to begin contemplating changes at any time without asking people would be, in, I, in my view, um, uh, a thing that would not be appreciated by the ratepayers. Councillor Moran, would you wish to speak? Councillor Gross. I have a slight variation. So there's... I don't know where to fit in amongst that, but I just would like to add um, everything stays as is, um, but just uh, I think I sent it in the wording beforehand. Um, but it was meant to be to the motion of 17.5, but he's pointing the motion into this. Yes, yeah. one moment, Councillor Carras, and we'll find it. <laughs> Just that point one. That's right. Thank you, Councillor. Um, this is an amendment. Yeah. So this will be an amendment, and so I'll, so I'll put that there, and then I'll ask for a uh, a seconder to the amendment. Thank you, DLM. Uh, so that would be a new. Four as a point, as a point, as opposed to three point one, three point two, three point three. Um, thank you, Councillor Gouras. Can I speak to it? Yeah, that's good. Um, I agree. I agree with the, um, all that Councillor Martin has said. It is a very important service to the community and to our city. Um, a reason uh, why I would like to call a workshop is because I would like to obviously voice my thoughts. Um, what I would like maybe to extend part of the route route uh, for the uh, for the uh, extend uh, for the uh, connector bus um, and also maybe uh, change the signage on it as well because if you're a visitor to the city you're not really familiar uh, with the bus zones so maybe to highlight um, something um, on the bus for it to be more visual for tourists um, it is as uh, important it is part of our City requirement for our community for the elderly, which I went and supported them and helped them with that petition, um, and also uh, the petition that is in today's um, agenda from the uh, students. Um, so it is very much a valued service um, for the community in North Adelaide. Uh, I um, I think that we should all review it and have a workshop for it and voice uh, what we would like to see, and then take that out to the consultation to the public. I think it's a great idea. I think we would need to uh, consult with them and see what their thoughts are, and uh, and hopefully we could uh, you know work to a better uh, route for the uh, for the uh, connector bus. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Did you wish to speak? Just that I'd echo Councillor Kouros' sentiments. Um, I do think there's a lot there's a lot we can garner from speaking to the public. I'm actually more interested though um, uh, in the people that are not using it and what they might like to. It's all well and good to talk to talk directly to people in the city. Of course, it's going to be harder to get feedback from potential tourists who are not here in the city. But I think there is some work we can do to identify identify shortcomings in the current route um, uh, and also the promotional lack thereof of the city connector um, uh, as it stands. I think different colours, having more available material, talking about where it's going, when it's going there. All these things uh, we can do to increase the uptake um, and in doing so uh, we actually increase efficiency but when we're talking about cost per trip which again was one of the major sticking points for the minister and and also for myself it was let's be honest it was or it currently is the most expensive uh, city loop service offered in this country of 25 million people and that is something we should be looking to fix that is absolutely something we should be looking to fix now does fixing it mean cutting it entirely absolutely not um, and i'm so pleased that the council um, supported my motion which rejected that entirely. I'm so pleased that we were able to unite 
um, uh, on that and send that very, very firm message, which I point, think in point, most point of order, Mayor, the motion did not say that. It the actually motion, said no. The motion it said authorizes it. the administration to negotiate with the minister no, for no, an no, adequate no. replacement. That was your motion, that is a mis which was defeated. Members, please, one at a time. grandstanding and distorting oh, what you. was put to the. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Of course, Lord Mayor. Of course, Members. My motion actually read that Council one rejects. That's how my motion read, and that was actually an amendment to Councillor Martin's motion, which was merely and meekly seeking to okay, go to the Minister. Okay, we're not talking about the motion negotiate. now. If we can go back to what we're talking about um, right uh, now. But I, I think the facts are important because we need to know where we've come from to go to know where we're going. And where we're going is hopefully uh, uh, to a better, more effective, more cost-effective city connector uh, that moves more people, that welcomes more people, more visitors to our city and gets them around more easily. Um, we need to think about all these things. We also need to look at where there's been growth in our city to see that the connector is servicing the people in those new apartments. Um, in those new complexes. We need to be engaging them because, like I said, I'm not just interested in the people that use it. I want to preserve it for them, but I want to know who are the people that would use it, but it doesn't go down their street. I want to know who those people are so we can engage them uh, and bring them into this process as well. I want to know about uh, uh, from the businesses who may visit their business as, a, as, a, as, a, as an international or a domestic guest. Uh, those are the things that I think this will bring, um, and Councillor Cross's workshop will help in, in bringing that out as well from the elected members. Thank you, Councillor Kerry, then Councillor Sims. Thanks, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, as we're debating the amendment put forward by Councillor Martin, uh, I speak against this amendment. Um, I speak strongly and firmly against uh, a, another uh, expensive public consultation, uh, which I submit uh, will not actually inform us. Uh, any to any greater degree than uh, to the extent that we already have information available to us uh, from DIPTI um, and uh, from the available data and statistics. Let us not forget uh, that we are delegated uh, as councillors to make decisions um, and particularly uh, to make decisions in difficult times on behalf of our constituents. We are not delegated to defer uh, to endless public consultation. We know what the public consultation is going to look like. We've got, um, you know, if you look at the numbers for the for the petitions involved uh, this evening, uh, they're, they're, they're parlous and they're going to be even lower um, given the current circumstances. Our constituents expect us to make a decision based on the data and information that we have. Uh, and we know uh, from, from the information we have already uh, that the, the, the current, as it is currently uh, formed, the city bus connector, the, the city connector bus costs ratepayers uh, seven dollars per person per trip. Uh, that is the equivalent of an Uber trip per person per trip, and the equivalent of an Uber ride per person per trip. This is a service that should be rationalised uh, for the sake of everyone, for the sake of jobs in this city. It ought to be, and we don't need another public public consultation. Is going to muddy the waters and not provide us the information and the data that we need. So I submit to councillors that this actual amendment uh, is a waste of ratepayers' money coming at a time uh, that is in, that is particularly uh, counterproductive. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Before I speak, are we speaking to Councillor Kouros's amendment or Councillor Martin's variation? I thought we were speaking to Councillor Kouros's amendment. We are speaking to Councillor Kouros's amendment. Thank you. Lord. Thanks and the amendment Martin. also Martin. includes Martin. the alternative motion yeah, that was no, that, forward. That's fine. Thank Martin. you. Martin. Thank you. Um, look, uh, Lord Mayor, when Councillor Cross initially indicated this amendment, um, I thought, yeah, a workshop um, makes sense. You know, and um, elected members would know I, I love um, council uh, workshops. So I thought, you know, that sounds like a good, um, good way forward. But once uh, Councillor Hyde um, and Councillor Kira um, indicated the real intention of the workshop, which is to justify potentially a cut of the service, a reduction of... Um, Point of clarification, that is not, uh, that is absolutely not what I represented in my statements. Thank you. When they indicated that they wanted this to be a, a cost-cutting exercise and an opportunity to talk through options to save money and potentially reduce the service, I became concerned, Lord Mayor, and on that basis, I'm not in a position to uh, support uh, Councillor Kouros's amendment. I will support Councillor Martin's um, variation. I think what Councillor Martin has proposed is a really sensible 
sensible way forward. And that is a framework for consultation with the community to hear about what they think and uh, about what their needs and wants are and to feed that back to council. Um, rather than us having a workshop looking at uh, what savings can be made, what cuts can be made as we move towards a dial-up model potentially, which is not the direction that I want to see for the City of Adelaide um, and not the direction I think many of our residents and ratepayers want. I want to retain this service, not see it be scaled back. Lord Mayor, I'm sorry, I must clarify something. Um, I at no point suggested that we should actually cut any of this or the money that we're spending on it. When I refer to gaining efficiencies, I was referring to getting more people on the service, which brings the overall cost per trip down. So, for example, if you doubled the number of people using it, while spending the same amount of money in real terms in the budgetary sense, you're actually halving the cost per trip. This is thank, not but this is a point of clarification. Thank you. The clarification has been accepted. Um, um, Councillor Martin, I'm assuming that is a question. Councillor Corus, you were yeah, standing. Yeah, I'd like to point a clarification as well. That, that is not my intent of the workshop. And it's very clearly stated in there that it says current review the current service and any alterations that may be worthy of consultation. Okay, thank there you. You can go back to that when you sum up, financial. Councillor Corus. So, Councillor Martin, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Um, Looking at the amendment that's proposed that uh, seeks to consider alterations worthy of consultation, does that imply to the administration there's to be a discussion about changes, whether those are cuts or additions before the public consultation? Is that is that your reading of that? See you. Thank you, see you. Thank you, Lord Mayor, through the presiding member. Um, I look at that and my um, expectation would be alterations um, and judging from some of the ideas and suggestions from both sides of the chamber tonight, um, that those would be considered. Both sides or two side both, sides, both sides of the chamber. I right, thought sorry. I made that clear, Councillor. All ideas are good ideas. Um, and no, so, no. <laughs> okay, no, 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 to consider. No, 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 no. Anything that members. Can Thank you. Thank um, you. And so, um, as part of that workshop, um, uh, Shanti and her team will um, uh, provide you with those um, different options to consider. Uh, that's what I'm asking. You will present us with options that, that are both uh, reductions and increases to the current services. Is that correct? There may be any number of things, any number, Councillor any Martin, number. that are considered yeah. in that in in a workshop. We haven't Thank had you. a workshop with elected members yet. Yeah, no, no, I'm I'm getting the picture. Right. Everyone Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Councillor Kira. Uh, look, I just want to get clear that we um, the uh, variation put forward by Councillor Martin. Has this is a question only. It's already a question. spoken. Yeah, yes. It's, it's, it's a question. I just want to be clear what I'm voting on. Um, was the variation accepted by the mover of the motion? I'm just a bit lost. Well, no. no, this is an amendment. So we're voting purely on number So we're four. going to do number four and then that, that, Only that's, in the absence of the blue And then we'll call. go back to the rest. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, on number four, um, I like some of the other speakers what thought that uh, Mary's um, suggestion was good until I heard the two uh, leaders speaking, and then that made me very nervous. Clearly, Councillor Carey wants to get rid of it, and, and as um, the uh, majority faction seems to view this as a North Adelaide um, uh, service, as I've heard them say, I can understand why um, Councillor Kuros, with very ingenuously, has suggested a um, workshop before. I'm not. A Thanks to workshop. The workshop should be after the consultation. You go out to the public first. The idea we we don't we want to gather the ideas of what the community wants, and then we have a workshop and work out what we can afford, what we can do, etc. It shouldn't come first. It should come second. Um, and I believe that the mover of variations motives were very honest and uh, for her community. But the people that ride with her haven't got quite the same um, aim you, for that. Marin. And Count Deputy Lord Mayor can complain all he likes. I've heard his views of uh, this, and I'd be very wary of us cherry picking what we go out to consultation for. We go out to consultation on what they'd like for their service, then we cherry pick what we might like, but we don't do it the other way around. 
Um, efficiencies, we all know what that's code for. <laughs> Efficiency. The most it's a bit like streamlining this council. Just get rid of all meetings and do it all on Zoom. Efficiency for the bus service is let's get rid of the bus service. That is really, I don't think really that's the intent, Councillor Moran. Thank you. Well, well I'm sorry, Councillor Kelly, that you object to that because you did say it's seven dollars ride, which is more than an Uber ride. Clearly, you think we should be catching Ubers, not a, a community bus. So I won't be voting for this. I apologise to Councillor Kuros. I think her idea was a good idea, but it's just at the wrong end of the consultation. Thank you. Thank you. I have Councillor Knoll. See the way this debate has turned. Look, <laughs> the, the, we all support the bus. I can almost say yeah. yeah, it's in my manifesto and everything else. So let us not discuss that because that's one of the premises why I'm here. This bus is really important, as is uh, easy access through the city and around the city, so this is fundamental. But what we do have here is, is this hybrid that uh, isn't one thing or another. I've seen proposals in the, in the, in the beginning of the era of, the, of this connector bus, where you, you highlight the bus stops, you highlight the buses, uh, you adapt the, the, the route so that it maximizes the, uh, you know, the amount of passengers and the, and the use it has. There are a whole different bunch of levels. So before we go to the community and ask them what they would like, they're, they're looking at the service from their side. What we need to be doing is enlisting the administration and also other uh, professionals in this area, is that how can we maximize the value of the service? So if I, if I have something that, that if I manufacture something that, uh, um, that is, is okay, but it, it isn't presented well, it isn't, it isn't doesn't stand out well, it, uh, it lacks a few of the components to maximise its, its appeal, then we will not get this going at its best value. And that's the whole point. So if we discuss this at the level of how can we make this bus stand out better? How can we use uh, the services? How, how can we do the stops? How can we make them more apparent? How can we do all the other things that sit around this so that we maximise the amount of people using it? Very simple. So you do that first, you get those ideas because that's not something necessarily the community are going to come along with and say, oh, you should paint this colour, you should do the stops in this style, um, and also the extra stops that you would want to do. Because going down King William Street is certainly not necessarily a, a good value proposition, but going around all the alternative streets around that is. And that then starts to address people and start to think about how we can use this bus, not only for visitors, but also for the residents, and it still delivers everybody to where they want to go. So this consultation, enables us to frame the, the conversation with the public, the users, um, and that we can really start to uh, provide them with something they can visualise, that they can now put their, their bit of sauce on top and enable us to deliver something that they're all going to go on. And it would be fantastic to double the numbers. And you'll do that by first understanding what we want to offer you. But if you are, but first let's do that. I mean, this game plan, we are all here to look after our communities. I, I am a little bit insulted because it's a premise of why I'm here. And uh, well, that's a style that you guys run. Thank you. Councillor Hart. Thanks, Romeo. I wasn't going to speak, but I think I'm going to share some of my story. So, 18 years ago, when I first arrived in Adelaide, it took me a long time to work out that the city connected bus are actually free. And it took me a long time to work out where, it, where the bus did actually go and what. Four years ago in this town hall, it's my first time to meet with Councillor Martin. It was in an event hosted by former Lord Mayor Martin Hasey. The first question I come to Councillor Martin was, can you please find out the way to paint the rule on the bus? As our people know, where does the bus go? Nothing happened for four years, Councillor Martin. I'm sorry. This is exactly why we need to work. We need to work out a few options. And hence, we can run public consultation, ask what people want. Well, I am very offensive. I, I mean, what Councillor said, Councillor Marin said, this is a North Adelaide bus service. I'm sorry, the people, the ratepayers from Central Ward and South Ward, they pay for it. Right. You, you, you didn't say that. Come on. I didn't say that. I said All right. All right. This is, is the bus service called Adelaide City Connected Bus. It's not North Adelaide Connected Bus. I am very offensive because my ratepayers in Central Ward, they pay for it. I, I believe that. Okay, well, let's shut the tape. Okay, well, so, anyway, I would like to support both of the amendments, but I 
would like to go with the workshop first. Hence, the administration will be able to provide some options for us to run public consultation. Or otherwise, we would just have a public consultation with the people who are scared by the scare campaign saying that their bus service will be cut. It's not. I listen from listen from all the debates I listen tonight, right? I, I, I do not believe any of the members have the intention to cut the bus service. Not at all. And I would not support them if, if that is a cut. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Ho. Councillor Abkin today. I wasn't going to speak, Lord Mayor, but uh, but I am going to speak. Um, uh, I think the discussion tonight, uh, just like the wheels on the bus, has gone round and round. So uh, <laughs> uh, this is, I think, the reason why we need a workshop is because obviously there are lots of ideas. So the workshop will capture all of those ideas and uh, put them in one place. So uh, members, please, let's get the workshop happening. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here uh, talking to one another for 30 minutes or an hour or whatever it's going to take. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cross, would you like to sum up? I can't believe that how a discussion has completely turned into a, a, the attempt to converge in a, turn into a completely different direction, which I did not expect. It's really, really cool. Have a discussion, a workshop, and I wouldn't expect for uh, administration to bring recommendations only. I would expect every single councillor here to bring in some recommendation. And I would expect us to be engaged and to know what our ratepayers want. Like I know that I've spoken to my ratepayers and they would like to see it go up to Barton Terrace. They would like to see it connect more to the aquatic centre. I get that or I get that asked all the time. I also, as uh, Councillor Ho said, have been spoken, spoken to a lot of people that have said that they don't know which is the connector bus. So I would like to put that into the into the, the consultation. Also, the buses aren't the bus stops aren't easily identified. I would like to put that in the consultation. I'm sure they're my ideas. I'm sure everybody's got their own. And I'm sure that if we would give give the ratepayers in the consultation three options, maybe as it is, or as like this, or like that. That is part of the consultation. Then it will come back and then we'll know which way. We are going to go in regards to the bus service after that. I'm not disagreeing with the consultation. I am not disagreeing with any other fact other than let's get it right with some sort of with an idea that we can take to our community and which they can actually say yes, no, no, oh, I like it just the way it is, or no, would like it extended there, or I don't know what the other wards would like to would like to have that extended to or changed. It's as simple as that. Turn Turning this about Team Adelaide, turning this about intentions that, that, that are not even, what well, it wasn't even uttered from the councillors and twisting around, Councilor. it's not good. It's not good for the public to see. We are all in this together and we all want to see the connected bus be efficient and to be able to reach all of that. Thank you, members. We're going to the vote on the amendment. Those in favour, those against. That is carried. We now go back to division, division. division has been called. Council members, the division has been called on the amendment. Would all those in favour of the amendment please rise and remain standing till all names have been called? Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Abraham Zaday, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Donovan, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, members. We now go back to the alternate motion. Um, I will just see if there's any other speakers before I hand back to Councillor Martin. No, members, Councillor Martin, to sum up. Yeah, look, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I, I, I'm just stunned at the way in which uh, people have responded to this. Councillor Kuros says, well, well, you know, let's have a workshop, give them three options. And I think I can see three in the original motion. Continue with the current system. Uh, what changes you would make? Any other improvements? That asks the question. Those, those are three options. Um, not only do we not read papers, we don't even read amendments that are on screen. Point of clarification, Lord Mayor. I wasn't going to say, but really, I said in regards to the changes of the route. That's what we were talking about. Okay. okay. Well, uh, thank you, members. Uh, thank you, Councillor Martin. I'm I saying, Lord Council. Mayor. I'm saying, Lord Mayor, I was interrupted. You allowed the interruption. I'm saying for the point of clarity, it is there. It is open-ended. 
the intention is to ask people what they think, not to provide them with options, as Councillor Canole says, not to shape the discussion. There is this notion that Councillor Kira puts forward regularly, that we are not um, uh, here uh, to consult, that we are delegated to make decisions. Well, you tried that with the Aquatic Centre. You kept saying, let's make a decision and then go out to consultation. And that has destroyed the reputation of the Team Adelaide. It will destroy the reputation of the city. Councillor, we are we talking to the alternate motion, please. Uh, analogy is a reasonable tool in Thank the debate. Thank you, Councillor. Um, look, we are simply uh, going to have a workshop now that will come up with the range of options and ask the administration to go out and ask people what they think about it. It, it appalls me that there is this notion in this council among the majority councillors that we will manage the city top down, never bottom up. They never ask people what they think, they tell them what they would like to offer them. It is the same for every proposal that comes to this council. A bit of democracy, a bit of democracy that allowed us to go out and ask people what they were thinking and to then on the basis of that information formulate options is the way to do it. That is the way real democracy works. It's an alien concept to Team Adelaide, I know. But I appreciate, I appreciate your support for the consultation. I regret very much that you are seeking to shape it so that you determine what it is we'll ask people. I think actually as a point of clarification that given we have the content of the alternate motion which actually states the, that that's what we're consulting on. The fourth bit, which just disappeared, is saying that we will also facilitate a work talk in case there are any alternatives worthy of consultation to add to the consultation that we're already deciding on. Well, Lord Mayor, look, I thank you for debating this on behalf of the team. I'm not. I'm actually clarifying what's in front of me that I can see in writing in front of me. Well, it sounded like a, a debating point, but I'll accept that's your a, interpretation. Well, thank you very much, Councillor. I appreciate that. That's really lovely. <laughs> Members, we are going to the vote. Those in favour? I accept. Those against? Accept. That is carried. Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please stand and remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Donovan, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Sims, Councillor Moran. Sorry, Lord Mayor, we've got Councillor Kieran. Thank you, Councillors. That's, oh. that's very humorous, but you know. Wrapped in humour, still the same. Um, we have got now in front of us 10.9, which is a wildlife rescue facility. Um, Councillor Hyde, oh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you pull this one out? Very brief. Um, uh, I have uh, an alternative motion. Uh, which is yes, notes the report. Although I'd rather not. Um, uh, but to. Uh, and also engages in an expression of interest process directed to not for profit organizations. conducting wildlife rescue and rehabilitation <laughs> and asking them whether they would be interested in using a small part of the parklands coming away from 
away from uh, significant public use. Come on. That's all right, I just need to catch up. Okay. That's all. To undertake. The vital work, oh, sorry, the vital volunteer work <laughs> that their organizations do. Why not just of their organizations? Oh, sorry, I don't have my glasses, Councillor Martin, but I think that gets the point across. Okay, thank you, Deputy Lumay. Look for uh, a second. And, and sorry, sorry, no, I have a three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know it's the report that that council uh, um, uh, that council makes clear that this EOI. is for a non-permanent facility, a semicolon, i.e. not a permanent building on the parklands. Oh, sorry, I've got council. Abraham's that I to second that. All right, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, and first off, I want to thank the administration for the uh, level of detail that was in the report um, related to koalas. But of course, the original motion also spoke to wildlife generally. Um, uh, and of course, in questioning in the committee, um, uh, we worked out that uh, there wasn't an overabundance of engagement engagement with the not-for-profits that actually undertake the volunteer work. So they're who I think we're actually looking at. We're not looking at, at a departmental, Department of Environment and Water gold standard of what they do. Um, uh, of course, they're actually responsible as well for issuing permits and endorsing what all these volunteer and not-for-profits do. Um, all we're looking to do as the City of Adelaide um, uh, is say to these volunteer groups who do wonderful work, and that wonderful work was on display um, uh, when we were in our dark days during the summer bushfires, the black summer bushfires, um, we're saying to them uh, that currently we know that your, your facilities and your operations and where your volunteers do their work um, is outside of the metropolitan area. We also know that most wildlife are injured inside of the metropolitan area. We have hundreds upon hundreds of hectares of parkland consequently in the heart of the metropolitan area. And so um, noting that you as the organisations are already uh, accredited uh, and have permits from the Department of Environment and Water, would you be interested if we had a suitable secluded space in the parklands um, and you were able to do this without any capital investment from us, the City of Adelaide, would you be interested in having a space for your volunteers to do their vital work in saving wildlife and other injured animals um, uh, in the parklands. This, um, if if these organisations are interested, they will come forth and flag their interest. And if they do that, um, uh, then uh, we can look at their credentials. Um, uh, well, then we can ask the department if these people are accredited, if their volunteers are accredited, um, uh, and then then we can also consider what they would be proposing uh, for this patch of dirt. I think, as Councillor Martin put it. So. Um, uh, look, this is not committing us to anything. Uh, this is not going to cost us any money. This is talking to the community, talking to our hardworking volunteers who have done so much and continue to do so much for us and saying, uh, we've got uh, oodles of space here. A lot of it is not utilised. Um, would you be able to make use of it? Could you use it um, uh, for a purpose, for a higher and nobler purpose than what it is currently used for? That's the question. And I think if we can do that without costing our ratepayers any money, if we can do our small bit um, uh, to support these volunteers as we move into what some councillors will call escalating a climate crisis, 
uh, then I think it's absolutely something that we should uh, we should think about. Uh, we all want uh, to see animal rights respected and held up. Animals are injured every day, whether it's by cats, dogs, cars, uh, possibly e-scooters, what have you. Uh, we have a duty. We've, we've urbanised, we've taken away all their habitat. Uh, we have a duty to do our bit, to take care of all the little and wonderful critters in the place. And this uh, goes a long way to doing that, assuming interest is there. Councillor Abraham today. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. For the sake of time, uh, I'll make it quick. I think this is a uh, qualified, qualified. <laughs> uh, it is. It is. It's a good amendment that we have uh, uh, that we have here before, ever more <laughs> us. <laughs> I'm, I'm practicing my dad jokes. <laughs> um, uh, I think Councillor Hyde. Uh, uh, the uh, said it uh, really well. Uh, we, we do have lots of uh, uh, lots of grass, lots of parklands around us. So uh, why not uh, make good use of it and share it with the uh, uh, with the wonderful animals, not just ourselves. Thank you, Councillor Sims, and then Councillor Kerry. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Just a few questions um, for administration. Um, do you know how much uh, undertaking this exercise in terms of the uh, expressions of interest process will cost in terms of uh, staff time and potential organisational costs? Didn't see you. Uh, through the presiding member, um, the last year I was involved in related to the tree climb um, and I guess it depends on um, how long it takes just to pull together some of the criteria, the assessment panel, um, where the advert goes. So um, we need to take that um, on notice and come back to you. Sure, thank you. And, and what about um, public access? Would this still be public access? Is that what's envisaged, Deputy Lord Mayor? Is that a question? Yeah. Well, uh, you're the one that's put forward. So I'm just wondering whether there would still be public access to this structure or whether it's a private uh, enterprise that would be according off the part. I, I imagine, Councillor Sims, that would be uh, part of the composition of the EOI answer that the not for profit gives us. Um, but uh, in, in reading the report, it's very clear that, that their volunteers require. Uh, permits, they need to be permitted to handle um, animals and to take care of wildlife. And so I would expect the administration would take a fairly dim view of an EOI that suggested uh, uh, random members of the public would be rolling through, people who didn't have a permit to handle such animals. Sorry, I'll just give that to administration to answer perhaps rather than the Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, through the presiding member, um, based on the report um, presented at committee last week, um, my assumption would be it be a closed facility. Other than when it's open to allow people in during certain times. Look, um, I must admit I'm really very conflicted uh, on this one um, because when I first saw um, Councillor Hyde's uh, proposal previously, and I looked at the um, report that uh, administration provided at the last committee meeting, um, I had formed the view that it would be imprudent um, for this to proceed um, because it would clearly cost a huge amount of money um, and um, also there were implications in terms of uh, access to um, eucalyptus, trees and so on in the parklands. Uh, so it was very clear to me reading that report um, that uh, that was inappropriate. Um, but what Councillor Hyde has proposed tonight is something that is a little bit different. That is in terms of a wildlife rescue, which is much broader um, than simply uh, koalas um, and could have a potentially a slightly broader um, focus. Um, I am very concerned about the suggestion of um, cordoning off you know, segments of the parklands. Um, so I'd certainly be very keen to uh, look at that um, and, um, you know, carefully consider anything that comes forward. But um, I am also in the camp of um, wanting to see us in the City of Adelaide do what we can to um, support um, vulnerable animals um, during this time um, and during the, cli the climate crisis that um, Councillor Hyde has spoken about. Um, and I think this sets up a very important uh, precedent for the work of this council in terms of animal rights um, and something I intend to uh, take up um, and pursue uh, rigorously um, should this uh, win support of the council. 
Um, so look, I'm open to the debate, um, Lord Mayor, and uh, interested to hear the views of my colleagues. Um, and uh, open to being convinced. Um, but I, from my perspective, it sets up a very exciting precedent for the work, um, advocacy work, that this council can do um, in terms of focusing on, on um, the welfare of animals. And it's an area that we've not traditionally focused on, Lord Mayor. And um, I really thank uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor for putting it on our agenda um, and really opening the door for that important work. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, in favour of this motion, I think it's terrific. I think example of Deputy Lord Mayor uh, uh, doing something I really like, which is uh, which is um, putting a motion, putting motion through uh, that is direct and targeted and low cost. That is absolutely excellent stuff. Um, I'm a bit puzzled by the Champagne Socialist faction. They opposed this initially. They vociferously Sorry, attacked Kara, the Councilor Deputy Kara, Lord Mayor. They Councilor vociferously Kara, attacked Councilor Deputy Kara, Lord Mayor. We are talking to the motion before us. We're, we're bringing this Councilor. up initially with uh, respect, Lord Mayor. Um, with respect, Councillor Kerr, I will give you one more warning and then I'll ask you to sit thank down. You, thank, thank you on your indulgence, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Um, uh, but it's good to see there appears to be a united, uh, a united uh, uh, council uh, in favour of this. Um, I think it's absolutely excellent. I think it speaks to a deputy Lord Mayor who's able to uh, to uh, deal with big picture stuff, but is also uh, able and diligent and capable uh, in delivering smaller uh, items with efficiency and direction. I think it is uh, it is testimony to a deputy Lord Mayor who is a class act. Let's not uh, let's not gum this up thank, any, thank any further. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Members, if not, I'll go back to the... Sorry, Councillor. Oh, sorry, both hands up at the same time. I might go ladies first, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran? Uh, yes, I can assure you there's not uh, universal support for this. Uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor has savaged uh, the veracity of the original report. And as I said in the committee, I found his behaviour extremely abusive towards our staff members, and I still do. It's interesting to see them veering off to the far left green um, and calling us <laughs> San Fran Socialists. I'm not quite sure where that comes from. Um, this is pure and simply um, uh, annexing off the park plans. We know that our, our ratepayers don't like that. Um, this is just an idea. We have organisations, as the report previously said, that are adequately coping with this. It's a fair way while from the bushfire, so it's not as though burnt koalas are rushing into our streets. Um, I've yet to see a koala in the parklands, and I've yet to see this mass uh, annihilation of uh, native animals on our uh, on our streets. And I live right on the parklands. Uh, I'm horrified to hear the the words of Team Adelaide described in the parklands as underutilised, could be used for more noble uses. Our parklands are not underutilised and they don't indeed have to be utilised. They're the, youngs, they're the lungs of our city and I, I feel very nervous that the uh, Team Adelaide members are now feeling so brave and so confident that they really are expressing their climate change uh, beliefs um, as per Councillor Kerr. Um, I think it's very sad that this is the way the City Council goes. This is a, a, a silly idea, it's a stupid idea as I said. Uh, the rescue animals should be up in the hills, uh, in reserves, not in the urban fabric. Our parklands are the jewels in our crown. They're not to be given away for shipping containers and offered as an EOI uh, for people that haven't even asked for it. It's, it's quite ridiculous and I think it's unbecoming of this Council to behave as it is. Councillor Martin. I did give ladies first. Oh, Councillor Moran is the lady. She went first. Yeah, I will go to Councillor Donovan after Councillor Martin. She's going to use Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Look, I'm I'm happy to speak. Uh, a couple of questions before I do, however, Lord Mayor. Um, in uh, in discussing costs, the administration undertook to come back to us to. Uh, to calculate EOI costs, but I wonder if you could give us uh, a ballpark figure based on the fact that we do many a year. Uh, are we talking at the lower end of the scale, sort of 50,000, no more? Advertising and I so think, on? I think you've already taken, said you'd take that one on notice, so I'm not sure that 
Yeah, um, I can take that. I'd prefer to take that on notice just okay. because well, we'll like 10 gig EOI cost, you know, a fair amount of money. Um, tree climb wasn't, you know, anywhere that, near that. That so. was about 50,000 from memory, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, I yeah. couldn't imagine we'd do a worldwide EOI on yep. this occasion, right. Councillor. And, and after, after we've... Uh, <laughs> After we've commissioned that report, of course, being part lands, identifying a local location, there has to be a public consultation. Community land management plan. That was the process that we followed for tree climb. Um, oh. Yeah. So, yeah. I do remember that was about 40,000, I think, generally consultations are of that order. Uh, no. Certainly, that's the one that uh, the price that's quoted for the City Connect uh, consultation. That very different. Um, City Connect was looking for a lot of uh, community so type activities, so that face to face is usually a lot more expensive because you have to um, hire rooms and, um, and there's usually a lot of out of hour staff time. Um, for an expression of interest, it's usually an online. Um, offering so it's more cost effective and uh, what would be the license fee that was charged or is it the administration's impression that we would not charge a license fee through the presiding member um, it would depend on the length of term of any lease or license associated with any um, ongoing use of a um, parkland space um, we do have in place. Um, it would depend on the nature of what comes back from the EOI. We would do an assessment. Obviously, um, APLA would need to be engaged. Um, there's various steps in the approval process. Thank you. Well, look, um, Lord Mayor, um, it, it is uh, fallacious to be suggesting that this is a no-cost option for Council. Uh, the expression of interest process will be costly. Uh, the subsequent uh, staff hours uh, associated with the assessment, uh, including uh, all of the requirements to ensure that the parties are treated equally. Uh, and uh, additionally, there would be the public consultation process that follows. There are the legal costs associated with drawing up something. We are now into tens of thousands of dollars. And the reason we're at this point is because the Deputy Lord Mayor proposed, on a whim, a koala sanctuary. Now, Lord Mayor, uh, I don't need to remind you that this report that we're considering and noting is actually for a koala facility. Uh, and that was comprehensively demolished by the administration, who pointed out that everybody from uh, national parks and wildlife to experienced wildlife park operators thought that it was not a very good idea. Um, in the face of that, um, any good politician would say, well, I got that wrong, moving on. Um, Team Adelaide's uh, approach, however, is always, and by the way, Lord Mayor, uh, the batting rate is 100% every time the Deputy Lord Mayor puts up a motion, so this one will Point be... of clarification, it's 97%. Oh, I beg your pardon, 97% as opposed <laughs> to significantly less for anyone else. Um, uh, Lord Mayor... Members. Please, Lord Mayor, um, uh, this will be uh, agreed to. And instead of saying, oh, you know, it's a bad idea, let's move on, let's not delay further, um, we are in fact engaged in a face saving measure for something now that's become a wild sanctuary that doesn't appear to include koalas, although I imagine we may see a koala with the echidnas, the dingoes, the eagles, the falcons, the snakes, <laughs> snakes wild pigs and assorted other wildlife. Um, this is the extraordinary thing about Team Adelaide. Uh, whenever they're in trouble, instead of conceding a problem, they double it. A point of clarification, Lord Mayor. Uh, there was a point of clarification, Lord Mayor. Uh, you cracked down pretty hard on your factional comments by myself. Um, I request that that be applied equally. Have you finished, Councillor? No, I haven't, Lord Mayor. Uh, you're, you're facilitating all of these interruptions. And I didn't so, think a I'd point, get of, your way. point of clarification, a point of order is part of our Lord Mayor, in terms of accepted interruptions. Lord Mayor, Team Adelaide just doubles down when they get it wrong and a considerable cost of the rate Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, well, what is talk. it you're objecting to? Um, I, um, team I would like you to talk to the motion before. No, no. Whenever I say Team Adelaide, you interrupt me. Team Adelaide. The mention of those words upset you, and they are the faction on whom you rely. Thank you, Councillor Martin. 
Lord Mayor, um, you are constantly interrupting, taking my time. I will simply say to this motion, this is a perfect illustration of what a terrible, dysfunctional council this is. Thank you. Um, Councillor, it's... I, I just need to clarify something, Lord Mayor. Um, it was stated that I only wanted a koala sanctuary. Actually, at 1-3 in the motion, it says, seeks to facilitate the establishment of a small community-run facility in the Adelaide Parklands that may be used for the rescue, treatment and rehabilitation of koalas and also other locally rescued Thank you. Councillor, oh, Councillor you. Donovan. Thank you, members. Please. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Brief point. The report was very extensive. I think the initial idea was fine. We got a great report back from the administration. It was very extensive. It spoke to the complexity of this area of the regulation that's required. Uh, it made it very clear that moving forward in any way, shape or form was not an option that would be able to be supported by the City of Adelaide in any reasonable way. So I don't support this motion. Thank you. Members, Councillor Kouros. I think, I think uh, what we need to look at this for what it is. I think um, we've all agreed that the um, it's it's expensive to go ahead and do this ourselves. And the report clearly states that and you know and thank administration for the for the detailed report. However, this is fairly different. This is an EOI. This is something that we our our ratepayers are asking. They're asking for the parklands to be used. We have such a vast amount of parklands. Point, point of order, um, Lord Mayor, I, I, I'm getting interrupted a lot tonight, so... Um, and Councillor Martin, the thank you. The use of Cam Team Adelaide I actually find very offensive what? and inaccurate. Yeah. So I, I would like that every time he says that to actually be striked from the record and for him to actually withdraw that comment. I don't think we're able to uh, strike it from well, the record I don't because know, it's whatever, a public because it's record. Just, it's getting ridiculous. It's getting actually, we cannot have a healthy debate if it keeps on saying that. There has to be something that can be, has to be done about this behaviour because yeah, it's childish. It's, it's very childish. Thank you, Councillor Moran. It's very, very childish. It is. This is just an EOI that we can take it out, which will be use of our staff time, complicating it and making it about a faction, making it about um, a, a political uh, debate is it just very, very sad to see. We've had ostrich races in the park before. We've had a we had a sanctuary, wildlife sanctuary in the park before. Let's invest, the council ran those and they didn't do well. This is different. This is taking it out to a separate company to see if they want to facilitate and have a wildlife park, rescue park in the um, parklands. If that doesn't come to fruition, if there isn't anyone interested, then we can just put this to rest. There is a lot of area that can be used that we can facilitate this and we just can take that out. We have internet now, we can take it out or over, over online. We don't have to spend a lot of money on it. I'm sure that's not what we're looking at. I'm sure we're not going to have face-to-face -face consultation. I'm sure we're not going to, um, you know, uh, go knocking on people's doors and asking them about it. It'd be fairly simple. And I think the public would really like to see that we take that into consideration with our wildlife and that we do care for them, as uh, Councillor Sin has said. And as a as city council, um, it is something that we can offer and maybe extend on that lunch, just like we did with the tree climb. We don't know where it's going to take us if we take it out there for someone to submit something. If they don't, then will and good, we just put it away and be done with it. But if they do and it's come up with something, an idea that can be great, why not look at it? Thank you. Councillor Martin, I'm assuming that's a question. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, uh, I have heard it asserted that the ratepayers wish to see the parklands generally utilised. Could the administration advise which piece of research advocates on behalf of ratepayers general utilisation of the parklands? I think uh, that is going far too far from the motion before us that we're discussing. We can take that one on notice. Oh, um, members, you. if there's no other speakers, I will actually, um, uh, assuming also that an expression of interest that has anything to do with Parklands will go through the normal process and that means it goes to APLA for consideration. Um, um, I do actually agree with Councillor Martin, uh, Moran in terms of the Parklands not being underutilised, but there are other areas and there's of course the Parklands Management Strategy that talk to the use of all the individual parts within the Parklands.
Um, the EOI would normally go through a process and will come back um, through our normal consultation process and then through upload with a recommendation to council. So it will come back several times um, before there is a decision. Um, members, I will go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thank you. Well, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it's a fairly straightforward process, really. I don't think it's going to be overly expensive. I mean, the report's already identified a number of uh, a number of participants, and um, look, judging by what some councillors here have said, I mean, it's either going to cost five or ten mil, in which case none of these not for profits are going to put forward anyway, or the demand is simply not there because it's already serviced, in which case none of them are going to put forward anything anyway. So. Um, so there's, a, there's muddle-headed arguments here, Lord Mayor. Either, either there's no demand, we don't need it, it's a waste of time, um, uh, or, or there is. What this does, what this does uh, is allows us to dip our toe in the water and say, hello, community groups, hello, community groups, the people that do this for free, the people that take care of animals in their home, the people that spend their time and their expertise, because there's a lot of vets and veterinary, veterinary nurses that do this as well. Uh, we think you do a wonderful job. We think we do. We think you do a wonderful job. We're the local level of government. We're a community level of government, and our community has given us a mandate to support the work of volunteers and the work that you do. So I don't see how some members can argue that we should be keeping a community connector bus, uh, but then refusing to use some square meters of dirt and parklands uh, to assist a community group in going about their aims. I think they're. I think they're completely. Uh, they're completely at odds with one another. There's this thinking in the chamber, and um, I think it's shameful that some members uh, wish to politicise an issue which is not political at all. It's a community issue. It's an issue of caring. It's an issue of caring. What callousness we see in the chamber tonight, Lord Mayor? What callousness for members to say we're going to lock all this up? We're going to lock all of it up. And we're not going to allow anyone to even suggest that they might use it for something more and something nobler than what it is being used for right now. Well, something more and something nobler. That is what that is what I'm asking the council chamber to do tonight. It might result in nothing. It may well result in nothing. Absolutely. And if we go to the community groups and ask them, then I'm happy for that to happen. But we've done the right thing. We've at least gone out and asked them. And if they do say, yes, we are interested, well, then we'd outline a number of requirements and say, other than administrative costs, we actually don't want to invest any capital or recurring expenditure into this. But we love the work that you do. We're a community level of government. We're here to support you and your work. And that's why uh, we would love to see you create a community asset on the parklands. It's actually about, it actually goes to the heart of what the parklands are there for. We're a city in a park. We're surrounded by parklands. Parklands which were previously habitat for animals. I'll just have 30 more seconds. It absolutely goes to the heart of what the parklands are there for. And for people to come into this chamber and say, oh, we've urbanised it, also stuff the animals. I just think that's not on Lord Mayor. Thank you, that's not, Lord you Mayor. That's actually not what we're talking about. That's not, that's not right Thank at all. You. Thank you. I commend the motion to the chamber and I, and I look forward uh, uh, to seeing the warmth in their hearts as they vote this Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. And members, we are going to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please stand and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Canole. What a Councillor Knoll, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Kuros, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, members. We're now going to item. Yes. We are going to have a break shortly, Councillor Moran. Yes, we will. Definitely. I would like to try and get through perhaps this last one. And then we might have a break, hopefully, depending how long it takes, of course. 10.11, which is the Brown Hill and Keswick Creek Stormwater Project. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, you're moving. Second, Councillor Knoll. Deputy Lord Mayor. Deputy Lord Mayor. I reserve my right. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Uh, members? Councillor Martin? 
Um, I wish to move an amendment, but I wish to ask a question first, if I may. Um, of the administration, APLA recommended, and I quote, the project team relook at the design proposal for Part 20, as shown in Attachment E, noting that Tree 96 is no longer proposed for removal, and Tree 108 was incorrectly classified as significant to item 3.1 on the agenda for the special meeting of the Board of the Adelaide Parklands Authority held on June, 18 June 2020 with the aim of reducing the impact on established trees, in particular two regulated trees, uh, 19 brackets and 95 brackets, by shifting the works as part of a possible modification of the existing tree climb infrastructure. Has that design change occurred? or is it merely under consideration as per recommendation six? So through the C, acting CEO. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, that review has been undertaken and as a part of that review, uh, the tree identified as number 19 can be retained, so that can be removed as an amendment uh, in the motion. Great. And insofar as the other recommendation is concerned, is the relook at the design proposal? Through the Lord Mayor, yes, as part of that, uh, that review has been undertaken and the rest of the trees are as per, uh, as written. As per um, right. However, a tree identified as number 19 can be removed. Okay, thank you. Um, Lord Mayor, I, um, I have uh, an amendment which uh, just follows at the bottom of what's there. Um, and, and it simply says, um, recommends that the Brown Hill and Keswick Creek stormwater project team works with the Ghana, with Ghana community representatives. to ensure that Ghana cultural heritage for the Victoria Park slash Pakapakanti Park, brackets Park 16, and well done. Sorry, I, I'm just, Councillor Martin, that's already been in the recommendation because it came through APLA in that way. So it actually formed part of the papers. May, may I finish this? Sure. Lord Mayor, thank you. Um, now, where was I? You were up to Park, park 16. Uh, park 16. <laughs> and Blue Gum slash Karanga uh, brackets Park 20 site is clearly recognised and incorporated in the native vegetation comma interpretive signage and artworks associated with the project. Now, I, I have uh, discussed this with Councillor Moran, who uh, proposed seconding it. And if you allow me, uh, would allow me to explain, Lord Mayor, I am happy to do so. Uh, yes, yes, I'm simply, um, given that this was part of quite an extensive discussion at um, APLA uh, with our Ghana member, um, I just wanted you to be aware that this has already been part of the consideration. I Look, I do understand that. Uh, Lord Mayor, um, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, and I acknowledge uh, the work of APLA in this. APLA is the principal advisory body to the City of Adelaide? Correct. The City of Adelaide is but one of four councils involved in this project? That is also correct, uh, except the... Um, Burnside, Mitchum, Munley, yes, West Orange, the City of Adelaide. Yes. Um, there are five councils in the five total for yep. others, yeah. And um, this recommendation is the recommendation of council, which is 
um, a uh, as the landholder correct. Mm -hmm. and uh, to be passed to the board that is the stormwater management board not to act and all that I'm doing here Lord Mayor is just repeating word for word the proposal that was adopted by APLA but not replicated in the recommendations here so that that has at least some weight with the stormwater body not just as a piece of advice from the principal advisory body to the city but the opinion of the city of Adelaide and there is a distinction in that and that is all that this does it replicates exactly what was said by APLA and is the view of council, not the view of the advisor to the body. Thank We've you, had Councillor Martin. And uh, members, that is all that I'm suggesting that we do. Uh, it is a means of signalling to the Stormwater Management Board uh, and especially uh, to the owners of this land, the Ghana people, that we really do want them to be considered seriously in the uh, project that's underway and consistent uh, with what APLA has proposed, resolving that we want plantings, vegetation and interpretive signage uh, that reflects uh, Ghana culture on, on this location. Um, there is nothing more, nothing less in this. Um, it is the view of council, not just a view from a body advising council. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? No, no. Thank you, members. No? Um, I will actually just thank Councillor Martin for adding that recommendation to the Council uh, approval that actually will go to the stormwater because it was fully the intention of APLA, as you would have seen by the recommendation, that the Ghana community continue to be consulted. So, thank you. Thank you. Will I have a one hundred and You might. Would you like to sum up? Depends how quickly you sum up. <laughs> members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members, we are actually going to have a break. Um, we'll probably take, if I could uh, suggest a 30 minute break. Oh, that amendment. My apologies. Wait, 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 wait. That's an amendment. So it, that now becomes a substantive, uh, which goes back to the Deputy Lord Mayor. Members to the vote, those in favour. Those against, that is carried. Um, uh, members, I do have refreshments and uh, some small um, things for us to eat in the Lady Esther Jacobs room as you go to the break. They are all separately packaged.
assessment panel, uh, which is authorising the chief executive to appoint a deputy member. And I think from memory, Councillor Martin pulled this out. Do you have yes, tonight? a question of the administration. Um, and I'll wait for the water. Or gin, or whatever it is. Uh, I believe it's water. Oh, good, good. I'm pleased. Sadly. Um, why are we delegating this decision to the CEO? Why are we not presenting council with a list of candidates and even a preferred nomination, but delegating the entire process to council when previously the decision was a decision of council, not a, a delegated decision of the CEO? I will ask the acting CEO to respond. Thank you through the presiding member. My understanding is that it's not appointing any new members to the panel, um, but Shanti, if you could just clarify why you're recommending um, that the Chief Executive Officer um, appoint the Deputy Member, please. Uh, thank you, Claire. Through the Chair, um, when uh, Council appointed its last um, um, a group of CAP members, uh, one of the um, appointments that was intended to be made was for a deputy <coughs> member. Now, um, the person who was actually selected by Council uh, chose not to to take up the offer of that appointment at that stage. Um, we have had several meetings where there has been the potential for uh, a lack of quorum due to either uh, conflicts of interest or members not being available to attend that particular meeting. Um, we're not proposing to, um, to do a new sweep, if you like, of new members. Um, we are proposing to look at uh, the list of members who were previously interviewed with the suitability uh, to, to fill that gap. So um, that list has actually been previously presented to Council um, and that selection process has occurred. Now it is Council's uh, prerogative to either give that delegation to the CEO or to ask for that decision to be made uh, by Council. Um, we felt that uh, because the term has not got that long to run um, and to, to, to make it happen fairly quickly, that um, that that the CEO be given a delegation to make that appointment. So members, I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Mackey and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Canole. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak? Councillor Canole, members? If not, Councillor Mackey to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, uh, uh, oh, 10.13 was passed. Um, so members, we now go to a number of items for the exclusion of the public. Um, there are six items uh, presented for consideration of to be considered in confidence. Each item requires a motion and decision to order the exclusion of the public to enable consideration in confidence. Uh, so I'll do them one by one. If I could have a mover and a seconder for a motion to order the exclusion the public for 12.1.1, which is the advice recommendation of the audit committee. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder, Councillor Kira. Uh, does anyone to speak to the motion? If not, Councillor Abraham today, some members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, I look for a mover and a seconder for 12.2.1, which is the Whitmore Square apartment complex. Councillor, uh, sorry, yes. Thank you, Councillor. 12.2.1. 12.2.1, Whitmore Square Apartments. Uh, thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Second to Councillor Canole. That's what I've got in front of me. Correct. Um, members, if not, I'll go to the move to sum up. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. 12.2.2. Uh, Council membership of the Heritage Promotion Advisory Group. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Seconder. Councillor Knoll. Members. Councillor Abraham today. Members to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. That is carried. Uh, members for 12.2.3, which is the City Connected Deed of Agreement. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Se Seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, no. Uh, members, uh, Councillor Martin. Uh, Lord Mayor, why is this in secret? 
um, or it's supposed to be in secret. Uh, we all know that we're being asked to approve a contract which we publicly discussed as being a renewal of the service until the 31st of December. We know what the cost is. It's been included in the budget. It's been included in debates. There is nothing in the document that has not been made public. I can see that. Um, through the presiding member, um, my understanding is that there is some commercial incompetence um, information um, within the deed itself um, related to the cost of service on behalf of DIPTI. So although uh, you know um, our budget and our contributions are publicly known, um, my understanding is that there's um, an element within the deed that's not. That's right, if you could just clarify, please. Certainly within the proposed deed, there is financial information. That financial information has been provided from Dipti to Council um, and it comes from their transport provider, which was tendered to them in confidence. So they have requested that we respect the confidence of those financial figures within the deed. Um, but if you look at our budget, you can see what the cost of our 50% share is and all you do is double that and you know exactly what the cost is. Um, I think the question has been asked and answered, Councillor Martin. Um, members, uh, if there's no other comment, I'll go to the vote. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor Summer. Summer. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. 12.2.4, uh, which is the review of the e-scooter. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Seconder, Councillor Canal. Members, if not, Councillor Abraham today. Summer. Summer. Members to the vote, those in favour. Against that is carried, and the final one 12.2.5 Adelaide Central Market Authority Board Member Recruitment, Deputy Lord Mayor, Secretary Council Knoll. Members, if not, do you to sum up? Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, so, to the members. Public and stuff not associated with items 12.1.1, 12.2.1, 12.2.2, 12.2.3, 12.2.4, .2 and 12.2.5. Uh, the streaming will now cease while Council considers the final items on this agenda. Um, I do believe um, there are five items around, um, uh, around nine o'clock uh, for members of the public. Um, that are uh, watching live.
be opened and the streaming to recommence. <laughs> Thank you, members. Uh, thank you for that. That takes us to item 13 on tonight's report, which is my presiding member's report. And uh, I was going to start in French. Bonsoir, mesdames and messieurs. <laughs> Happy Bastille Day. Um, in uh, partnership with the Port Adelaide Enfield Council and the, their sister city, the city of Cherbourg, uh, we have a new art trail that's been installed in North Adelaide which, with French masterpieces. This is from the Thomas Henry Museum. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, we do uh, encourage everybody to uh, follow the trail. It is available through the City of Adelaide web style, and it's a fabulous way for people to come back and explore and reconnect with North Adelaide and hopefully uh, indulge uh, with some of the traders there as well. Um, the impacts of COVID-19 have of course been very challenging and continue to take the toll. Um, as restrictions are being eased, we are seeing the city come back to life and I've heard many reports that Council's continued practical support is making a difference for local traders. Um, we're now looking at priorities of course for the next financial year and a reminder that our budget is out for public consultation. As part of our Recover and Reimagine program in response to COVID-19, uh, we also supplied an additional 20 outdoor heaters with gas to local businesses as part of the My Adelaide campaign, uh, also encouraging people safely back to the city. Uh, we've also begun the process of an analysing uh, the community suggestions that come through the online portal. And I also thank members for their input in the recent workshop. Um, I would like to publicly thank uh, Premier Stephen Marshall and the State Government for the leadership they have shown through this challenging time and also for stepping up with a number of measures that have addi provided additional support to City of Adelaide and business owners. Um, specifically, I want to thank them for providing $200,000 in funding for City activations uh, over the next six months, which will um, encourage people back. I recently met with Senator Anne Rustin, Minister for Social Services, to outline uh, the impact on our city's economy and also discuss the importance of supporting vulnerable communities during this time. Uh, I also met with Michelle Lensing, MP, SA Minister for Human Services, about the state government's COVID-19 street homeless response and the key learnings from the pandemic. Um, we will continue to advocate very strongly for a housing first approach at all levels of government. COVID-19 has had a very specific impact on all of Australia's capital cities and I continue to be in regular contact with my interstate colleagues as we work through the impacts and recovery. Through the capital city of uh, Council of Capital City Lord Mayors, um, we are working on our federal advocacy efforts relating to the recovery. Um, and we're hoping that uh, in the mini budget that might come through in July, there's some good news for the capital cities. In partnership with In Daily, I hosted a Lord Mayor's Forum for their 40 Under 40 alumni, an event bringing together Adelaide's leading young entrepreneurs and change makers uh, in a way to collect ideas and feedback on how we can ensure that Adelaide continues to be a creative and livable city and how we can work with them to grow our industries and enhance our competitive position in the national and global jobs market. July is often called dry July, but it is also plastic free July. And so each of the councillors um, have a small gift from the LGA, which is reusable bags that can help you uh, if you'd like to partake in the plastic free July, uh, it will help you to reduce waste. Um, they're also given them out at the central market. And uh, I think that's a very, very well, uh, feel welcome to distribute them. Um, finally, it was announced this week the City of Adelaide has been selected as the only Australian finalist for the 2020 Wellbeing Cities Award in the category of Planning for Better Urban Health. And this was for our Hot, Hot, Hot campaign. We join a global network of leaders committed to urban wellbeing. Um, and that we're alongside Buenos Aires, uh, Cape Town and Philadelphia. The winning city will be announced at the Wellbeing Cities Forum in 2020 in September. So I want to thank the team for the submission and also for the great work uh, that was done as part of the Hot 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 campaign. Can I have someone move that I accept the report? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, does vote those in favour? Oh, sorry, Councillor Kouros. So the vote those in favour? 
that's hence, thank you, that's carried. Um, item 14 is, is uh, councillors' reports. Can I have someone move that be accepted? Thank you, Councillor Abrahams, a seconder. Councillor Kouros, members? Any comments? No? If not, back to the movement to summer. Councillor Abrahams, today. Uh, just very quickly, it might be of interest to members um, uh, to check out some of these uh, exciting projects. Um, the U City development on Franklin Street actually won the City of uh, Adelaide Prize, uh, but also right here behind us, uh, Part Time Lover took out a commendation. So uh, if you haven't checked out so those places, uh, please do so. Thank you, Councillor Members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members, that takes us to item 15 on the agenda, which is questions on no notice and with the leader's change, I'll take this as being read. Uh, just a show of hands. Thank you very much very much. Those questions on notice and their answers are all available through our website, will be in the minutes and are online now, I think. Uh, questions without notice. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, during questions on notice, I requested information with regard to expenditure in North Adelaide. The response from the administration was that um, a significant part of the uh, uh, capital works budget, the largest component of the works is transport infrastructure of $4.2 million, of which North Adelaide has received $1.5 million, 37% of the program uh, for Prospect Road between Fitzroy Terrace, O'Connell Street 1.2, and Main North Road between Road Terrace and O'Connell Street. Uh, my question is to the administration, um, is that money co-funded by the state government or completely funded by the City of Adelaide? See uh, through the presiding member, I can't actually remember off the top of my head, so I'd need to take that back on notice and follow up. And if that money is part of the redevelopment program for that area, jointly funded by the city and uh, the state government, what would be um, excluding the state government share um, council's total allocation for North Adelaide? Perhaps if we take that on notice, we can distribute the answer to members. Uh, yeah, so usually with transport infrastructure, the only um, external funding we receive is in relation to black spot funding. Um, so, yeah, but I will need to take that back on notice, I'm afraid, Councillor Martin. I'm happy to receive that. Um, I have a, a couple of other questions, Lord Mayor, if I may. The administration has yes, advised. Is without notice? Yes. The administration has advised that um, in recording accidents related to e-scooters, these recorded incidents, uh, that is recorded by the City of Adelaide, rely on people involved self-reporting to say, hold council or to the operators. It subsequently says the City of Adelaide has received low levels of incidents involving e-scooter users during our trial period in comparison to other national and international e-scooter programs. If the reporting of accidents uh, and incidents is voluntary, how can the administration be sure that the recorded level of incidents is below national and international e-scooter programs? Uh, thank you to the presiding member. Um, I need to take that back on notice, I'm afraid, and understand what assumptions have been made. Um, underpinning that statement in paragraph four. So there may well be some comparable data where it's self-reported in other cities, but I can't hand on heart say that's the case here. Thank you. And just one other matter for the administration, Lord Mayor. Uh, during the course of um, the meeting of June 30th, special committee meeting, um, I assert CPI for their funding in the budget year 2021, the administration has advised that the amount received in 2021 is the same as 2019-20 uh, and 2021-22 for both the fringe and the festival. Does that mean that there was no indexation as, um, uh, as was uh, suggested, as I suggested? Through the presiding member, that was actually me, um, and I was trying to clarify an earlier statement you'd made that evening in relation to uh, cuts across our grants. Uh, 
grant programs. And obviously at the time when um, I was unmuted, you were then talking to the Adelaide Fringe and the Adelaide Festival specifically. So my comments could have been seen in the context of me responding to that in particular, but I was actually responding to an earlier comment you made around the general CPI associated with our grants program. Thank you. Thank you, members. That takes us to item, um, hmm, I've lost my last page. Uh, item 17, which are motions on notice. And we will start with 17.1, which is Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And I move the motion as printed and seek a second. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, Members may recall almost 12 months ago um, to the day, I um, proposed a few times, was successful on the third attempt, uh, for us to develop a, a register uh, that logged contact with developers. Um, and what we agreed as a council was that uh, that would be investigated and we would charge administration with um, investigating that. Um, a little while ago, a note uh, went into E! News um, from administration to advise that they had raised the matter with the state government, but that they weren't taking any um, further action at an administrative level. Um, and I uh, found out through my discussions with administration that there was a, um, a list of developers that was available, or at least understood there to be, um, and that that could be made available publicly um, if need be. So it was that that was the genesis of um, this motion. I know from the administrative comment that in fact that uh, list is not available, so I'm happy to accept a variation from a member if someone would wish um, to remove uh, point two from the motion, because I recognise that that um, might be the subject of a miscommunication. So we'll look to your seconder to begin with. Are you happy to to remove part two? That's yes. Correct? Oh, yeah. So I'm happy to strike that out. And um, given administration have stated in the comments that that is not possible. That means, Lord Mayor, that really what this motion is is just asking for is a publication of the official diaries of the Lord Mayor, the Deputy Lord Mayor and councillors on the City of Adelaide website in the form of a table or list of daily official commitments similar to that adopted um, by uh, the ACT. Now, um, I guess, Lord Mayor, I'm trying to think pragmatically about how we might I have achieved some of the objectives of the um, developer contact register, recognising that there's not the political will on this council um, to make that happen. But I think asking for disclosure of um, any uh, diaries um, and appointments and information about who is meeting with who is entirely appropriate and I think a very good transparency measure. In um, the ACT where this is adopted, it does not include um, private information about individuals. So it's not compromising people's privacy. And uh, executive, which included a link to the example of the ACT model, um, which shows that it's really just a table of general appointments that people have. And uh, I think, Lord Mayor, um, at times when faith in our political class is at a low end, um, anything we can do to promote maximum transparency, we should do. Um, and uh, I think this would be a really good uh, transparency measure. It would move us into line with other levels of government interstate, um, in particular the ACT, which is um, both a level of council and local government, um, but also this is developed in uh, New South Wales too. So a sensible, modest proposal, um, but one that I'm hoping will get unanimous support. Thank you. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Right, Lord Mayor, but could, could I ask you to ask the Deputy Lord Mayor when he goes out to smoke to not smoke just out there? Because I'm trying to give up and the smell of this chamber is disgusting. Maybe it's okay, though. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you. Perhaps. I actually have no idea where it's going. Um, Councillor Kerrick. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I speak against the motion. Um, I speak against it because the, um, well, uh, as it was initially framed, uh, the, the motion. Uh, um, the motion uh, seeks essentially to deter or has the effect uh, of deterring uh, small investors and it's a particularly bad time right now to send a message out uh, that those who may wish to invest in terms of small uh, scale developments um, should be named and shamed. Um, it, 
even with the amendment that Council Simpson made to his own motion, even with removing uh, that section there, the effect is still to uh, cast a chill, to frighten uh, the, the little guy, in quotation marks, the little person, the smaller the smaller individual. Um, as it stands now, the development uh, the developer register is not there. I'm not sure really what the fundamental purpose of this is as a consequence, but we've got something about diaries. Um, this against uh, this I put to the chamber cuts against uh, one of our roles, and that is essentially as uh, uh, local representatives, as members of government, and to have essentially a clinic uh, where we encourage people to come and speak to us and see us. Uh, if people know, if people know that they will be named and shamed, uh, if people uh, know that they will be named uh, and shamed for coming to speak to their local representative, it is going to cast a chill on the opportunity. To Sorry, point of order, Lord Mayor, I don't wish to curtail debate, but just to be very clear, that's not what this is doing. I'm this not sure if Councillor Kira heard what I said. It just includes general subject lines. It doesn't include persons or people. Sorry, this is a debate. point of debate. clarification. That and sounds like debate to me a little bit, but I'll press on. Um, so my points remain. I think this is the wrong time. I think this is uh, on balance. Uh, this, this causes more mischief than it seeks to, uh, seeks to uh, fix, uh, and, and I do not recommend this to the Chamber. Okay. Councillor Abraham. Uh, thank you, Lord Member. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, can I uh, start off with a couple of questions, please? Um, are uh, our diaries available through uh, an FI request at all? I can see. Through the presiding over the, um, I don't have it to hand, but there are some legislative requirements about retaining diaries for both administration and for council members for a period of time. Um, so yes, it would be available through FOI, but also under legislation, we are required to keep um, copies of diaries. Yep, thank you. And if I can't track down what item it was that we were just discussing, Lord Mayor, which was essentially your report and the council uh, members' reports. Um, and that's that's something that comes through uh, to every council meeting, I assume. Sorry, I'm not quite sure what you, what you mean. The, um, my report, they do come to every council meeting, yeah, the presiding yes, members' reports. Yes, 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 yeah. Uh, there are only two questions. We can start the uh, the clock. Um, uh, well, Councillor Simpson has made it public that he uh, will have a crack at uh, at state parliament, which uh, I wish him well. I personally think that something like this uh, does belong in state parliament, as the as the link that uh, as the link that, that you've sent through, um, Lord Mayor, as the link that uh, that we've all received. Uh, does highlight that this does happen in uh, in the ACT uh, in the Parliament House. Yes, this does happen with their MPs and their ministers. Um, uh, so personally, I think it's something that that really belongs in state parliament or federal parliament. Um, given that uh, our virus can be FOI'd, uh, I, I think that uh, that there is a, is a measure of uh, a transparency. But as Councillor Kira said, this might actually discourage uh, members of the community uh, to, to engage with us. We already, as local government, have issued engagement with our communities. So what's this going to do? Disconnect them even more at a time where you're trying to uh, engage with the community, get their feedback, and they get them to come on board? Well, this is going to discourage them. Um, but. You know what the funny thing is, um, if I remember correctly, Councillor Sims, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong here, but uh, a little while ago we were talking about uh, CCTVs being installed in the public realm, and I believe you said that uh, uh, you know having CCTV around and collecting footage like that uh, was was not right. You, you disagreed with it. So if you're if you're disagreeing with that and you're agreeing with this, there's just something not right here for me. That's just my personal opinion. I'll leave it at that, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Members, Councillor Maroon. Yes, it really concerns me that Team Adelaide sees the recording of you uh, meeting with a uh, developer as some sort of bad thing that you're demonising. Just that point of clarification, Lord Mayor, this doesn't necessarily say developer, this says uh, ratepayers or, or anyone else. Yes, I know, but you're obviously talking about ratepayers and small business owners. Um, so you're talking about that. Um, there is nothing, uh, we should hold ourselves to the same standard as the federal government does, and they see no problem with that. I, I'm, I moved a motion that we voluntarily 
Um, if you don't want to, if you find that your meetings are in some way clouded and secret and um, will bring attribution to the uh, person meeting you, every person I meet is quite happy to openly say, I'm quite happy to say I'm openly meeting with them too. I don't understand and I'm very concerned by the nervousness of telling people what you, who you meet. Uh, yes, of course they're FOI, but FOI means that you're keeping something secret and you have to go through a process to reveal it. I'm happy to say I met with John Colshaw, I met with Scrappy Brown on Tuesday, I bumped into a few others. They, they don't not want to see me because I'm going to put it on a record. Um, most of these councillors don't live in the council area so it's very unlikely that you're going to bump in accidentally to a developer or a ratepayer. In fact, I know some councillors have not even met a ratepayer. But I can't understand your nervousness as to why it's such a bad thing. What are you doing when you meet a developer that is so shameful? I'm proud if I meet a couple of developers a week or a couple of ratepayers. But you obviously have great nervousness particularly a man, he's very nervous about it. What are you doing? Well, point of order, why am I being singled out here? Because you spoke last. Yeah, you just spoke. Pardon? Because I spoke. You just spoke This is, this last. is transparent, this is, well, this is democracy, this is transparency. Council, I can speak council, if, I, if council, I want to. Abraham's no, I will not be singled out like this, Lord Mayor. No, the question was, why am I referring to Councillor Abraham Zadar? Because he spoke last, and he said that you should FOI, that we will put off people visiting us because because they don't want to be seen to talk, talk to us. I ask Councillor Presumes about why that is the case. Why are you embarrassed about meeting your rate payers? I suggest you. Point of order, I never said I was embarrassed. You want to keep it a secret, though, and I suggest that he probably rarely meets his rate payers. And that's the problem with some of the councillors here that lots of us are meeting with lots of rate payers, and those councillors are happy to list them every week. But I suggest that it's not that there's something untoward going on, it's that you're not meeting with the ratepayers and you're embarrassed about that. Members, Councillor Knoll. Just real short. Um, I have to say, well, as, as we speak with a great variety of ratepayers, and some of us do, um, now when I had a conversation with a person who is a developer, for a few hours, but I never spoke anything about developments. We were talking about central market, city, city, and all these other sort of issues. So when I had a meeting with that person, well and good, but it was nothing to do with it. So you have an oversimplistic um, uh, register. Now that that doesn't, uh, you know, go to the heart of the conversations you have, and you can read this and you can uh, you can then interpret it rather than it being very specific. I mean. It's so easy for you guys who don't have any business connections, who who wouldn't be even involved in a conversation, simply because then it's really a known uh, conversation. You already have a known position. Well and good. The point here is that I, if we talk to a variety of people in the business circles that I go in, I have a great variety of all sorts of business, business people I talk to. They have concerns about how we do the city and all the rest of it. They should be able to speak with us and uh, in general conversation. And remember, I have not talked to anybody in my school that has a, a, about any development um, in that time I've been here and even before. So, uh, but I do have conversations with people who I find are developers. And I think that's really the core of what the problem is here. You can make a very simplistic, very, very basic uh, register, another level of compliance, another level of regulation, another requirement, but it doesn't deliver any real genuine uh, outcome that uh, can lead you to something. Now, and I think we need to have an open discussion, yes, with people within our constituents, but trying to do something like this um, really only makes the, 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 you know, the, the environment murky and for no purpose other than it serves an individual purpose for someone who is not necessarily uh, uh, greatly in, um, you know, encouraged with development or with uh, just even engagement. And I think it's, and, and we talk about transparency and things like that. Well, I mean, let us do it for all the right reasons. And I have to say, it, it, and we don't make any rule decisions in this regard. I just think, kind of, why do I make a, a rule for something that doesn't exist? I find that really silly. Members, 
If not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up after Councillor Mart. Thank you, Lord, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, um, I, I wish to declare straight off, by the way, I am not a developer and I receive no income from any developer interests and therefore I can speak with a complete free conscience. This, um, this is a really important issue. And innocently, Councillor, Councillor Canole told us why it is. He met with the developer recently and they had a long conversation about the city, about the central market of which council is the developer and about a heap of other things. Now, there is nothing intrinsically wrong in that, except that talking to a developer about development matters is a problem if you are a member of the City of Adelaide and you are quite voting a on development. Point no, no, let me finish. No, and no actually, I'm going to interrupt because he didn't say that. He said he was talking about matters other than development. Correct. About the central market. Yeah, about the central market. The and, and market. The central central market. market is a business, yes. not about development. All right, well, I'll withdraw that. I'll, Thank I'll withdraw you. That. Councillor Martin has withdrawn that remark. Okay. Now, uh, it is important when, as a matter of transparency, when we're talking to people, that people know to whom we are talking. And I would have thought that Councillor Abrahimzadeh, as a self-professed uh, community leader, Councillor Abrahimzadeh, as a community leader, would want to set the standard, would want to show to people that we have nothing to hide, that this is a matter of transparency. Now, this happens in the ACT. And let me say to you that the tide, the tide is turning. In New South Wales, the State Parliament is debating and considering measures to exclude developers from candidacy at local government elections. Excluding developers. That's, that's the discussion. The tide, the tide is turning in attitudes towards developers. Now, I'm not suggesting, Lord Mayor, that this is in any way related. I'm talking about community sentiment. And community sentiment is that there is a high level of transparency required, that there is nothing to fear from us recording conversations with people who will have interests that are at times at odds with our role and with the expectations that the community have with us. Their expectations, their roles, I'm not talking about you. And therefore I'm saying that it is not unreasonable for there to be a proposal that for the sake of transparency, we record those discussions, not on a postal, uh, a yellow postal note, by the way, um, as a formal, <coughs> formal declaration of a discussion. Now, uh, Lord Mayor, I know that uh, Team Adelaide has strenuously opposed every measure related to transparency that's come towards this council. Um, but uh, I ask you to speak in favour of this because this is the sort of thing for which the city should be showing leadership. It is something that you can say to people, well, yeah, look, I think this is not a bad idea. I don't have a problem with this personally. I have nothing, nothing that I'd be concerned about. And therefore, I would recommend that you support this. That would be the correct approach. Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I feel like Groundhog Day, we've covered this so many times, and yet in this discussion, I still haven't heard a really good reason to why we should do this. All I hear is the word transparency, transparency, transparency. We have an abundance of matter transparency in this council. If anybody wants information, Councilor they can Martin, get that information. There is, I feel like Councillor Sims is just trying to find something to dig into and say, yep, there, there you are, shame, shame, shame on you. And, and I don't understand why we need to go down this path continuously. There is enough information for the public to be able to ask for to be, if they feel they need that information. I have no problem with my diary showing, but I don't understand the reason for it. It's still not very clear to me what for. It doesn't seem to be a legit, uh, logical reason. And to turn around and to shame other councillors as though they've got something to hide when they're trying to protect the ratepayers because maybe they don't want this. You know, that is that's actually shameful to say. So I think at the end of the day, we have got the transparency in place. We know 
lot of the councils do this anyway. We're going by what they're doing, the ACT as ministers. It's their full-time job. That is what they do. We meet with people as well every day. Um, you know, some in our diaries, some are not. Some have, we, we might have a conversation with someone at a dinner party. Am I meant to put that in as well? And if we're going to be talking about transparency, I mean, you know, why not release our internal emails out there to the public for them to see what is said in general? <laughs> Public to see, um, for, for them to actually scrutinise on and everyone's phones. Why not? I mean, where is this all going to end? At the end of the day, still not a legit reason. Sorry, uh, Lord Mayor, I can't vote for this because I don't see any logic in it. We already have these in place. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, then Councillor Mackey. I just find Councillor Martin's contributions amusing. And France have done nothing wrong, but I'm the only one with a clear conscience here. That sort of that sort of I'm not attacking you, but but attack attack attack. Um, the the, the muddle headed and, and duplicitness is is astounding. Thank but, you, Count. Deputy Lord Mayor, please. Oh, sorry, can sorry, you sorry, talk just, to the motion? Those are, yeah, those those are my reflections on, reflections on those comments. If we look at this, what we've got is you know just like we throw in things from city of Port Vincent and whatever, and say, oh, one council out of three hundred in Australia does it. We must do this. We must do it now. Let's do it. No, no, what an absurdity. It's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. Okay, look at this. All right, ministers. One, only ministers. Okay, ministers. Ministers who are making decisions every day. Ministers who are heads of department. Ministers who direct staff. Ministers who change laws, bylaws, delegated uh, legislation, regulation. They're making decisions every day. What does it say in our code of conduct, Lord Mayor? It says you shall not direct any employee of the council to do anything. So we don't direct anyone to do anything. We have such we, we, we are so far removed from the ministers, from the ministers that this law applies to. It's it's not apples and oranges, it's it's apples and avocados. It's apples and potatoes. This is ridiculous. Okay, so that's the first point. Um, uh, the second point, Lord Mayor, is that fundamentally, and this is what some other members were talking about, and is what I had discussions with members of the public with, um, which I'm happy to circulate those emails, you know, if they're, if they're willing. Um, uh, but what this is going to do is actually fundamentally damage the role of elected members in so far as you will not be allowed to meet with a whistleblower without it being public knowledge. You will not be able to meet with a whistleblower, whether it's uh, someone uh, exterior to the organisation or, in fact, someone in interior to the organisation. You will not be allowed to do that. That is absolutely true. This wants, this wants, this wants that information to be available publicly. When I meet with constituents, when I talk with constituents, by and large, they're raising issues with me because they believe someone in the administration has done something incorrectly. By and large, those are the issues that they are raising, right? And so, and so, what you're doing by putting that information out there publicly is flagging ahead of time that this is what you're looking into. When, when in actual fact, we rely on these staff on a day-to-day -day basis, and we need discretion to be able to investigate such things as and when they arise. So, what this does is fundamentally damage the role of elected members when it comes to listening to and meeting with people who blow the whistle on activities and behaviours that they think should not have occurred. And that, that actually destroys a, a large portion of our democratic role here in this chamber. And that is the primary reason why we'll be voting against this. Just one more minute, good Lord Mayor. Yeah. Uh, picking up on Councillor Adam Hinton's chamber. commentary. Chamber. Picking oh, up. I said just Councillor Martin, I did actually say with leave off the chamber. I'm quite, quite capable of... Um, Running the meeting, I think. <laughs> Mem members, picking up on, chamber, on an extra minute. Picking Thank up you. on what Councillor Abraham today said um, as well, uh, talking about CCTV. Well, I'd, I'd wish to remind Councillor Simpson in that chamber that he served in, and I know he's going for the trifecta now. But in the Senate, <laughs> currently, Department of Par Parliamentary Services, they've installed cameras in the House of Reps side of the building. The Senate, the Black Rod, the Senate are refusing to. 
let them install cameras in that side of the building. They're all ready to go, the conduits are in, it's all, you know, it's advice from security that we must have cameras. They will not allow cameras to be installed because they don't want it to be recorded with who they're meeting with because they are democratically elected people and they have members of the public who would be recorded on this register, members of the public meeting with them. That is, this is, this is, this is a like like situation, Lord Mayor. So that's what other, because Councillor Moran mentioned what they do in, in, in federal parliament. Well, what they don't do in federal parliament is this. I can tell you that now. And when it comes to transparency, we are the most transparent level of government. No, I won't use it all. No, I won't use it all. Please wrap up. I won't use it all. But what I will say is we're the most transparent level of government. We have to declare conflict of interest okay. by law. By law, we are required to declare them. We have our register of interests, and I, and I declare I'm not a developer. I don't have any income from developers, and I, I, you know, that's most of the councillors here around this chamber. And, and, and Lord Mayor also, so you've got conflicts of interest, you've got register of interest. Um, we are the most transparent level of government. This, this is absurd. It will ruin our democratic role and it will damage the rights of whistleblowers to be heard, heard discreetly. Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, this is a fairly uh, clearly heated uh, topic. Um, on balance, I, I come down uh, pretty close to Councillor Sim's position on this, on the basis, colleagues, that we face a crisis of trust, public trust in our public institutions and the people who lead them. We face a crisis where 75% of eligible voters can't be bothered to ex express their democratic right to a vote in a general council election. I favour more transparency. I don't see it as a witch hunt. I would happily, since I don't uh, serve on CAP, um, uh, respond to a request to meet with a, a, a city stakeholder, be they a developer, be they a business operator, be they a resident or community service person. And I will be quite happy to voluntarily put that, since it's pretty clear that the motion's not going to pass, I will voluntarily submit that as a councillor report uh, each month uh, for public tabling. Thank you, members. If not, councillors, sorry, councillor Ho. Sorry. Sensible, mate, just a question though. Um, I don't really understand what does it mean a developer. Okay, someone give me some guidelines um, or descriptions of a developer. Oh, it's a that's, that's, that is not open, sorry, so, Councillor High, yeah, it's not an open question to the room. So, I will actually go to the 18 CA. <laughs> um, through the presiding member, I'm sure there's a technical term that Shanti um, can um, share with us. Um, <laughs> however, um, I would read developers, anyone who does anything in no, relation I'm, to I'm make, I'm, I'm property. Make it simple, though, like whether or not it is someone who have, who have done development projects or someone who have lodged an application right now or someone who own a property in the city and North Adelaide that have potential to be developed in 10, 20 years time or even 100 years time. All right? I, I, just need, I just need a simple Explanation of this. Contact with developers. Well, quite often, quite often we find that someone, people who buy properties, right, with air rights or like buy a house with a big block of land, they have an intention to develop the site in 10, 20 years now or even three or four decades later. Who knows? Should, when I meet with those people, should I need to, should I need to record it on my register, on my diary? What they are potent, they have the potential to be a developer in 10, 20 years' time. Do I need to record it? I don't understand. That's not what's being proposed. Well, hang on, that's why I asked for the identification of what does it mean a developer. It's not in the motion. It's not in the motion. Well, I asked the question. Members, members, Councillor Ho. Please. You're talking to me. Sorry. So. If you if you have a question of administration, please ask it. It's a general question of the room. Don't ask it. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. 
Um, members, any other speakers? If not, I will go back to Councillor Sims to some. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I think there's been some misinterpretation uh, about what precisely is being proposed here. Um, I specifically removed the reference to uh, releasing the list of developers because administration have indicated in the comment that that is not possible. So that is not what I'm proposing. What I'm proposing is that a general list of councillor appointments and official commitments, meetings with everybody, be disclosed in a way that does not identify people's personal information. And to give an example, Lord Mayor, of the format used in the ACT, which is not a um, uh, a state government uh, in the traditional sense or a federal government in the traditional sense. It's actually a hybrid between the local council and the state government, hence the analogy. To give you an example, Lord Mayor, of what is disclosed, meeting, executive director, conservation council, meeting, income, uh, incoming Indian high commissioner, meeting, emergency services authority, I mean, I'm not suggesting, Lord Mayor, and uh, Councillor Abrahimsa does seem to talk about this being a, a you know, a, a compromising of individual privacy. I'm not suggesting that, you know, something akin to the diary that I used to keep as a 15 year old is, you know, released into the public realm. I used to keep a private diary where I'd write, you know, Ricky Martin is so hot, or, you know, I've got a crush on this person, or how am I going to go in my exam next week? I'm not suggesting that that information be put into the public realm. What I am suggesting is that if in my official duties as an elected member, I am meeting with somebody who holds an official role or I'm going to a committee or a function, that I make that information publicly available. I don't think that's that controversial. Um, and like Councillor Mackey, if this motion is down, um, I'll give an undertaking that I will do that um, as part of my elected members report and put those meetings on the public record. And I would encourage other councillors who share um, the belief that I have in transparency to do the same. And in terms of the question of why is this relevant, why is this kind of information um, important? We've had lots of discussions about this um, in this council chamber, about the fact that faith in politicians is at a low ebb. And one of the ways that we can repair that is by demonstrating maximum transparency. And, you know, don't take my word um, for it, Lord Mayor. Um, Lenore Ta Taylor wrote a piece about this topic. Um, she writes for The Guardian for elected members that may not be aware. And she said, uh, the requirement of decision makers to disclose specific interactions with players, corporate and otherwise, with specific policy interests is a bare bones minimum, to say the least. All disclosures in our politics lag the actual event and most of the significant conversations that occur are never disclosed at all. Hence why it would be so useful for residents and ratepayers in the city to get this sort of information. And I cannot understand, Lord Mayor, why any time I propose um, a, a motion that um, improves transparency and tries to bring uh, the City Council into line with other levels of government. I am met with, uh, just a moment more, Lord Mayor. I'm just, I'm drawing on the precedent set by my um, colleague over here. Um, I, I don't know why, whenever I propose these motions, they are met with such rancour. Um, I don't know what people are afraid of and why they're fearing of the community that they represent. You know, whether it is trying to shut down debate in this place or have discussions about motions like this in the dead of night. There are some members that seem to prefer the culture of the sea and clandestine meetings. And that's not what the community wants of this level of government. The Adelaide City Council isn't a secret society where people go away and leave behind closed doors. This information should be out in the public realm because sunlight is, as we know, the best disinfectant. Sadly, the sun went down long ago, Lord Mayor, such is the nature of uh, our new meeting structure. But I will continue to push um, these kind of transparency measures because I think they are in the public interest. Such is the nature as not being able to start earlier, Councillor. Uh, uh, and on that moment, we will go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Division. That is lost. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand, remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Sims, Councillor Moran. So, so.
members. That's uh, 35 minutes on that one. Let's see how we go on the next one. 17.2, we've got 88 O'Connell Street. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, do I need to read that or is everyone uh, happy? For a seconder? Yes, Councillor Moran. Uh, Councillor Moran's just left the room. Sorry, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, look, Lord Mayor, uh, this uh, motion is entirely consistent with your newsletter to um, North Adelaide, um, in which you said that uh, we hoped to finalise the terms and conditions of the agreement for development, including final design with the selected developer in the coming months. And what uh, this does is say that um, uh, if things don't work out, if in the five months between now and December, uh, and the December meeting of council, um, we don't have a deal on the table, we don't have a contract before us, uh, then we have an option, uh, a way of developing this site, which this council promised almost three years ago, when we paid $35 million for the site, promised three years ago that we would develop. Uh, we said it's been vacant and empty for decades, we will develop this site. Now, there was a lot of excitement, and I, I do remember it at the time, and um, I remember particularly in the uh, pre-election phase when people were asking what's going there, and you'll remember, Lord Mayor, you said, although you changed your mind later, that it would be a great place for a um, concert hall. I never changed my mind. Oh, oh, okay, well, that's good. We might still get one by the sound of things. So um, if we don't have a contract coming in the next few months, and I note the administration says we're negotiating with the proponents um, and particularly as we now know from the comments of the administration that this mixed development that's proposed for the site does require pre-sales for it to go ahead. That is to say, in this pandemic, in this recession like we have not seen since the Great Depression, the developer is seeking to develop this site on the basis of pre-sales. Now, if that doesn't happen, if you think uh, there's just the slightest chance by December, five months from now, we won't, we won't have an agreement in place, then we can begin the process to do something else on the site. We actually have a plan B. We have another option for developing the site. Instead of saying to uh, the ratepayers in January, February, March, April, May next year, whatever, can't say anything, um, we actually say, well, we've got a plan and we're going to move on this. And that by uh, the end of next year, which is quite some way away, by the way, it's just before the election, um, by the end of next year, we want something on the site. Now, this seems to me to be inordinately sensible and I do commend it to members. It is our best insurance for making sure something happens on that site. Councillor Sims. I'll reserve my mind. Councillor Kouros. Sorry, is um, uh, Tom here to answer? No, to Tom has left the Because there's a lot of um, things that need to be clarified in what Councillor Mark just said. So, is there anything in particular you want clarified that we might be able to help you with? Well, he's um, in, in regards to the agreement um, that we, um, it states in here that we have a, a heads of agreement, have already entered into a heads of agreement, mm -hmm. and I would like to have Tom to clarify and to help Councillor Martin what that means. Oh, no, I understand. I do. I can explain it to you. Uh, I, I, I'm asking Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor. Um, acting CEO. So, yes, yeah, so we, we have been in um, a number heads of agreement uh, since the end of last year and we're, negotiate, we're in the final stage of negotiating with the proponent at this point in time. Um, and, uh, and we have, uh, of course, continued to keep our community informed as we do that negotiation, which is, like any major development, um, a complex negotiation. 
Um, members, any other speakers? Deputy Lord Mayor. Very quickly, um, uh, given that Councillor Martin has professed no knowledge of development whatsoever, I'm not inclined to accept this motion and support it. Um, uh, uh, but uh, furthermore, I will say that um, uh, I think, looking around the room, I think this motion will fail. Um, and furthermore, I think uh, I think based on the advice we have, this is going to come in well ahead of the deadline that Councillor Martin has suggested anyway, so this is completely superfluous. Thank you, members. And any other speakers? If not, I'll go to sorry, Councillor Sims. Thanks, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, it's just a question of administration in terms of practical terms. Is there, um, and difficult because I don't want to uh, compromise um, confidentiality, mm -hmm. uh, but should uh, something like this be put in place, is there any uh, risk to any uh, potential uh, developer with which Council may be uh, engaging? Thank you. Through the presiding member, just to clarify the question, Councillor Sims, you're asking that if Council supports this motion, will it jeopardise um, ongoing the negotiations? negotiations? Um, I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah. Sorry, just through the chair. If you follow the steps that the administration have been undertaking, and our head of property and commercial has probably been in daily discussions, if not at least every second day with a preferred proponent, we've moved to a, another significant step forward, which is the non-binding heads of agreement. This is a consistent process with the Central Market Arcade redevelopment. Um, and we've been advised directly in terms of the pre-sales issue that uh, the developer doesn't see that as being a constraint to their plans. Um, so uh, for all intents and purposes, we're progressing off the back of the non-binding heads agreement to bring forward a, a, a finalised development agreement to elected body uh, in the coming months. Um, and I think the briefings that you received to date, which have been pretty significant, um, it's a fairly advanced concept, which is a good thing in line with the principles. Um, and the fact that the development agreement and the investment by this proponent has been significant would suggest to us that's probably even more advanced as a project than the Central Market Arcade. So the ability to move from non-binding into agreement to a development agreement should be a relatively short period of time. Thanks very much. And look, on the basis of that, um, I'm happy to support this because I think what it does do is provide um, some level of certainty to the community. And I don't think it will do any harm. Um, Councillor um, Martin is right that there have been uh, questions raised within the community about the status of the project. Um, and uh, I think um, if that's the case, why wouldn't we as a council um, give the community some level of certainty around saying well, this is what we're going to be doing, this is the time frame we're going to be working towards. Um, so I, I don't really think this is that controversial um, at all and I'm, I'm happy to uh, support it. I'd encourage others to do, do the same. It seems like a fairly sensible way forward. It will give clarity to uh, the community um, and if it's not going to jeopardise uh, any discussions that may or may not be occurring, then I think that's fine. Councillor Corus. I've listened to what was just said there, but I have to say that I, I would be nervous so I agree with this because if I was the developer who had uh, a bit negotiating on this, I wouldn't feel comfortable in knowing that, um, that my application is not being taken seriously. So um, I feel nervous agreeing with this um, and I do not want the developer that currently has um, put in a proposal to feel nervous as well. Um, I think we're all uh, in agreement that we want this to happen and we want this to happen fairly uh, quickly and it sounds like it actually is and I don't think I would want to put any jeopardise the um, current negotiations that we have already. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Yeah, thank you, um, Lord Mayor. And look, I, I do recognise this is going down. Um, my average is not as good as um, the team's. 30% um, is it? Something like that? Yeah. 9%, yeah. Um, whereas the team gets 100% or close to, so I, I accept that. Um, but Lord Mayor, let me just say that I admire the optimism of the administration and uh, councillors like Councillor Kouros 
that we have been negotiating uh, from a, an agreement for a, a contract uh, for November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June and July, mm -hmm. that is just to have a contract and we haven't got there. And this proposal says, well, look, all right, if, uh, you know, for November, December, January, February, March, April, May, September, October, we haven't got there. And by the time we meet in December, um, it's looking a bit dodgy. And, uh, you know, I, I do understand, and I wouldn't blame the party that we've entered into a, a negotiation with saying, well, I, I'm worried about pre-sales. I'm not sure I'm going to get them. And we all know the bottom has fallen out of as the a, real estate. As a point of order, I'm sorry, Councillor Martin, but I think that was referred to by Director Hill saying we have already talked to the proponent. They said they have no concern with pre-sales. So to well, put, to put into the public space that they're worried about pre-sales, I think is No, Lord Mayor, uh, not it, it is perfectly proper for the party to a negotiation to say they have no problem with pre-sales. I'm saying to you that quite separately it's not unreasonable to have that concern based on what's happened in other places if not the developer then certainly we as the uh, the council with this 35 million dollar millstone around our necks we have the right to say well is it reasonable as the real estate market is tumbling in the eastern states hanging on here just by the way tumbling in the eastern states that this developer may say well this is too hard and if the developer doesn't say that, the bank might say it for them. So, you know, it, it's not an unreasonable thing to have a plan B. But look, I, I admire the optimism. I think uh, it, uh, well, I hope it's well placed. Um, and I'm sure that the community in North Adelaide will be relieved to know that we're prepared to keep going uh, and trying to get a contract. And hopefully we'll have one in the coming months. Um, and it is possible, of course, they may say, well, they wouldn't even even contemplate a plan B from December, that makes us even more nervous. I think some of them might say that. But anyway, look, um, you all decide. Um, it is your decision. I certainly have made clear what I think. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? Yes, I'm against, sorry about that. Oh, I thought you that, that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's lost. Division anyway. Council members, a division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please stand, remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims. Members, we have 17.3, uh, which is a motion on notice by Councillor Martin, Hong Kong. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, you want to thank you, Councillor Moran. Thank you. Um, uh, look, Lord Mayor, I don't need to tell everyone that the situation in Hong Kong is uh, very serious. It's dire even. Um, as we've all seen, um, Hong Kong residents uh, can no longer sing the country's national anthem uh, because it says it's a slavery uh, and that would be seen as seditious. Uh, they can't even hold up blank pieces of paper because that's seen as a protest against the government of mainland China. Um, uh, these behaviours and many, many more have been out, uh, outlawed um, in uh, an authoritarian crackdown, uh, which the, uh, the British Conservative Party has described as a breach of the Sino-British agreement over Hong Kong from 1997, which promised one country, two systems. Um, uh, our own Prime Minister says, what has happened in Hong Kong is a fundamental change. Um, he has effectively ended extradition treaties with China uh, because the government's view is that anyone extradited to Hong Kong may be extradited to China. That is a substantial change. Now, China has, of course, uh, responded with belligerence, uh, proposing that our uh, uh, exports to that uh, country should be curtailed. Uh, exports like uh, beef and wine, like uh, Councillor Ho uh, exports, all of those things will be targeted. Now, this motion seeks to position uh, the city um, to be ready for 
what the government has announced as a, a way of attracting Chinese businesses and encouraging Chinese students and others on temporary visas to stay for five years with a view to taking citizenship. Um, it um, uh, isn't fully announced. The government has made clear, however, that it will be targeting what it calls talent, business talent in Hong Kong. And what this proposes to do is position council so that we can, with clever marketing, and our administration is able uh, to target uh, marketing and groups uh, very ably, as we have noted over the years. Um, and it, uh, by the way, has a budget for that purpose, a business budget. Um, and we can target those people who are contemplating staying in this country or indeed moving from Hong Kong to consider the city of Adelaide. Now, Adelaide is the perfect place for immigration. We are a, a, a multicultural city, one that has opened its arms to immigration for, um, well, centuries. And this is just one of those occasions when the city needs to say that we are open, uh, we would welcome new residents, uh, people on temporary visas, people who are contemplating leaving Hong Kong and bringing their businesses to Australia, come to Adelaide is what this proposes. Now, on that basis, I ask you all to endorse this proposal. Uh, Councillor Moran? Uh, Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, uh, I I do appreciate what Councillor Martin is, is trying to do, and I and I do understand um, the, uh, the 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 many issues and problems that are uh, happening over there in China and, and, and in Hong Kong. Um, but I would um, I would say that some a matter like this uh, would need to go to federal parliament, not even state parliament yet alone in a local government uh, council chamber. Um, let's look at the outcomes that we're trying to achieve here. Um, are we trying to bring the residents here? Okay, sure, well, that might be one of the outcomes that we're trying to achieve, but there's no flying, so you can't bring anyone over. As I understand it, uh, you're, uh, the, 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 the flight, yes, yes. 10,000 people in the country. Well, ne nevertheless, that, that, that aside, um, flying will be an issue, bringing people over will be an issue. It is an issue. So, so the residence is, uh, is one thing, you're not going to get favourable outcomes there. But uh, if, I, if I read it correctly, I think there is a mention of, uh, of bringing businesses over. And well, I would look at our own, uh, uh, our own tax rate. Point, point, point of order, please. What, a point of clarification or a point of order? No, 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 there are flights that come from Hong Kong every week to the city, direct from Cafe Pacific. The people on those flights are quarantined for 14 days. Of course, of course they can come. It's thank inaccurate you, thank you very much. That's a point of clarity, that is. Thank you, thank you for clarifying that. But can anyone, without a visa, without any proper documentation, can they come over here as well? Um, well, no. Anyway, I don't expect the answer, Councillor Martin. I don't expect the answer. I know the answer. I know the answer. So let's look at the businesses, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, let's look at the businesses. We're trying to encourage businesses to come here. We're trying to tell businesses that are set up in Hong Kong who have a tax rate of 15% to bring their businesses over here, where our tax rate is 30%, double down. Yes, of course, bring your business over here. Bring your business here, where well, we can tax you. <laughs> Think they'll do that? No. Chances are, my guess, chances are... Councillor Moran. Have you got something to say? Yeah. Members, Councillor Moran, Councillor Abraham today. Thank Please you, continue. Lord Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> so how silly is that? Yeah. To tell someone to pack up their business and bring it over here. What point when point of clarification. No, please sit down, Councillor Martin, and let Councillor Abraham say, please finish speaking. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, so how silly is that to tell someone to pack up their, their business where they're getting taxed at 15% to bring it over to a country where they'll get taxed double that? Chances are, and this would be my guess, they'll probably take it to Singapore where the tax rate is you know, 12, 15%. But, but 
You know what, Lord Mayor, I just I just get this feeling that uh, there are certain members who bring certain motions into this chamber that does not belong into this motion. Let's look at ourselves. We're a local government. We're here for roads, rates and rubbish. We're we're not here to, to uh, talk to diplomats. We're not here to uh, to uh, engage with international relations. That's not us. That is not us, Lord Mayor. Members, um, Council Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I do support uh, this motion. I think um, it's appropriate for this Council to uh, form positions on issues um, like this. Um, and particularly uh, when it is on an issue with, uh, to do with a country with which we have a strong strategic relationship. And indeed, um, China um, and the city of Adelaide have always enjoyed a very good relationship and a close friendship. And I always think the basis of a close friendship is frank conversations. When a friend is doing the wrong thing, you need to be able to pull them aside and say, I don't agree with what you're doing. And um, the city of Adelaide has a very good relationship uh, with China, but I think it's fair for us to say that they are doing the wrong thing in this instance. And I want to be very clear that my comments are not a criticism of the people of China, many of whom I know disagree um, with the actions of their government and in terms of human rights abuse. It's not about that. Um, but it is about saying to the government of China that they are doing the wrong thing when it comes to uh, the situation in Hong Kong. And for those members of council that say, well, this isn't our responsibility and uh, we shouldn't get involved, well, I often think of the words of Martin Luther King when he said, injustice anywhere is uh, a threat to justice everywhere. And he's right, because all of these things are connected. And uh, I think it's totally appropriate for us to form a position on this and to use our close strategic friendship with China that has been fostered by several Lord Mayors, including yourself, um, Lord Mayor, but your predecessor, um, Martin Hazy as well, um, placed a big emphasis on China. I think it's totally appropriate for us to use that strategic relationship to advocate around the issue of human rights. Um, on the point that Councillor Abraham said, with respect uh, to the Councillor through you, Lord Mayor, I think he is missing the point because people who are uh, fleeing a situation where they are facing um, persecution or religious um, uh, uh, political um, discrimination um, are not doing so on economic grounds. They may well um, be in an advantageous position economically. Um, they're uh, leaving because they're in a position where their civil and political rights are being curtailed. So um, the tax regime of, of Hong Kong is, is not relevant. Um, I, I think it's appropriate for us to take a position on this. Um, and uh, we're a city council. Of course, we're playing a role um, advocating on the global stage, particularly when um, we're advocating to a country with which we have such a close relationship. And I think indeed it is our responsibility to pull our friend up when they're doing the wrong thing. Uh, I have Councillor Ho, then Councillor Carrow, then Deputy Bob Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And I would like to speak against this motion. First, I do not agree with the movers statement in this motion. My mom is from Hong Kong and she's currently living in Hong Kong. My aunties, uncles, cousins on my mother's side are all grown up in Hong Kong and are still working and living in Hong Kong. However, what they told me is, a com is completely different as what Councillor Martin said in his motion. I am not sure how could an elderly city council member who knows what's going on over there better than my family who actually live over there. Law Mayor and members, I would rather trust my own family member than someone who always like to provide us with misleading information, just like misquoting the actual cause for the central market redevelopment, despite that the Law Mayor and our administration correct him many, many times. Of course, Law Mayor, and members, I am not here to talk about what's going on in a region that is over 8,000 kilometers away, and I am not. I have no interest in to talk about other countries' internal affairs right here in this chamber. People can share their views about international affairs on their own social media platform, but not in this local government chamber. Members, I would like to ask you not to support this motion. And, and I call this motion as a disgraceful motion for the following three reasons. First, it is outside of our responsibilities to share our views on international affairs. 
This is a local government, and our voters expect us to focus on local matters like rates, rubbish, and roads. Besides that, some members always ask for public consultation, but I'm not sure if the mover actually done one for this, for, for this motion. But I have. I have asked many people from my community about their thoughts, and no one from my community actually supported. Former law mayor Dr. Elf Kwan, who grew up in Kong before he came to Australia, and he said this motion is a such a disgusting motion. On one hand, it would not achieve any results. On the other hand, it would just widen the gap between communities. Kesi Chong, who is originally from Malaysia, the winner of the Multicultural Award, claimed that this motion is a stupid motion. It's just acting more few. It, on one hand, it's just outside of cultural responsibilities and adding more fuel to the fire and cause more damages to our community. <clears throat> I spoke to Wayne Chow, who is the former president of Hong Kong Business Association of South Australia. And he also speech, he is also so speechless and said, this person knows nothing about us, but want to represent us. Lawmates, I can keep going. I can keep going with a long list of names that are well known in the community. But I only have five minutes. 17 years ago, there was a Hollywood movie, Nick Choi. <laughs> Let me quote what Prince Hector told Prince Paris. You said you are, you are willing to die for love, but you know nothing about love and you know nothing about dying. Okay. Councillor Martin, that's exactly how I feel when I first read about your motion. You know nothing about us and know nothing about what we really want, but you would like to speak on our behalf. What a joke. Maybe you should speak to your good friend in the nurse and read his article, which was published on Sunday Mail on the 31st of May 2020. I hope that will give you better understanding about this matter. Romay, the biggest concern I have about this motion is, on one hand, it achieved nothing. On the other hand, on the other hand, it just cost our ratepayers more money on something outside of their wish list. It will widen the gaps between our communities. As you all heard the news about what had happened on Wuji Street and Woodworth Rundle Mall in the, last two, in the last two weeks. On the surface, there are no linkages between the two instances and this motion. However, the reason why the local Asian community react like this for the last two, from the last two instances is the unnecessary pressures being put on us, put on them since the pandemic began. As there are so many politicians like Councillor Martin keep planting seeds of hay in our community. Oh, no, hang on, our that, community that, just that get wider and wider. That is more incidents will happen in the near future. I, he needs to withdraw that. I have I have done no such thing. Well, yeah. Councillor Martin, this is exactly how I feel from the bottom of my heart. This is the, you are planting the seeds of hay in our community, oh. and I make no apologies to it. Yeah. That is just well, you've asked for a point of order and he has responded. I will also love, I will all. He has got about 30 seconds left. Thank you. I will yes. also urge the longest serving councillor who claimed that she is a great supporter of the local Chinese community and worked tirelessly for us to, to withdraw his, her secondary. But more we debate in this chamber about this matter, more damages will be made to our community. To sum up, I would like to ask members not to support this motion. It is outside of our responsibilities. It is not supported by our own local community. If we are going to have motions about how China deals with Hong Kong, should we have motions about how US president deals with Black Lives Matters? Should we have motions about how Russian president deals with its new bill change? Should we have motions about how Turkish government deals with since Sophia Ketro? It will never end. Some people complain about the long council meetings, but keep bringing up motions like these that are not supposed to be brought up in the local government chamber. How ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kerry. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, we won't try to talk that at all. I'll just say that uh, I think uh, 
Um, look, uh, it is without question, uh, it's without question, uh, Lord Mayor, that the situation in Hong Kong uh, is extremely grave. Uh, that is not in contention. Um, however, it is not uh, it is not mutually exclusive. It is not uh, to dispute that, to recognise uh, that, on the other hand, a motion such as this is flawed uh, because uh, with a motion like this, you've got to balance uh, the, the over, overall uh, good, uh, whether the good outweighs the bad with a motion uh, such as this. Uh, and in this case, I, I make two observations. One, it's very clearly uh, this is about foreign policy. This is uh, uh, Councillor Stevens has commented. You know, this is about uh, sending a message to China. Very motion itself, sending uh, a letter to the to the uh, uh, sister city Qingdao. Um, it's very clearly uh, uh, Qingdao about. Uh, uh, it's very clearly about foreign policy. Um, it is. The, the current the situation at the moment is fluid. Um, no one really could realistically say that the federal government, uh, whatever you say about our present federal government and their, um, you know, their 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 their, their actions uh, in policy in general, they have not been afraid of taking it up to China uh, when they have uh, seen fit, as we as has been demonstrated. I do not believe the current federal government is lacking uh, for a, for a. Uh, for a pugilism or at least a robust advocacy uh, on in relation to foreign policy with China. So I do not think that there is any uh, huge lacuna, you know, gap in our foreign policy in this regard. Um, and I think that, uh, that you know, Councillor Mackey talks about the loss of faith uh, in public institutions. I can tell you one of the things that, that uh, really causes a loss of faith amongst local government constituents is seeing a bunch of jumped up city councillors uh, try and intervene in matters that are not their preserve. They're not delegated. Uh, they are not delegated to deal with these things. Uh, this is the type of stuff we saw uh, from the Marrickville Council, uh, Lee Rhiannon, that sort of mob. I, I urge councillors, take this uh, cautiously. It is not. It is not to undermine. It is not in any way to undermine the gravity of the situation in Hong Kong. To It, it is not to undermine the situation, the gravity of the situation in Hong Kong to reflect on the fact that we are delegated to speak in certain matters and we should leave foreign policy in a very fluid situation to a capable federal government. Councillor Moran, you're next. I'm just absolutely appalled by what I'm hearing. Um, I don't think anybody in this room, except perhaps Councillor Ho, um, who doesn't seem to understand the gravity of the situation, would uh, disagree the fact that China has imposed shocking sanctions on Hong Kong, has broken all the agreements, has broken human rights, and um, it's, it's unbelievable that you could say that. Uh, yes, I have worked tirelessly for the, the Chinese community, and I have not spoken to anybody that has your blinkered vision. You say that it will achieve nothing, but it's a horrendous motion. Well, you can't have both of them. Uh, widening the gap. I can't believe you could say that. This is a kind motion, extending the hand of kindness to people that are suffering in Hong Kong. And yes, well, I'm sorry, just because you're Chinese doesn't mean you understand it. Um, it doesn't. I'm German and I don't understand German politics. Uh, human rights are everybody's business. To say that human rights are not our business is, is ridiculous. I've never more ashamed of Team Adelaide than I am today. Human rights, what if, what if we were sitting here in a local council in England and uh, Hitler was uh, setting the camps up? Would you say, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm Huddersfield Council, uh, he's marching on POTUS, nothing to do with us. When good men sit on their hands, evil prevails, and you're sitting on your hands, and I'm disgusted with you, absolutely disgusted with you, and I'm sure that Alfred Wong, an honourable man, would not reflect if he understood it. We have a very close relationship with China. It is in our belly week. We have sister cities. We have regular deputations and dinner with them. To say this is out of our sphere is ridiculous. And uh, I'll, I'll ask perhaps um, Lord Mayor Hazy. To help people and extend the hand of kindness to people in a difficult situation is absolutely in our arena. And I really don't want to say any more, but it, you know, to widen the gap, Councillor Martin, who's withstood a lot of abuse tonight with absolutely no intervention. Um, Councillor Ho has been defamatory and slanderous and not honourable. I'm sorry. Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, 
thank you, Lord Mayor. I want to begin by uh, commending Councillor Ho's contribution. Uh, I think it was incredibly enlightening, and it's glad to hear from someone who actually has some lived experience of these matters and can draw on his own personal experience and, and personal heritage, um, uh, being uh, part uh, mainland and also uh, Hong Kong as well, or Cantonese. Um, but again, yeah, it does it does come to role, Lord Mayor, and our role. And I just want to read out the objects of the City of Adelaide Act, 1998, which uh, established a large part of what we do here. Um, and given people are throwing around we're a capital city, I feel like I'll draw on the Capital City Act that, that talks about what we do. Um, so we've got A, to recognise, promote and enhance the special, social, commercial, cultural and civic role that the City of Adelaide plays as the heart of South Australia. B, to provide for collaborative arrangements for intergovernmental liaison between the state and the corporate Corporation of the City of Adelaide for the strategic development of the City of Adelaide and the representation of the interests of South Australians. Uh, C, to revise and enhance local governance arrangements for the City of Adelaide. Um, and D, and actually I was interested to read this one in there, um, uh, to ensure access to the City of Adelaide for all South Australians. So when we talk about cars, um, I think that's important, so I'll be drawing on that in the future uh, as an aside. Um, uh, but but if I if I can continue without the juvenile interruptions of our apparently long um, it, it comes to role. We do not employ diplomats. We don't even engage diplomats in the city of Adelaide. Um, we don't have foreign policy advisors. We don't engage foreign policy consultants in the city of Adelaide. Um, this is all. This is all. This is all. This is all, this is all completely outside of our purview and completely outside of our role. If. If councillors, if councillors want to, to have influence on foreign policy, contact your local MP. Waste their time instead. Don't waste. Don't come here and waste ratepayers' time. Waste the time of staff um, and all others involved involved in this in this most juvenile debate. And I do echo what uh, what Councillor Ho said when he highlighted that this is just going to cause further division in the multicultural community here. It is going to cause further division and uh, I, I hate to invoke I hate to invoke um, a race further into this Lord Mayor but what right what right um, uh, does an anglo-saxon man have to come into his chamber of privilege and dictate to other people oppressed or not over the other side of the world 8,000 kilometers away what he thinks of their foreign policy and then to also dictate that to those members of the multicultural community here, I mean, it's 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 incredibly deranged. But of course, you know, if this gets voted down, Lord Mayor, if this gets voted down, um, uh, it'll be me that's labelled the problem. Councillor Ho will be the problem, and everyone else who votes it down will be the problem. Um, and it reminds me, it reminds me. I'm just going to leave members with this with this other definition. A form, if. A form, a form of psychological manipulation in which a person or group sows the seeds of doubt in a targeted individual or group, making them question their own perception or judgment, often evoking in them cognitive dissonance and other changes, including low self-esteem. That is the definition for gaslighting, Lord Mayor. That's what this is. Political gaslighting. Dangle it, dangle the bay, put something up that actually has no impact on us. Uh, it gets voted down because it's outside of our purview. Um, oh, no, no, you're not the problem. We're the problem. Yeah. It's gaslighting. It's manipulation uh, of the highest order. You cannot manipulate multicultural communities like this and cause division. It is disgraceful. Members, are there any other speakers? Oh, so I'm just going to bring us back to the fact that we are a city that welcomes all nationalities and that we have have also a growing Chinese community and they bring a lot to the city in terms of both their culture and their ancestry and that we have many relationships with China in the spirit of friendship which we agree and also we work very hard to work with the Chinese community. I do believe that these issues of uh, a bilateral nature in terms of the relationship between Australia and China are more appropriately addressed at the national level by the federal government and in fact I draw your attention to the administration comment that if this is to be successful, I will ask for advice from the appropriate federal and state agencies before anything is issued from uh, the town hall. Um, I believe obviously there are issues um, at national level they will continue between Australian government and the Chinese government. Um, 
are going to undoubtedly impact uh, on the people of our city, but Adelaide is committed to continuing to grow the relationships with people from China and for the benefits of all our residents. Now, I'm, I'm stating that because there's been a lot of uh, very passionate uh, discussions. We have many communities that work in this area. We have the Australia China, China Business Council. We have Study Adelaide. There are a lot of people actually reaching out to communities uh, not just in Hong Kong, but um, uh, all through China, uh, because we do welcome Chinese students, Chinese visitors, Chinese migrants, Chinese businesses uh, to the city of Adelaide, because that's part of what we are. We're an extremely multicultural city. Um, in terms of the, uh, the politics itself and requesting me to write, if it is the wish of the chamber, uh, then I am stating that I will go and seek advice federally and state-wise before I do so. Um, with that, I'll go to Councillor Martin to sum up. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. I must say, look, I, I am quite rattled by all of this. Um, I, I want to first deny uh, that I am in any way inciting racial hatred, that I have in anything here linked COVID-19 with this motion or the Chinese community, that I am encouraging division or racism in the community. Nothing I have said or done implies that. Um, they are serious reflections on my character. Uh, and even more disturbing is that councillors Kira and councillor, uh, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor particularly, have commended Councillor Ho for that baseless and highly defamatory attack. But you know, the thing that really hurts more than anything is that the councillor sat there reading from his tablet. I can see the, the notes that were there. He read all of that, attacking me. And not once in the two weeks, really three since this has been filed, did he ring me and say, I disagree with you? Or did he say, councillor, this is not an appropriate motion. It's not, it's not acceptable to my community. He didn't seek in any way to contact me. And yet he's been sitting there crafting this attack on my character, accusing me of being a racist. Now, I say to him, I'm not a racist. I worked for many years with multicultural communities through SBS. I helped establish National Indigenous TV. I have a reputation. I am concerned to preserve that. And your behaviour is just despicable. You, you have plummeted in my estimation tonight. I am just appalled. Lord Mayor, um, this is perfectly reasonable for us to be talking about. Uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor um, is completely malicious in all that he has said and mischievous. This is a city that has struck the international stage for years, multiple sister city relationships, a budget for Chinese relationships that was well over a quarter of a million dollars every year for many years. We engaged specialists to advise us on liaison with the Chinese government. We hosted dinners at which large amounts of food and wine were served up. Uh, we've hosted events in this term of council. Councillor Ho has addressed groups that have come to town hall. We have a strong international relationship with China. It is incumbent on us to at least express our concerns. But put that to one side. If members find the first part of that unpalatable, then it's their right to say, I wish to amend it, to remove this. None of them said that. What they did was read from carefully crafted words to attack my character. Now, that says volumes about your faction, the people that you lead, and they, I think, lead you on this council. Oh, it, is, it is. Now, I would ask for just a moment long. Uh, it's with the. Uh... Leave well, the it never is for the deputy it lord. It was Mayor because, or uh, sorry, I'm, well, I could see the hands when they asked for leave well, of the chamber. Well, I think it would add insult to injury if they denied me the opportunity to answer. Well, I would this. ask you to talk through the chair, yeah. Councillor Martin, and um, so I'm quite fine if you want to point your finger at me, but I would like you to talk through the chair. Members, leave for an extra minute. Thank you. You have an extra minute, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, it was up to anyone to move that the first part of this be deleted. And to be frank, I expected it to be deleted. But I did not expect people to turn on what is essentially a federal government initiative. 
has nothing to do with us. The federal government has determined that it will encourage immigration. Oh, no, through the chair, please. Sorry, Lord Mayor. Uh, has decided that it will encourage the 10,000 visa holders of Hong Kong origin to remain in this country. It has decided to target Hong Kong businesses with a view to attracting as many as they can to this country. This motion simply follows on from what the federal government proposed. And the venom, the vile that came from the mouths of these people is truly appalling. And, and I, I frankly, I'm sitting here thinking, can, can this really be so? Uh, you know, Team Adelaide, your team Thank is you. just- Thank you, Councillor Martin. This is not about Team Adelaide. This is about individuals in in this chamber. Thank you, members. We are going to vote. Those in favour? Those against? Division. Council members, a division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please stand and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Martin, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Sims, Councillor Moran. Members, it takes us to 17.4. Yes, um, we, we can have a short break if that's what you'd like. I'm going to continue on. We have uh, six items left on the agenda. Would anybody like a five minute break? Yep, five minute break. Comfort stop. Well, you are allowed to leave the chamber, I'm not. If I could have a five minute break, a comfort stop. Thank you, members. Thank you. Back in five minutes.
Councillors Donovan and Mackie have left us for the evening. I think Councillor Moran may have gone, I'm not quite sure. Um, so let's keep going. Uh, Councillor Mackie has withdrawn 17.6. Um, let us travel on. 17.4, motion on notice, Councillor Martin, Aquatic Centre. Um, Withdrawn. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Kerr, 17.5, remote conferencing zoom. Moved, printed, uh, seconded. Thank you, Councillor Abrahamson. Okay, um, in brief, um, it's just really, uh, I looked at uh, administration in particular, um, that's what we called hostage a bit during our committees and workshops. Um, and uh, this, uh, I think, would provide uh, the opportunity for them uh, to uh, either go home uh, during the period or uh, and log in, uh, or to go uh, back to their desk where they have their desktop and all their stuff. Uh, I think they would uh, be um, quite a bit more productive on those nights. That's what this is geared towards. Um, so I look forward to hearing what others think about it. Yeah, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, just very quickly, uh, Lord Mayor, I think um, this uh, does um, make things more effective and, and more efficient. But also, uh, who doesn't like Zoom meetings when you're all business on top and PJs on top? <laughs> <laughs> Members, Councillor Kouros. I'm sorry, I'm actually against this motion. Um, um, I, um, I actually uh, think that. Uh, well, now that we are out of the restrictions, we should be going back to having the meetings in council. Um, I think that it's, uh, our ratepayers would like to see us uh, being uh, engaged with each other, good or bad or ugly. Um, and I think that we took on this role to um, uh, be here in council with the meetings, with our staff and the remote Conferencing was good during what it was what it was for as for COVID. Um, and we're not uh, we are back to so called some normality, but I, I believe that this will still have to be in place just in case we have a second outbreak. But I just don't agree with continuing on Zoom. I think our rate payers would like to see us all within um, and meet uh, in council as we were elected to do. Members, Councillor Martin. Yes, Lord Mayor, look, if I can begin by giving you a list of dates. Um, August 4th, August 25th, September 1st, October 6th, October 2027, November 10 um, and December 1st are all the dates on which the Federal Parliament sits. And my colleague, the Deputy Lord Mayor, has an enormous conflict of interest. This motion will allow him to continue to chair the meetings from Canberra, where he's required to work for the right-wing Liberal MP, Nicole Flint. Um, this is, in my view, what this is all about. It has nothing to do with the convenience of staff. It's about facilitating uh, the ease of meetings chaired by the Deputy Lord Mayor. That's, that's my belief. I may be wrong. Um, uh, I, I actually think that people are a lot smarter than Team Adelaide gives them credit for. And Lord Mayor, look, it really is just an appalling, appalling meeting tonight. I can't believe that you presided over all of that. Uh, I'm just stunned. Um, and, and with that, I will leave the council to what you've always wanted, you and the team. On that note, and thank you for uh, those last comments. Um, members, any other? Comments? <laughs> De Deputy Lord Mayor, or is that Councillor uh, Seems to... Seems that the opposition are on quorum duty. There must always be one. Yeah, I needed a um, uh, Of course, completely reject Councillor Martin's imputations. Uh, they're just patently. Oh, thank you, Rob. Uh, patently absurd. Um, uh, as the chair of the committee, I think I have somewhat a unique perspective um, on the operation of it and uh, or the lack of operation sometimes when members um, uh, do, do not behave themselves. I think Zoom has been largely uh, quite positive because what it has done is remove the personality and the politics from committee meetings in a very, very substantial way. The politics is for this chamber. The policy is for that chamber. That's how it operates. That's, that's the vision that the 
meeting structure that we implemented um, uh, had. That's why we don't have uh, voting committees because people get bogged down in their political points um, uh, instead of actually uh, doing what they should be doing, which is instead of getting caught up in personality politics, uh, they should be looking at the substantive of what's in front of them and they should be interrogating that and they should be asking questions. They should be asking questions of the material in front of them. That's why we have to suffer through an average of two hours of questioning per council meeting on material that should have been either taken offline or done online in committee meetings. Um, and what Zoom's actually done uh, has refocused councillors um, on the substantive material which is in front of them. And it's reminded them what their, their job is um, uh, in committee. And of course, at the, at the previous uh, committee meeting, um, we saw some atrocious behaviour from councillors. Absolutely atrocious and juvenile behaviour. Refusing to turn microphones on, uh, refusing to speak uh, when it's their turn. It's like a, it's worse than a schoolyard, Lord Mayor. It's worse than a schoolyard. Um, Zoom at least uh, gives us the opportunity to refocus. Um, uh, furthermore, as well, uh, I acknowledge that this is about um, the staff, and, and the staff will come up with their own uh, best practice when it comes to the work that they do, um, and whether they're uh, doing it from a home study or whether they're doing it from their office here at town. Um, uh, I don't think that it makes necessarily uh, the biggest difference. But uh, for me, it comes back to the functionality of the committee. I think that's being done better um, over Zoom, to be honest. Um, and, and furthermore as well, uh, I am merely regurgitating a position that we as a council came to when we made a submission to the local government reform package uh, uh, in a roundabout way, where we requested that the minister look at ways to facilitate remote participation in meetings. Um, and, and on a more general point, I think while, while councils across South Australia, while councils across South Australia uh, uh, require their members to be there, every week, every week, uh, which is a most unusual sitting schedule for any other uh, realm of government, um, uh, local government will remain the almost exclusive purview uh, of, of the retired person who has time on their hands. And while it remains the purview of those particular people, you will not see young people contributing. You will not see as many high achievers contributing because they are required to travel for their work. They are required to be interstate or overseas on occasion. Um, that is the nature of what they do. Uh, and if we compare ourselves to a board, as we as we sometimes do in some respects, and we are the corporation of the city of Adelaide, you will not find any uh, a board of a company that has as much turnover as us with such ridiculous requirements um, over how they participate in meetings. And I think it's something that we should be seeking to change over time and I think this is a step in the right direction. Thank you members, Councillor Sims. Thank you um, Lord Mayor. Look I, I caution members not to um, vote for this um, but I do want to start by commending the work of our staff in um, dealing with Zoom over the COVID-19 um, pandemic. So I can imagine that was very stressful to try and um, get that uh, set up. Um, and, you know, I enjoyed my regular Zoom meetings and Dean was working from home um, during that time. But um, I do think that there is a benefit to us being face to face in the physical um, council building. Um, it's about actually, you know, building personal relationships. There aren't many opportunities for us to do that on this council now that we're meeting monthly and we don't meet for a regular dinner or have regular um, catch ups. If we move to um, online meetings, um, we will only be seeing each other face to face once a month. Um, some may say that's a great thing. Um, I would miss you all terribly, Lord Ben. But also, I think that um, Tuesday night is not, you know, your night for being at home in front of the laptop. It's the night when you come in to council, you have your physical meetings. Um, and, you know, I think uh, the platform is not perfect. There are um, regular IT issues, particularly um, as a result of the um, Terminal Government's NBN, um, which still provides quite slow net speeds at different times. Um, but also there are uh, security issues as well. Um, and uh, there has been a lot of commentary around the risk 
of um, Zoom um, and uh, people hacking into Zoom and accessing private conversations. And given we do have a lot of our discussions uh, due with sensitive confidential items, I am um, concerned about the integrity of the platform um, being used ongoing. That said, I think um, it makes sense that if a member is unwell and cannot attend, uh, as was the case um, the other night with yourself, Lord Mayor, or if someone has got to travel into state with work or whatever, I have no problems with arrangements being made. And we've demonstrated um, over the last little while um, that we can do that with, without incident. I think that's good. But to go a step further and say that we're going to become virtual counsellors and that we're only going to uh, physically be here in town hall once a month, I think that would be a very, very dangerous step for our democracy. Um, it would shut down uh, appropriate debate um, and I think it would disenfranchise the community, many of whom may not have access to um, online streaming services and so on. And uh, it would make it very sad because it would be the end of a uh, democratic tradition that has been going on for 175 years, Lord Mayor. Um, so, you know, let's actually support the democratic traditions of um, our city, not shut them down, and uh, let's not turn Adelaide City councillors into virtual councillors um, or FIFO councillors that, you know, come in once a month. Let's actually recognise we've got to be here once a week at least and represent our community in the physical space that is Town Hall. Members? Um, Councillor Kerr, I, I am really appreciative of having Zoom in our bag of tricks. I'm very concerned about this motion that says all committee meetings, all workshops, all discussion forums for the remainder of the term. Um, because there are workshops coming up. Um, uh, uh, I know of one in particular that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks that we do need to be present for and it's a very big decision and we actually need to be physically here so that we can hear from the proponents and look through uh, where things are up to. I'm, I'm, there are several touch points in the next couple of months that I'm very concerned that it, we won't be able to actually do that on Zoom. Whereas I love the idea that we can use Zoom when we need to. And I also think the original idea was that we would allow members, if they were interstate overseas, unavailable to come in, to be able to connect with us to the meeting. M may I vary uh, at this stage to accommodate that uh, concern? I would be very happy for you to. Um, so, because to me, it's 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 absolutely. I'd love that to be part of the way that we can do business, yeah. but maybe not for every single meeting that we have for the next couple of years. Well, thank you, Lord Mayor. If I may bear uh, the motion uh, in summing up, perhaps um, to accommodate that, I would just add uh, to the end of to the end of the motion uh, for council members, um, uh, unless unless otherwise. Uh, unless otherwise, so I'm struggling for words here, yeah, the discretion, uh, uh, unless, other, unless otherwise at the discretion of the Lord Mayor, as I... Usually, it's, usually it's done between the CEO and myself. Yeah, okay. unless you otherwise the at the... At the <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a good point, that's another complicated factor. Oh, no. um, is that? Oh. Um, that was a no, Deputy Lord Mayor. Yeah. Um, so, um, so uh, Councillor yeah. Kerry, usually the meetings are called by the CEO in consultation with myself. Yeah. Sorry. If, if I think to, I, I think this covers that, uh, to be honest. It uh, gives, gives leeway for those, uh, we all know when we need to start. Okay, consultation with with the uh, presiding member. Yeah, that sounds good. Yep. How's that? Um, because that, that will... Uh, all right, I'm down with that. So, so essentially what Councillor Kira is saying is that it's all committee meetings, workshops, unless otherwise determined at the discretion of the CEO consultation of the presiding member. So, for instance, the workshop that I'm referring to, uh, we can determine that that is a, an input person or a discussion forum or whatever we have going forward. It is, um, but it, so it's not a standard. No. Yeah. No. Um, so I look to the seconder, Councillor Abraham, today. Are you happy with that? Um, 
Right. So, so members, uh, I will go to Councillor Kerry to sum up. Right, okay, um, thanks. Okay, well look, um, to allay the concerns uh, of Councillor uh, Kouros, um, this, is, this is not about meetings proper. Um, I would uh, never uh, want to prevail against meetings being anywhere but the Chamber. I think for advocacy and tradition and history, we must be in the Chamber. Uh, for our meetings where we make formal decisions. Um, I don't think that the public, I think the ratepayers would actually say, well, look, you know, this is this is committees, this is workshops. They are uh, no longer, they're no longer uh, voting, there's no longer decision-making um, uh, meetings as such. Um, this is a, an efficiency gain. I think ratepayers would say, well, look, you know, why not, uh, why not proceed in that matter if it's working, uh, if there's efficiency, uh, if it is uh, going to see a cost savings and it's going to enable administration to be more efficient at that time, why not continue? Um, as with everything, it's a, it's a juggling act. I I don't think democracy. I don't think the Athenian scholars of ancient democracy are quivering at this change. Uh, perhaps if they, perhaps if the you know ancient Athens had had uh, access to uh, remote uh, conferencing, they may not have gone to war with Sparta. Um, but uh, the, 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 uh, the it might be bridge too far. The uh, it, 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 it is a fact. It is a fact that the uh, curiously, as as the Deputy Lord Mayor did, did, did point, it was rather unedifying uh, behaviour that to returned with the return of a committee uh, in the Colonel White Room and uh, it was thoroughly unproductive. I think it's been more productive. Um, so I think on balance overall, this is worth continuing. Keep in mind, uh, this would this motion, have it, if it goes through, would see a continuation to the end of the period specified of administration. There then needs to be a change uh, in the standing orders. So we would have to vote for that again down the track. There is another chance to actually, uh, you know, relinquish this opportunity. But I reckon we should take it up. Members. To the vote, those in favour, those against. Division. That is carried. <laughs> council, council members, the division has been called. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until names have been called. Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Abraham today, and Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, we have 17.6. Oh, it has been withdrawn by Councillor Mackey. Uh, 17.7, Councillor Kerra, uh, small hospitality for folks. Move that, three to take a second. Jeez. And off they go. Um, the, uh, right, okay, so just uh, if anyone's thinking this is, uh, it might look a bit redundant, um, but I just point you to number four of the administration comment. Uh, that says, for example, uh, security costs recently been raised by small businesses uh, as a concern. Uh, in areas where multiple small bars operate in the same vicinity, uh, there is potential to work collaboratively, to collaboratively with the same security operator uh, to manage the vicinities, reducing external security staff and therefore reducing costs. Following support of this motion, uh, this will be investigated further. Um, this is put up as an enabling motion. The administration uh, has indicated. Sorry, the administration has indicated uh, that this is this this actually is a way forward to assist uh, in this particular way if it's warranted. Um, that's why I put it up, and uh, I suggest we support it. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Members, if not, I'll go back to uh, to uh, Councillor Kerr to sum up. Uh, I reckon that's summed up. Thanks. Members to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. That is carried. Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand until all names have been called. Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kouros. Members 17.8, Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, revoke the decision of the 12th of December 2017. I move to seek a seconder. Look for a seconder, Councillor Canole. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, you probably couldn't tell from the motion, but I'm reading the administrative comment. Um, uh, yeah, get the gist of it. So uh, basically, council decided some time ago that it would implement two things. One, the courtesy letter, uh, and two, uh, a grace period with regards to parking expiations. Um, uh, through my inquiries with the administration, um, I've ascertained that the courtesy letter uh, by itself costs us hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Uh, I would consider it a, a level of over-servicing for people that have broken the law, um, and uh, I think it's money that can be better spent. I am uh, not suggesting that we revoke the grace period, 
uh, I think the grace period is acceptable. So uh, as it stands, uh, you get a parking ticket, uh, you have that ticket for 28 days. At the conclusion of that period, you have a further two weeks in which to pay that fine um, uh, before any late fees are applied to it. But in that, if you still haven't paid by the 28 day mark, we send you a letter by snail mail um, informing you that you still have to pay it. Now, there's only a small proportion of those who are expiated um, who act upon that letter um, and then pay the fine as a result of that. What, what the administration comment outlines is that there's a large proportion of people who are expiated who uh, will most likely never pay the fine anyway. So we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. The cost is over $500,000 since this decision was implemented. Uh, to let people who have broken the law, who are probably never going to remedy that situation, know to remind them uh, that they have a parking fine to pay. Um, as I understand it, when this decision came to council, the costs were not properly properly um, elucidated to them, uh, and so this decision was made ignorant of how much it actually cost. Um, uh, I would say uh, as well, and I just highlight where a lot of these fees are going. Of course, there's the dollar ten that it costs to post a letter these days, then you've got your printing costs, your folding costs, your envelopes, what have you. Um, uh, one of the most egregious costs and one of the ones that we should mitigate wherever we can is the plate search fee, which is charged by the Department of uh, Transport Planning and Infrastructure. Um, and so the way that it works from an administrative perspective, as I've learned, is that every time one of those people who hasn't paid the fine, 28 days, comes along, uh, the administration then do a search uh, and say, hey, we've got these fines. We, of course, only have the number plate. We don't know where to send the fine to, the reminder notice, the courtesy letter. And so we ring up Dipti and we say, hey, Dipti, can we send these plates through? And they say, yes, certainly you can. And we will tell you uh, the person who's registered uh, and what their address is, so you can send them a letter and remind them. Um, and uh, just one more minute, I'll just wrap this up. Uh, and then what they do is they say, we're gonna charge you $10. Sorry, leave the chamber, please. We're going to charge you ten dollars. I think that was a yes. Um, I got three, so leave the chamber. Wakey, wakey! It's actually quite interesting. Um, uh, we're going to charge you. We are going to charge you ten dollars, not for every batch of searches that we send through. We're going to charge you ten dollars for every number plate you make us search. This is just a revenue raising exercise for the State Department of Planning, Transport and Infrastructure. Um, we should look to limit it wherever we can. Um, uh, it's fair to say that this motion, well intentioned, um, uh, was to some degree an experiment. Uh, parts of that experiment have been successful. Uh, parts of that experiment, uh, I think due to the overbearing costs, have failed. Uh, and that's what I'm seeking to remedy. You know, we're we're in a situation where we're asking our administration to find significant and substantial savings. Um, I think this is a saving that we can have the initiative to come up with uh, to put towards them uh, that will go a long way to achieving our, our operational savings over the longer term. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Connell, did you wish to speak? Sorry, Members? Councillor Martin? Yeah, look, Lord Mayor, um, uh, a couple of questions. Um, I did actually move this motion um, and the administration did advise that there was a cost associated uh, with sending out the letters. It was some 200,000. Um, I'm trying to understand, though, what the significance of this is. If the grace period applies after 28 days and there's no letter, how does anyone know there's a grace period? Through the due date on the um, infringement notice. So you have to remember that you had the fine and then remember that you got 14 days after that, but we don't do at any stage. I'm sorry. Um, so you have 28 days in which to pay it. If you've forgotten, you don't get a reminder, but you get 14 days, which you don't know about because you've forgotten. So essentially they're getting six weeks to pay the expiation fee. Okay, without a reminder, okay. And the cost, the cost of those letters was mentioned. Could the administration tell us what was, and it has been mentioned previously, in fact, by the acting CEO, what was the loss in revenue um, uh, to council expiation revenue as a consequence of sending those letters in the first financial year? I can help you. Then why don't you? Thank you, because I don't have it here. Okay. I've got the overall it, revenue. It was just so on $2 million. Dollars. Does that bring a bill? No. Okay. All right. 
Well, look, um, Lord Mayor, I have to say to you that um, the Deputy Lord Mayor is a tool um, of the administration in persecuting this. Um, uh, and it is persecution because what it does do is um, revoke what was meant to be a concession uh, to ratepayers that is normally afforded by businesses. That is, when a debt is incurred, it is generally the practice that there will be a invoice issued um, beyond the initial receipt that happens at purchase, and there will be substantial reminders that follow and ultimately legal action. In the case of council, there is a notice that is placed on the windscreen, often disputed, sometimes claimed not to have happened or been lost. And the first that the ratepayer learns of this is when a letter arrives informing them that the the fine has been effectively doubled. Um, and uh, our smallest parking fine is currently 80, 76 or 80, around that anyway. I think it's slightly less. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was about $57. Yeah. Yeah. Is it $57? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it depends on the nature of the events, whether you park in a place you shouldn't be or otherwise. And, Blue uh, zones then, and red zones. Yes, and then that. it effectively increases substantially. So the impact of this motion that uh, the team is considering here will drive $2 million in revenue and punish ratepayers to the extent of $2 million, which they have not had to pay for some years. As I say, um, this has been opposed by the administration um, well, it, it's certainly been pointed out to me by parking staff um, and even the acting CEO that this has been a substantial loss to expiation revenue since it was introduced. Uh, I do remember. Um, Sorry, to say that um, I, I have opposed it, I think, is... Um, oh, no, I'm not talking about you. We, ha we have faithfully executed on the intent. You have indeed. You have Thank indeed, you. acting CEO. But look, I have had conversations with staff who've lamented the passing of that and uh, objected to it um, in the nicest possible way, of course. Um, uh, but uh, nevertheless, the consequence is that $2 million will have to be paid by ratepayers. Um, this is the- Sorry, can I just clarify why ratepayers? I think many of our explanations oh, you're, you're right. aren't necessarily pardon. issued to ratepayers. I think the proportion- I, I beg your pardon. Aren't necessarily. No, no, I, I understand that, yes, and that is my mistake. And look, it is uppermost in my mind because I've been receiving complaints in recent weeks as a consequence of the team revoking the uh, residential parking scheme uh, and having cars at home during the COVID crisis. They've been getting parking tickets, some of them for getting them and paying the additional fees. So not only has Councillor Kouros revoked that, but we are now going to impose tickets on residents who, who, uh, who, who used to have permits or had the capacity to park. So look, I, I oppose this um, and um, I'm sure that it will be um, passed. Members, if not back, Councillor Cross. So much I want to say, but just in quite simple terms, this I'm glad that it was pointed out that this is not going to affect our rate as as wholly. We do have old people that come and park outside of the city, and if you are parked illegally, then you're part illegally. You get a fine. Um, if, if this is costing us money, especially during this time, and there is a savings that we can um, uh, save in this area, then why not? Um, so I, I don't I don't think this is uh, something that we have got to talk about it being a burden to ratepayers. It's actually a benefit to our city and a benefit to our ratepayers. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. And yes, of course, it was uh, pointed out correctly, and I would have done myself had it not been. Um, uh, but it's by and large not our ratepayers who are expiated. Um, it's people from outside the city. Um, uh, and when people do break the law, they have an obligation to then fulfill. It's not, this is not, this is not a transactional, this is not a, a commercial transaction here, as Councillor Martin would have us believe. This is someone who has breached the bylaws that have been set by this council. 
Um, uh, and in doing that, they need to then pay the fine thereafter. And we're talking about when we're talking about foregone revenue, um, uh, suggesting that this courtesy letter in itself causes the two point one million dollars in foregone revenue revenue is actually incorrect. Uh, it doesn't. It's the grace period that incurs the $2.1 million in foregone revenue uh, per the comment. And as you would have noticed in the comment, most people pay the fine. Uh, most, most people who pay the fine during the grace period are doing it before the courtesy letter lands, thus making the courtesy letter even more redundant uh, and a costly, wasteful exercise. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars we're talking about. That's that's more money than we're given in uh, community grants to homelessness providers in the city each year. Just put that into perspective. That's more money than we give to, to festivals, which generate millions and millions of dollars worth of, worth of revenue for all the businesses in the city each year. And what, why? Why are we rewarding people who have done the wrong thing? And so uh, it's with that, Lord Mayor, that I just say that this is a very common sense measure that we can implement to make some savings. We're keeping the grace period there. We're not sending any sort of message that cars are unwelcome in the city. The only message that we're sending is that this council is cutting bureau bureaucracy, it's cutting unnecessary costs, and it's cutting waste. And that's so that we can take those savings and reinvest them back to the ratepayers. That's what we're doing here. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Yeah. That is carried. Division's been called. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand until all names have been called. Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Abrahimzadeh, Councillor Kuros, and Deputy Lord Mayor. Now, members, uh, item 17.9 was dealt with uh, previously. Item 17.10, I believe, was also dealt with recently, Councillor Martin. And that takes us to uh, 17.11, Councillor Canole, costs associated with motions and questions. So we'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, it's keeping it really short. I mean, the, the purpose of what I, uh, I did here is that um, obviously our meetings are quite long and, uh, and uh, with, with the number of motions and that that we do have, there's a requirement for the administration to do a lot of work. And I said, and, and the, the old saying is that if you don't measure it, you can't, you can't improve it or you can't keep it accountable. And, and that's really what this is about. It's, it's enabling uh, a cost to be put to these, these motions because it is important that we put motions forward that uh, enhance the, what we do for the city um, and that is uh, with, with a bigger purpose. And I think by just doing this, it just uh, makes uh, makes it more obvious uh, and how much uh, much value uh, that our administration is putting into motions, and that it holds us as councillors a little bit more accountable. That the motions that we put forward uh, are bring uh, bring specific value or bring uh, you know something forward that uh, enhances us and, and, and moves the city. And I think, uh, and, and by doing that, I think it's just uh, uh, reminds us to be just a bit wary about the sorts of motions and. A lot of things that we can deliver can be delivered, uh, you know, in consultation with administration and, uh, and move a lot of things forward without necessarily having to bring it to the chamber. Other than for the purpose that, you know, you want to uh, let the wider community know about certain activities, certain actions, to show them that uh, what we are doing uh, or to promote what we want to do. So I think it's just quite simple. And uh, I just uh, move to the motion to the chamber. Uh, this is a great motion. Uh, I think it, uh, Franz and I were on the same wavelength. Um, it comes uh, at a time when I put some questions on notice, which I'll eagerly await uh, uh, the answers to um, around, uh, surrounding use of, uh, of council time and what happens here in this chamber. So I think this is a really good addition to that um, so that we can get the truth out there and provide the fullest picture to the public of what actually happens in the council chamber because well, evidently they're not here with us right now. Thank you, members. Councillor Martin. Oh, look, uh, consistent with uh, Councillor Knowles and the Deputy Lord Mayor's remarks, I think this is an excellent idea also. Um, and in the interests of meeting the Deputy Lord Mayor's request for the fullest information, uh, I'd ask the administration to provide comparisons for identical periods in previous administrations. Um, 
that way we then have an indication of how many motions have been put forward on other occasions so that we can measure it against uh, this uh, particular question so uh, or motion at least so if um, there has been a sharp increase in questions uh, and uh, motions uh, then that will be comparable um, so that we can have a full picture otherwise there's just that assertion there that there has been a sharp increase um, which um, is unproven. Um, perhaps if I could get a comment from administration. Through the presiding member, um, just to be clear, Councillor Martin, are you asking us to then retrospectively apply the same approach to every motion previously using no, no, some sort if of formula? That the councillor has asked noting the sharp increase in uh, notice, questions on notice and motions on notice to include an estimate of the labour and non-labour costs associated with preparing a reply mm -hmm. to each future. Yeah. So it, it is if we don't have a comparison. If we can see that the number and cost has been consistent, that would be useful. If we can see as uh, I'm sure Councillor Canole and the Deputy Lord Mayor would like that there's been some increase that would be really useful. I think that that is a preamble as opposed to going back to uh, to retrospectively to previous terms of councils and costing the labour and non-labour costs of every question and but it's, it's some a, would be a ridiculous impost on our administration to do that. But it becomes a meaningless exercise. What are you comparing it with? It's not a comparative. It's actually so that we can see what the estimates of labour costs are moving forward. Oh, I see. So it's quite pointless in that all you have is the information. Well, it depends what you consider pointless. If you actually want to understand what the cost is of the questions on notice and motions on notice, then it's not pointless. Sure. Well, look, um, you know, I, I recognise, Lord Mayor, that I'm vastly outnumbered by Team Adelaide tonight. I am the only non-Team Adelaide member in the room. Um, <laughs> I am, I am. Members, 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 can we, so, members, members, thank you. We are nearly there. If we can actually keep going, we may actually finish this side of midnight. Councillor Martin. Chief Was there, was there anything else you wanted to add? Um, Lord Mayor, look, um, what can I say? This is just consistent with the approach of Team Adelaide, which is to gag, um, silence, stifle. Oh, Councillor um, Martin, this has got nothing to do with the motion before us. Yes, it will be. Okay, members, that's enough. Could you all be quiet? Okay, am I? Allowed Councillor to Martin, you are talking to this motion yeah. and nothing but the motion. Thank you. Yes, and the intent of the motion, as I see it, is to, on each occasion, a motion or a question is asked, which is consistent with the democratic processes that occur in all local government areas. In this one, the likes of the uh, the person asking uh, for this motion to be approved and the Deputy Lord Mayor will say, your motion on notice is costing us $2.60. Your question on notice is costing us $1.30. And tonight's proceedings have cost us $9.50. It, it is a meaningless exercise unless you intend to use that as a weapon to silence people. Uh, that is what Team Adelaide is about. That is what I oppose. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, anybody else like to speak? If not, I'll go to Councillor Knoll to sum up. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> It's interesting. In all things that I do, and I think uh, uh, we all look at the, the what we uh, what we try to achieve, how we're going to do that, how we can best get best value. What we have here is a high, a highly uh, um, skilled, a wonderful team that put in a lot of effort. They have a big job ahead of them, uh, trying to save, you know, tens of millions of dollars. Now, and I think here we are, and we 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 have this. Art arms race for, for motions and things like that. And that's not really my point. If it's if, if they're important, you bring them up and, and that, that fit into a vision, and that vision takes us to a place and say, well, I need to do these things, these, put these steps in place, then all good. I, it's not about that. But you must put a value to these things. And I value your time, and I value the time, you know, what we do here. And 
I want to make sure that we are always remembering that instead of you looking at the finances, uh, how you best work with your staff, how you best allocate uh, you know, the resources of this organisation, we should at least do our little bit um, to highlight that and to understand that. And this is just one of those little things that you, you, you set it up, you understand how much it costs, um, then you start to value this in a different way. And this is this has got nothing to do with stifling conversation, absolutely not. This has got to do with valuing the time that our administration has and the limited resources and, and all of that that they have and they need to come up with so much. And I think uh, that's just my small contribution to holding myself accountable that when I talk to you through this process that I, I understand what it costs you to deliver and that I do that purposefully because a lot of times we can do things through conversation with the administration and through the uh, through the Lord Mayor etc that will quietly deliver uh, what we want rather than attempting to grandstand and things like that to make a point and that's not with well, the outcomes and, and that's my role here is to try to achieve those and that's why I don't put in 100 motions I just put in the ones that I think are necessary. Thank you, councillor. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. That division. is carried. <coughs> Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Abreen today, Councillor Kuros, Deputy Lord Mayor. Now, members, before you get too excited, I do have a motion without notice. Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you, um, Lord Mayor. Um, in fact, um, there are two. Uh, well, the first one, I don't know that I should accept, given that there's no time sensitivity on this one. Well, look, I'm happy for that to be listed on notice at the next meeting. And could we have an estimate of the cost? I just, um, I'm happy to have that listed uh, for the Members, next meeting. Members, would you like to deal with that now or you want to deal with it next time? Deal with it now? Yeah, we're not. Okay. Okay, we've got the two, one, and the second one's on the state heritage listing. I think that you circulated both of those anyway ahead of time. Yeah, look, I have, and look, I don't, I don't wish to speak to the first one. I'm happy, um, I'm conscious of the hour. I'm conscious that uh, anything that I put forward will be voted down, so uh, let's just move on to the important Members, one. Members, uh, first of all, I need a seconder for the first motion. Uh, no, I'm not proposing the first motion. Okay, not proposing the first motion. The second motion. Members, the State Heritage Listing application. Yes, and I do uh, seek a seconder for this. Um, um, and indeed, Lord Mayor, I am back in here because I received a text from uh, a group of heritage people asking me how this motion went. And so I did come back in um, to propose it, that we asked the CEO um, uh, to write to the State Minister for Environment and Water, David Spears, advising that the meeting of the City of Adelaide on July 14, 2020, voted to acknowledge and to support the bid by the friends and residents of North Adelaide to seek state heritage listing and urgent protection for the Bluestone property at 197 Childers Street, North Adelaide. Okay. Um, generally, uh, Councillor Martin, it's the Lord Mayor that writes to the Minister. Is there a reason why you've requested the CEO right? Um, yes, I did. I, uh, because it's, it's not no, the normal, it's not the normal protocols. Oh well, I'm happy to vary it to that extent if you would prefer. I thought you might prefer not to. That's all. Uh, but if, no, I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. Well, uh, I'm quite happy for you to do. Um, Councillor Corrales, you're seconding. Uh, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? Um, yes, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, sorry, Councillor Martin. Before you continue, um, uh, can I just get some advice on this? Given uh, that yes, it is coming into CAP, and you have a conflict of interest. Yes, then I will declare that conflict of interest, actual conflict of interest, and I will leave the meeting. Thank you. And that yeah. collapses the quorum. Uh, no, I'm still here. We have seven in the chamber. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're absolutely right. Correct, I can count. So, uh, would you like okay. to speak to your motion? Um, yes, I would. Um, uh, look, for the benefit of members, um, there has been a, a significant social media and uh, local conversation going on in North Adelaide about 197 Childers Street. It is an historic bluestone cottages which has been renovated at the rear. Um, it has historic significance. 
Um, it was occupied by Peter Stobie, um, who invented the concept of Stobie poles in South Australia. It was his place of residence until his death in 1953. Um, there is a motion to go before CAP, which proposes demolition of the site and replacement with other structures. Um, and local residents have been keen to get a process underway to have the property listed. Local heritage listing is not an option, however, because the process involved would take considerably longer than the period before it goes to CAP. And once a matter has been before CAP uh, involving judgment about a, um, a heritage, uh, sorry, a, a, a property, um, the uh, the motion or at least the action to protect it locally um, cannot be applied retrospectively. However, um, there is the capacity to list things on the state heritage list and recognising that the friends and residents of North Adelaide, together with several politicians, have uh, written to and and approached um, uh, Minister Spears requesting that he consider the property for listing and urgently um, move for protection of the property at 197 Childers Street while the authorities consider whether it has either historic or architectural merit that would warrant its state heritage listing. It is the view of the residents that the decision of council to support them in their endeavours by writing to the minister would have a positive impact on the consideration of the application, not a decision to list, a decision merely to consider whether it would be eligible. Uh, and therefore I ask members to uh, support this. You are simply supporting the Lord Mayor writing to the minister saying, we support the request to consider the matter um, and that does mean listing. Um, but it, it is an important matter and, and it is in the eyes of residents a particularly important heritage problem. Councillor Kouros. Thank you Lord Mayor. Uh, yes, it is a very important matter. Um, we, um, uh, as a North Ward councillor and um, I'm very fearful um, about the state on which a lot of the heritage is maybe subject to um, being gone in North Adelaide and I, and I feel that um, we really need to be more proactive in getting our messaging across. Um, I recently, with the Deputy Mayor, came along as well, door knocked um, the Children's Street. We spoke to a lot of the residents there because I wanted to know if they shared our passion um, and they are very concerned as well. So we have got a petition um, on the way. Um, we need to be, as a council, more proactive in this area. Um, and I cannot stress it more that once these homes are gone, don't, we just can't bring them back. And it's, it would be very sad if this is not taken seriously. Um, and uh, I really do hope that uh, we can, you know, that this matter gets heard and, and we can make some changes in this area. Thank you. Councillor Kerr. Uh, just a question for the administration. Um, given, uh, just just noting, I mean, this this motion is uh, given. Lord Mayor, this motion is uh, uh, we are we are seeking to. That's not its words. We're supporting a bid for state heritage listing. Um, can can the administration uh, indicate that this building is a two is a double fronted villa? Um, in your view, what are the characteristics that warrant uh, a state heritage listing uh, for this particular building? Um, through the chair, um, this is the first I've become aware of this particular matter about um, a state heritage listing of this particular building. Um, uh, in order to have state heritage uh, listing uh, undertaken, a, an assessment needs to be undertaken. That assessment is generally undertaken by uh, a, an historian or a uh, fully qualified heritage architect or indeed both. Um, I have no um, knowledge or very limited knowledge of what the history of this property uh, is uh, and so I'm not able to 
provide that advice as to whether uh, it even has um, the qualities that would satisfy the criteria under the state heritage list. Um, that's not to say though that it, it does or doesn't. I, I just simply don't know. Okay, thanks, Lord Mayor. That, that is the uh, gist of the uh, qualms that I have with this motion. I do think this should have been brought on notice. Um, I, I'm not sure why, yes, there's a time sensitivity for us to hear the motion tonight, but I don't see why this shouldn't uh, have been actually brought on notice such that we had the, the administration afforded the time uh, to actually provide us with some background on this building. Um, so that's, that remains my, my, my trouble with this. I'm obviously in favour of heritage protection in general. I don't know if we are watering down our future endeavours in relation to lobbying the Minister uh, for heritage protection uh, by by doing this in in, a, in essentially a fit or, a, or a, um, a heat uh, a heated moment uh, because we we feel we don't have the time because again this ought to have come uh, this ought to have come on notice this really should have come on notice I do not know why it didn't it didn't come on notice I don't know why we don't have, have something uh, to back this up to make a decision about this as councillors so there is a time sensitivity to this which is I've allowed it tonight. Um, perhaps we can ask uh, our administration to look into that. Um, we do need to get something off pretty quickly if we're going to uh, have any impact on this. Because, um, uh, and again, I'm going by Councillor Martin's email to us. Uh, the matter will be considered or rejected by state by the 27th of July. So therefore we need to either do something or not do something to the sweet. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Question of process here. Um, if we if we deferred this, for example, laid on the table or what have you, um, and CAP made a decision, and then state heritage listing was applied, is that is that able to be done or no? No, I don't believe they'll do that retrospectively. Right. Okay. After the fact. Okay. No. No. Fair enough. I was just I was just conscious. Um, I'll just speak briefly to this. Um, I will support this motion. Uh, I am I am a little bit reticent to. Uh, extinguish uh, a, a huge portion of someone's property rights um, and what they, they are allowed to do with their property. Um, uh, I would note that uh, the villa in question has some hideous, well, what are, what are subjectively hideous additions out the back, um, uh, and the application is only seeking to subdivide it into two anyway. Um, and it has quite a substantial backyard and, and, and uh, an area out the back, I actually. Um, agree with Sandy Wilkinson that we should actually just be working with them uh, to see if we can accommodate a uh, subdivision of the property while maintaining at least the majority of the heritage component of it. Um, uh, that, that would be my preferred option in preference to state heritage listing because state heritage listing is going to be far, far more onerous uh, for the person. And that's what, that's what actually worries me. Um, uh, nevertheless, uh, what worries me more is that we will lose this forever. And once once our bluestone is gone, um, it is gone forever. Our bluestone is unique um, in many parts of the world. It's actually called brownstone because of the particular hue that it has. And, and as uh, Councillor Wilkinson, former Councillor Wilkinson, mentioned on the radio as well, only appears here and in Iceland. Um, uh, it, it is a very, very uh, peculiar geological formation. Um, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's really unique to South Australia, so we should, as is the stone pole, of course, as is the stone pole, um, uh, unique uh, formation protruding from the ground. Um, and it was only a few months ago um, that the Stoby family, after the passing of, of Mr. Peter Stoby, um, uh, departed that property. Um, and so it would be a great thing to see, particularly so soon. Um, uh, to see that history there extinguished with the demolition of this, uh, of this villa. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Just um, uh, a clarification. Um, Peter Stobie, who died recently, was the son of Peter Stobie, and he lived further along in Childers Street, uh, down towards um, uh, Mills Terrace. Um, and indeed, it has been owned, I understand, by several owners since the original Peter Stobie's death in 53. To answer the, uh, the query of uh, Councillor Kira, uh, the reason this has not come to Council as a motion on notice is that uh, the matter only came to the attention 
of residents after the last council meeting. And indeed, the advice that I had was that the property could not be protected by a local heritage order because the process would take too long. Subsequently, a member of administration advised me um, that a state heritage listing uh, was another option, which would serve the purpose of um, at least allowing a consideration of listing prior to the demolition. Um, and that coincided with um, uh, that same uh, knowledge uh, being acquired by uh, a couple of uh, politicians, one a minister uh, who is making personal representations to the minister uh, and um, uh, one hopes will succeed in persuading him to at least consider. Now, I, I, I take all of the points about consideration of property rights. I understand all of that, but the salient point is the one that was made by the Deputy Lord Mayor. That is to say, um, we need to just have the time to consider this before it is gone, before it is demolished. Uh, and this at least would allow the Minister and his staff to make a proper assessment, which may or may not have any impact, but at least the opportunity is presented. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing to all names are called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Kuros, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, members, that concludes this evening's meeting. Thank you for your attendance and safe travels home.